solid overall. I think their bot lane is more impressive than I thought, like coming in as like a double rookie bot lane. So I think their team just is very well balanced and have pretty good drops. FlyQuest are a good team. I don't know if they're like, there's like a gigantic gap between FlyQuest and the others. I just think the split's been so short that because they've been so lucky and they're, or not lucky, <laughs> it's just, they, they play very volatile, right? Especially around their bot lane. And like, it's worked out a, a lot on stage. That's why they won so many of the games, but it's not like they're like so far ahead of all the other teams. At least that's how I see it. <coughs> Second place, you <coughs> <coughs> okay, Sorry, what? Uh, nice. Actually, nice. I, I am really curious about this because one of the questions in my document here to go over is who is the most fraudulent? And uniformly, when you ask the community, it is 100 Thieves. It's gotta be 100 okay. Thieves, yeah. Yeah. Uh, sec Do you, we <coughs> second place, yes. calls first place over in. Yes. <coughs> so what is it about the current, I guess, LCS landscape? I'm not actually calling you fraudulent, but I'm saying, what, what is, uh, what is, Say what you want. What is currently going on with the LCS landscape at, that everyone seems so close and the standings are looking like this as opposed to what we kind of thought they would look like previously? I think the teams, I don't know what changed between like other splits and like this year, but a lot of the top teams are a lot worse. So like for example, C9 have been playing a lot worse. And then you see like teams like Shopify take games off all the top teams. So it's like, I think because of the fact that there are so many upsets, every team is like ranked a lot differently than what everyone expects. So yeah, I mean, people call us 100 shitters. I think it's just, I don't think, it's just Yon. I don't think anyone's it's ever literally called just Yon. that before. Yeah, no, yeah. No one I don't think that. anyone has ever said that before. Definitely no one said that. <laughs> Definitely. But yeah, really? I mean, Have you actually I, heard I'm that? I'm pretty sure it's just Yon. I'm pretty sure it's just me. I've, I've literally never heard that. Just you, but I'd say it's because there's so many upsets. That's why we're a lot better than what people expect us on the standing, so. Yeah, I think it's just a short split, no best of threes, just best of ones. Even less games, like there's no, there's two less teams, mm -hmm. two less, or even, I think we lose four games so far. Yep. So, yeah, I mean, it just means mm -hmm. there's a lot more volatility in the standings than what people what expect. Used to? C9 wants... FlyQuest? Uh, FlyQuest and an energy. What do you think, Arveo? Are they frauds? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. <laughs> They're just too bad in scrims. I don't believe in them. You beat them in scrims today, right? Or I mean, we beat them every time except once, maybe. I don't. Th I think everyone beats them. Though, so <laughs> <laughs> it's not really impressive. So you guys are energy. I'd say our scrims are very. We we go on streaks, right? So, like when we just came into the split, we had like a few good days. And then we went on a 17 loss streak. Like we Whoa. actually, I think it was 17. We like recorded the amount of games we lost and it was such a horrible week. And then we went 1-1, I think. And then going to the next week, we actually had pretty good streams. I think we won like the majority of them and they were pretty good teams we, we faced. And then we 2 0 on the second week. And then straight after that, we went on like another massive losing streak. So like, I think right now we're on our third for like long streak of losses in scrims and it's just, it's, it's just, uh, I guess that's just how we are. <laughs> <laughs> well, you do learn more from losses than wins, so. Yeah. Yeah, we're learning. Cope, cope, yeah. Cope? Yeah. They go like zero and 20 and they just run it down. Okay, they learn a lot. <laughs> right? Uh, well, I'm just saying, I'm here to flame. Well, like, <laughs> we're three and six, but I'll flame. I'm just saying, whatever's happening, it's been happening the whole split, and we're winning on stage. So like, you guys are learning. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what to say. You guys are that good. Just wait for the super week. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're saying yeah, the super week. So, so who have you guys seen a uh, Roman from G two and how at the end of every split he like releases? Yeah. Uh, people either love it or hate it. I know it's a very con I guess controversial thing that he does, where he releases all their scrims. Which one of your teams? would be the most flamed for their, like it sounds like you guys go on massive streets. I heard your team ends up doing really well in scrims. <clears throat> we had like one bad week, but other than that, we had a really good winner, yeah. We 
Yeah, we were beating everyone. We were beating um, C9 a lot, but they beat us last. They, they're a lot better now. I think they'll be really good when they're back from screaming them. Um, for us, I think we have, like, <clears throat> for the most part, we're, like, probably 70-30. Okay. I think we have, like, really good days and, like, really good, like, scrim days. Like, let's say we go, like, four wins in a row, then we'll have, like, re one really bad day. So I think we're just, like, a little bit inconsistent in that part. I think for the most part, we are doing well. How has it been with, because obviously we have this break that's either two or three weeks, depending on who you're talking to in terms of time. Um, what, if, like, first of all, what have you guys been doing on your break overall? I'll start with the army. Just scrim, yeah. Scrim and like one content day. Like, uh, cause like we don't, we scrim like five days a week and then there's like two, like one off day and then we did like content, which is like kind of an off day. So yeah, I think most teams are doing five days of scrims, I think. Um, sure. Pretty much the same with us. I think yeah. as soon as the break started, we had like one day off, then we had a full, like pretty much full content day. And then we went straight, in, straight into scrimming. Yeah, it's basically. Us. Yeah, I think a lot of teams have like a few days of break <coughs> and then it's just straight back into a normal scrim week. I used to play like four or five days of scrims and then take an off day and scream for four or five days or whatever. And it's, I wouldn't consider a, a break. It's just, you're not playing LCS. But like, it's not like you're having a bunch of off days where you're not doing anything. It's just, you're just screaming instead of playing LCS. So none of your teams took like actual time off. It's just. And we, we had a few days, but it wasn't like, like a whole two weeks of doing nothing, you know? Yeah. It's just. I think the only teams that took actual time was FlyQuest and Shopify. They took like yeah, four or five days yeah. about that. But yeah, no, no one else did, I think. So how different is it to not have the stage games? It's not too weird. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's kind of whatever. When we had the walkout, we also had like a really extended time of screams. So I mean, I'd say it's not, it's not too different. You're kind of used to screaming every day as a pro player, so. Yeah, it's not that weird. It's just, yeah. damn, I wish I was playing an actual stage game. Agree. There's a, there's a, we've only played like nine games or something. I mean, you look at every other region and they're like way ahead of us. And I'm just like, okay, cool. We'll try our best internationally. What do we have to do? So like, I, I don't know, maybe Mark watches the show he does actually. What, what, how do you convince him we need more games? This is your pitch. I think he already knows. I don't think it's his fault, <laughs> I'm gonna be honest. So I don't please, think- Please Mark, <laughs> best of freeze. Uh, yeah. Me and Spawn went to the, I forgot what it was called, the Travis Gafford show. I don't know what's that. Oh, Holland League. Holland yeah. League, and then we were talking about BO3s and how there's also problems with that. But I think most players would prefer BO3s, but there's like a big problem with that as well. So as a player, I still would prefer BO3s, but. You mean two round robin BO3s, right? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, everyone wants that. Yeah, but, but like, I just can't do it. So. Yeah, it's just hard to do. Yeah, yeah, Realistically. Yeah. But I mean, they can't do it. Would so. be nice. Yeah. What do you think are the problems with it? I completely thought what we were talking about when when we were okay, all arguing, but it was like it's not easy, like cost efficiency wise. I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then like viewership wise, it's just yeah, not good. Yeah. I mean, they they can't just do it. They can't do it production cost wise, right? A riot. So, I mean, I, I'm sure. I mean, I'm just saying. Like, <laughs> that's my assumption. Like, obviously. And the show gets canceled. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. So, I don't think it's gonna ever happen like that. So, unfortunately. Um, I wouldn't be mad even if they just did best of twos. Because like when we were in the academy, yeah, for best like of twos are fun. maybe a split <laughs> or something, we played best of twos and like, even if you go 1-1, one, one, it's, it's not that bad. Like, okay, but like, you know, I, I like even and like, you like me, me personally, if I go 1-1, one, one, I'm like, oh, yeah, Wait, really? No. It, it's frustrating, <laughs> okay, you're just but it's not like, okay, it's but not a bad thing. Them. Yeah, but it's fine. You went one and one I don't like going one That's and one true. Like, I, even the fans probably won't enjoy a one and one though. That's okay. how I feel. I, like, I was perfectly fine with the BO2, honestly. But, like, as a fan perspective, you're like, oh. But they have BO2s in other sports. No, but it's, like, not that, it's not that bad, though. No. Like, one and one means maybe not, the teams know. are close. And you're, like, excited for what comes next. You know, like, what happens next time? Like, these yeah, teams are so that's close. That's the game three, bro. <laughs> what happens next <laughs> okay, time? No, that's but, game three. That's no, but, okay, true. T1 Genji, BO2, 1-1. That's not bad. Next it's time you want to see okay, who wins. Okay. But and I'm then there's saying, playoffs. If you can't have best of threes, just make it best of okay, three. Yeah. Okay, that's I'm fair. not saying it's better than best of three. I'm just saying 
They definitely don't, don't have the. Freeze, they don't like, have the time for best of three, so Yoli maybe best of winners. two words. Yeah, is what, saying. I, I, yeah, yeah. That's fair. That's fair. I am wondering because, like, I, I feel like, a, oh my god, you just activated my trap card because Kelsey and I talk about this all the time. How we do not mind best of twos, but then you came in with the exact argument that everyone says, where it's like there's no satisfying conclusion in a best of two, which is a lot of the uh, the kind of like audience and community pushback, I guess as opposed to best of threes, but better than, better than best of ones is also a statement. Cause I've heard community members say that they prefer best of ones to best of twos, which is a little bit wild to me. But I guess you do have a more definitive conclusion. As a player who's played BO2, just like these two, I don't get the dopamine rush from going 1-0 yeah, or just, like 2-0. I mean, I disagree. Just the best of two is way better than the best of one. So. Okay, man. <laughs> w would you want to just lose the game and go home or like have a chance? Now you can play another game. Redeem yourself. Think about it. You win I mean, the first I, game. I, I, I'm not saying I, I'm not saying I enjoy bo ones as much as like losing some games against 100 Thieves really sucked when you know you can win some third yeah, bo you threes. Would've, you would have had another game. Yeah, I would have been able to tie them. I would have another game against you guys. Yeah, you would have lost. <laughs> Kobe. Maybe. <laughs> Huge Kobe. Uh, what also, makes... you're in our favor. Yeah, yeah. I mean, oh, I'm, yeah. I've, been, I've been playing the 100 Thieves the entire yeah. time. Wow, wow. Hell so yeah. it's like you two think yes, 100 Thieves are fraudulent. Yes, we already agreed. Okay. We agreed it was, we agreed I it was a 1v2. I don't think they're frauds. I think. I'm, guys, I'm just, I just love messing with them. You guys can argue against us and we'll just beat you again. <laughs> it's fine. I mean, they do have Squidward. He's good. <laughs> Squidward? Yeah, Squidward is good. Sure. I'll give them that. Um... Do you guys prefer games just because of just generally like more stage experience, like more competitive games on stage versus yeah. scrims? Yeah, yeah, that, yes. That's literally it's it. Better, you just yeah. want more games. Yeah, why not? It's better practice, more experience on stage. You're more comfortable when you come to, come into playoffs. So I, I think it's really good. I don't know about other teams as much, but I feel like the most you learn is from the stage games as well. Okay. Like especially after like a game is like way more intense and everyone's like fired up. It's like. The amount of games I probably learned from a stage game versus a scrim, which maybe not, maybe there's a problem in that as well, but there's definitely a lot more you learn from actual stage games. Yeah. Is it just the way people play or the way you review afterwards or? I think it's both on like the people you're playing against and you guys as a team. So for us, like I feel like <clears throat> we try pretty hard in scrims, but sometimes we like we don't we won't try as hard as we do in stage. Like, I think that's natural for every player and team to not give it their 100%, which is probably not that good, but it's just how it is. But on stage, like, everyone's probably trying to give it the best effort, and you can see like what you're doing wrong, like, naturally. But sometimes the enemy team is like trolling in scrims or like griefing, so you can't even get that out of them either. So there's also that. Yeah, I agree. I think. It's unavoidable that people will try hard on stage. Like the environment's different. You're like spending the whole day getting ready, like mentally and all that, but you can't do that in scrims. Like you're actually on stage with fans. So I think it's unavoidable that people play differently on stage, but also it's just some people who just are more nervous or like some people even play bad on stage. And it's like in scrims, it's hard to predict how people play on stage a lot of times they play a lot safer, mm -hmm. everyone's more focused, and it's just, it's almost like a different game, or like, like you become a different team, you know? Like, I'm just saying, like, 100 Thieves. We're yeah. definitely a different 100 Thieves, 100 Thieves. I'm yeah, just saying, go. like, 17 game lost. <laughs> there's, a, there's a lot of teams that are like that, so it'd be very beneficial for them to have more games on stage. I've watched some LPL scrims, like, way, way back in the day when they were, like, just, they're insane now, but, like, they used to be just, absolutely bonkers. That's what I'm now imagining your team is like in yeah, scrims. I mean, okay, I'd say we definitely run it down a lot in scrims, but we also do the same on stage. We just do it better. Like we're not actually griefing insanely hard. Just, just a <coughs> bit less. Bit I mean, i say it's pretty good if you scrim the same way you do play on stage. So it's a positive. Yeah, and it's good if you can do that but there's always going to be differences. It's like very hard to like be exactly the same in scrims. As long as you're inting on scrims, you better int on stage. I'd rather win. That's a, they have the that's highest like buying kills per like minute. Like no, that's what he says. Yeah, that's no, that's literally what he said like yeah. last week. He's like, guys, if you guys are going to play like psychopaths, you guys better play like psychopaths on stage. OK, that's true. Yeah, yeah that's like, what Jake says. Don't like all, all of a sudden become like some really scared like KDA player on stage. Yeah. Like, 
just play and fight. I have to ask Armeo again, just because your team is rumored to be really good in scrims. What happens between scrims to stage? That's I kind mean, of a struggle. We haven't played that many games, so I don't think it's like a huge issue. Um, you guys are three and six. Yeah, we're three and six. We had like a game against TL where some bad things happened. I don't <laughs> remember that game. I played Aphilius against like Ezra Borg. Yeah, yeah, it was like, yeah, the bad, bad stuff happened. I was playing Vi. I was oh peeped at then. What did you say? Oh God. <laughs> no, I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. Like we, we probably should have just won that game. Um, you should have. I mean, did you see what happened early game? Like, Bro, we should have won issues. against Hundred Thieves two. Yeah, yeah, sure. But should have, could have. I'm not the wing. I'm not the one saying my, we should. My point is like the games are close. We should have. We do some stuff worse, and then we we don't like take like the winning moment and like actually win the game. I guess we'll more do it in scrims. I which don't is what our, remember a game that well. Which is definitely what our coach says. Like he says, championship mindset. Like we don't have it basically when we're playing on stage. <laughs> <laughs> like like he's saying like to get it. You know, in like a good this. Way. Yeah. yeah, yeah, like like yeah. you know like. Like this moment, like what are you guys doing basically? Um, but yeah, but there hasn't been that many games, so I don't think it's like some horrible problem or anything. It's just, it's what it is. Depends how much expectation is put on you guys, right? No, no, no. <coughs> no, I meant like. Like C9, sure, 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 yeah. Yeah, it just depends on the expectations put on you guys. Yeah, I just admit it doesn't mean like we're doomed because yeah, yeah, of our record, yeah. is what I meant. Not like anything about anything else. Yeah, I mean, no no one's doomed. Oh, what? yeah, I mean, we just have to win. Though. Yeah, like, three <laughs> yeah. Three games, probably, three out of five, maybe. What, yeah, I was gonna say, what do you think has to change on stage for you to make playoffs? Just draft well. That's what's going on in your head. I mean, draft is good. Our drafts have been all right. All right, they've been all right. They're, we've had some, some interesting I don't know, you ones. were saying something else an hour ago about a certain draft? No. But we already know, I mean, oh, no, we all, I was joking. We, the I was joking. Well, our draft against 100 Thieves was really bad. Okay, but okay. we already, like, I mean, it's just something everyone knows on the team, so it's not like a. Like a bad I'll, thing to I'll say. Just <laughs> I was just pretending you were shit talking to your coach. No, I wasn't. It wasn't. It was a team effort. It's a team yeah, effort. The draft phase. Um, but yeah, I mean, just draft good that we're practicing, like stuff we're practicing, and then just like we usually are winning early games, so just play well in like the key moments, basically in the game, like team fights and stuff. For Jan and Ayla, mm -hmm. you guys are actually really close to qualifying for playoffs this week. It's unfair. How many wins is it? Uh, I think you each only have to win one game because it's like your team is at like 99 point something percent guaranteed at least a tiebreaker. I mean, six wins will probably and, and your playoffs. team is at like 97 percent guaranteed oh, a tiebreaker. FlyQuest are the only team who are already guaranteed a tiebreaker for playoffs. I see. So like, what what do you think has to go on on your teams to make <clears throat> that kind of push into playoffs? To win one game. <laughs> Yeah, how are you going to win one game? <laughs> one out of five. <laughs> Coin flip one game, you guys can do yeah, it. Yeah, I mean, at least from our perspective, I don't think we're worrying about making playoffs. <laughs> you Fair probably way. are qualified already. Okay, you so, are in second yeah, place. I'm, I'm just saying, like, if you're up there, that's not like your goal, you know? You, you're yeah. trying to get better as a team, so we're not too worried about that, but like, we'll just play well and win. For us, I didn't even know we were like one win away from qualifying for like playoffs or like a tiebreaker. I thought we were just like two losses behind like last place, so I'm like, well, <laughs> shit, guys. <laughs> this that next two weeks really matter still. But I didn't know. There's, there's only 14 games and there's eight like eight teams and six teams make yeah, it. I mean, so there's only two like six wins is probably like really free for sure. <clears throat> That's fair. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for us, we're just trying to play as consistent to scrims to stage as possible, and just trying to play good League of Legends. That's pretty much just it. Boring answer. <laughs> that was a perfect answer. It's Love it's. That. Spawn is <laughs> watching this episode, and he's like, yeah. great. Um, who do you think benefits the most from the break? So, I mean, we definitely have some inside info, because we've been screaming. So, like, you can kind of tell which teams are performing better than before. But I'd say, in general, the top teams have so much momentum, because they've been winning so much. Like, we just had a like, super week into two good games. So like we're really hot and then like you come into a break so it's definitely worse than just cons consistently playing games and i'd say it's better for middle to bottom teams where there's like clear issues that that are like translating to stage so that they're not winning and like the three weeks of scrims only gives them that gives them that chance to like get get better or like fix all those big problems that they're having so i'd say there's gonna be i'm not gonna name who 
Like there's gonna, I think there's clear teams that are like middle of the pack in standings that will perform a lot better in the coming weeks. Hard to say for me, it's just whoever takes it more seriously during those weeks. Like some teams will like take it easy. Like maybe top teams will take it easier because they're like more relaxed. Or like maybe even the bottom teams take it a lot more seriously. It's hard to say until it actually happens as well. Yeah, I think C9. <laughs> Yeah, I was going to yeah. say, I was wondering if someone was just going to, because yeah. I feel like the general community sentiment is like, this is really good for C9 and NRG, and then not so good for 100 Thieves. This has been the general community sentiment. I also do think, I know, uh, I thought Grayson was smart to bring this up on Hotline League as well, where he was like, we do have a lot of momentum that we've been riding on, and to stop that down is like just going to not be great. It's a disadvantage, yeah. <laughs> But yeah, C9, why do, you, why do you think that? Without leaking, without leaking scrims. I mean, that's why, so. <laughs> <laughs> He's I mean, leaking scrims. I mean, <laughs> C9 they, are winning. I mean, also how they were drafting for the break was bad for their team, so. I mean, obviously they're gonna change it up without, even without knowing, like actually knowing. Because um, yeah. they were drafting like the tank junglers with uh, range supports, um, which is bad for their players, you know, Blabber and Vulcan. Range supports? Yeah. What were they playing? They are playing like Bar Melio. Oh, Melio. Bar is fine, but Melio. yeah, they played a lot of, I, feel, didn't, I think they, they lost. I felt like the wait, they lost to you the karma in there. with Melio, didn't they? Play Melio oh. against you and they lost. You were playing Aphelios. Right, right. You played Lulu, Aphelios, right? Yeah. I forgot what they played. That's just an example. And what are they playing now, Mia? If she had to the I guess. Oh, they, they played melee supports? Okay, I guess I did. Oh, wow, that's <laughs> crazy. Are leaking now? Oh, wow, melee supports. Those, those are weak. Let's watch the LCK drafts. Wait, they play, every game. they play bruisers with Range supports? No. Oh my. Wait, Bruiser's really? range? What does that mean? You mean no, Senna? I was, I was, <laughs> I was You said okay. range supports with tanks, so I'm like, oh, okay. range supports with Bruisers, because okay. the opposite. My bad for leaking the scrims. I'm sure that's going to really let 100 Thieves win on stage against them. I'm sorry. <laughs> now we, we already versed now. So oh, you already versed them? We already for versed Okay, okay. I thought you were yeah. saying you. We played them on Sunday. Oh, you I'm, might be helping some other teams. I'm, I'm I didn't mean. Thank okay, you, just cut, yeah, cut it out of the video. Me. So they play. Um, okay, None of that information was scrim related. I'm just saying. So you can just tell me after this. You could clearly see the range support and the 500 CS Rel jungle was not working for them. Like he was just 200 CS to 20 minutes on Rel and they lost. Like Blabber. So, yeah. I'm Jeremy Rel says Blabber shit. <laughs> yes, that's what I said. You've had quite the cough there today. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I just feel like this under the weather recently. Yeah, I can tell. Yeah, I think C9, I think it benefits us too, like Immortals. Doesn't benefit 100 Thieves, obviously. You guys so are scrim gods, right? Are you, were you guys scrim gods like recently or the entire... Uh, last week we grieved, and then this week we're winning again, and then all the other weeks we're winning a lot, yeah. Oh, okay. So you guys yeah. are, were just scrim gods. But I, we still like sort of lose to a couple teams. How do you think FlyQuest will kind of stay at the top or...? Yeah, I think so, yeah. Probably FlyQuest and C9 for me at the moment. I think they'll stay at the top, but there'll be more teams challenging them. I'm going to pivot completely away from standings because 14-4 is coming. Off camera, just because I wanted to know and just because there's a lot of discussion <laughs> around Rek'Sai, I wanted to know if Rek'Sai is back. And you immediately were like, no, no she's shit. Yes. That's just true. Can you explain she's, why? she's like bugged, but it's like not bugged, but they're fixing it. I, I haven't even played it because I, I read the changes. I was like, looks bad. And then I didn't, I just was like, I'll just wait for the win rates because Rek'Sai is pretty easy to play, like solo queue win rates, and the win rate's terrible in solo queue. So, and people played it in scrims because we played really early on 14.4. It was horrible every time I saw it. It's a bug version, right? Yeah. Bugged, I mean, I yeah. I don't know if the bug matters. It's like does. bugged. It's is it fixed now or next I, th I think it said 14.5 is when they fix it. Yeah. So I'm pretty sure we won't be playing the fixed version. I mean, I'm pretty sure it'll still be bad, so they'll still need to buff it. But the bug is like with the Q auto attack thing, so it's pretty bad. But yeah, it's just terrible it's on 14.4, yeah. so that's the point. I, mean, I just see the champion, and they're like, usually Rek'Sai knocks you up and, and like then one shots, shots you. you. Yeah. But now, she doesn't. She's uh, zero damage. Like like, she's I think the E doesn't do true damage or something anymore. I think so, yeah. yeah. So also nerfed, that was like the most OP yeah. part about the champ. They nerfed the ult ratio by a bunch as well. Like yeah, the it's damage. just terrible. But you can you can flash a W and just die. Yeah. It's pretty good. Like five people. Yeah, it's bad. Yeah, you can do that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's bad. You want to go for that like super old Rek'Sai yeah. like five-man knockout? That did feel really good. 
I when, mean, that's when, when the old... Able, when you were able yeah. to execute it. Right? That was also the old would teleport you across the map. Yeah. It was definitely Good. very different. Well, you can knock up multiple people at once? You can do that now. That's oh, when they no, change like it before, to. Before they changed it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. You could. Yeah. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. There was like a... The ultimate Rex I play was just like shooting yourself across the map, coming up and just being able to... like. Yeah. Because you could ult to the tunnel. Like, the only like time I ever played Rex I when I was like... And I didn't play much. It was like AP Rex like... Pew, pew, pew. <laughs> Thank you. I like the sound effects. That well. sounds cursed. That was really good. <laughs> it no. was like shooting a little meteor at people. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. That and it did a lot of damage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like when I was like gold. I know. I, I believe. Did you ever play AP <laughs> No. Why not? It was good. I wasn't gold at that time, probably. I was, but it was good. It was not good. Okay, we need to move on from this. Yeah, one of my friends played an Amram once as a troll pick, but. Uh, is there anything, I, I just wanted to ask you guys generally, is there anything that you are looking out for on this patch? If I speak, I will be in big trouble. <laughs> I don't know if any of us can say anything. If I speak, I will be in big trouble. I mean, I don't know. I mean, there's some <laughs> OP champs, but like, honestly, they're kind of obvious, and they're usually, like, people who play, like, solo people know them. But yeah, I guess I won't say anything. Is there anything that you think will appear in solo queue that won't appear in pro play? Ooh, let me think. Like it'll appear now in 14.4? Yeah, like, like a, it's appearing like in solo queue channel. or yeah, but it won't translate to... I can't think. I wonder if there's anything that's going to be... Usually stuff that's OP in solo queue yeah. is like at least decent. Yeah. yeah. Honestly, so... I wanted to ask some other questions, but I feel like you guys will just be like, no, it's, no. It's a, it's a tough topic to handle. <laughs> yeah. If no. I speak, I'll be in big trouble. <laughs> that's totally fair. I have to, you know what I mean? I have to, I have to ask. Uh, knowing full well, just like interviewing coaches before games about drafts, they're never going to tell me anything. Yeah, that's true. Which is fair. I wouldn't tell me anything either. So obviously, again, the commonality between all three of you, you all played on TLA together on one of the most successful academy teams that we've seen in, God, how many iterations of names did you, did academy go through while you guys were playing? While we were oh, playing? We were, it was like Academy. We were never challengers. Into, wait, into, it, did it, it change? wasn't. So it, it was challengers into like, or there was proving Academy, grounds. but then proving grounds. Yeah. And like, there was this weird, what was the tournament? Northern, Northern Arena. Arena. Northern Arena, oh, baby. Yeah. There was like a third party tournament. Make -up Dude, they don't even have our oh, yeah, games recorded. Course. Yeah. Wait, what? We won it. We won yeah. It. yeah. If we you go to Game of Legends, they don't have our games recorded there. Because it wasn't Riot. It, was it Riot? No, it wasn't Riot. It wasn't no. even Riot. It wasn't even Riot. Yeah. It was a, they didn't have anything. It was like completely useless. And we played on that patch. And then the next, we had like proving grounds right after, oh like God. two weeks after. And we went, we went instantly 16th place. Yes, we did actually go 16th place. <laughs> oh, wait. Yeah. Arena of Legends 2021. Like it was the most we useless won that. patch we, ever. We won that. Yeah. We won it. But none of the teams played. Like two teams. I think C9 didn't. C9. Play, C9. Yeah. yeah, they didn't even play. Because play. you had an option to. It makes and sense like, they didn't play now that I think about it. It was like a fake. Yeah, going back in it, it was completely useless. Yeah. And we got 16th. It was perfect. <laughs> Banger. <laughs> One thing I did want to ask all of you, because you've had both LCS and Academy NACL, whatever we want to call it, experience, what has been the most difficult thing in like making the transition? I think when I came into LCS, you sort of realize how good the lane design LCS compared to Academy. Like when we were in an Academy, we were like the best bot lane, me and Jan. And then you go into LCS and you realize like how much you were missing out and like how bad the opponents were when you were versing them in Academy. And it's like, it's a very big jump, but it's also like something that's not easy or like immediate to learn. So mm. I'd say that's one of the hardest transitions for me coming into LCS was like, reaching a good enough level where I could lane again? For me, it'd probably be, <clears throat> including last year and this year, it would probably be the reviews. For me, the reviews are very long. <laughs> I don't know if that's team by team, but I feel like last year we had pretty long reviews. So I was like, I really want to play solo queue, man. I really want to play solo queue, man. I really want to play solo queue, man. Yeah, that's, that's true, actually. I mean, I think in TLA, because we were so quiet, like a lot of the players, our reviews were like extraordinarily short. Yeah. Like it was, it was not, it's not normal. We were also but winning a lot. And our head, our head coaches did all the reviewing. Yeah. 
We didn't ever have like third to third. But in, in LCS for sure, there's a lot of players that like to discuss yeah. like specific points or like they're very stubborn about argue a lot. So reviews do go do go for a long time. Yeah. Did what makes it? have any yappers? Our team's pretty good to be honest. We have we have a good mixture. I was gonna say, what makes a review good or bad? For us, I feel like it depends on how emotional you are in the reviews. We've been, sometimes, like, since it's a long break, we've been getting a little bit emotional. We had, like, a big talk. Not a big talk, but, like, okay, guys, let's try to be more calm mm -hmm. and, like, <clears throat> come into review fresh-minded, look at it, like, objectively. So our scrims have been going well because of that. Or, like, we've been, we've been getting something out of our scrims, at least. But if you're not, like, if you're still, like, very tilted or heated about the game, it's not going to be useful for anyone. Yeah, I mean, how I see it is when you review, you want to have a takeaway from it. Like, you want to be able to come, come away from that review and be like, I know what we should have been improved on or, like, what we should change. And it's like, sometimes, not always, it, sometimes it's just a refresher on what you've learned and you're, like, you're trying to reinforce those ideas. But I think a good review is one where you come away from it and you're like, oh, damn, like, I need, I need to, like, start doing this. I haven't been doing it before. Like, for example, my mid lane is like, oh, Enemy support's always coming mid, and you're just walking bot out of base every time. You need to come in more often, and you like talk about it, show review, like check check the game, and you come from that review, and you're like, I should be coming mid more often, and that's a good review. But I'd say a lot of the times in LCS, because there's so many like veterans or like people with strong opinions, people will be arguing all the time, and then a lot of the times there won't even be a conclusion, and you just come away from it, like really confused. You argued for like 20 minutes over one point and no one's came to a conclusion and you just walk away and you're dizzy and you go to the next game and you have no idea what your team wants to do anymore. You're still yeah. locked. I, I think that happens to a lot of teams. I've, yeah. been, I've, I've, Personal I've experienced experience. it before. Yeah. Not, on, not on 100 Thieves, but... FlyQuest? FlyQuest or EG? FlyQuest or EG, actually. Which I don't even know. It's FlyQuest or EG. FlyQuest was pretty bad. It's probably FlyQuest. FlyQuest, like, EG was... We would argue all the time, and a lot of times there would be no concrete, like, conclusion, you know? We wouldn't come away from, like, guys, we know what to do as a team. Like, this is it. We're going to be a good team. We're going to go to the next game. We're going to do this, that, and just perform. But instead, it's just, I'm I'm confused. Like, what do I do now? Like, Okay, so I go to the next game. Who was the problem? Who was the who problem? Was the problem? Was it a player who's been benched in the LPL? Let's hear it. <laughs> was it a player that's on a 5-4 team record? Or is it someone who... It, it was not a sole player. I'd say... Can we get some specific players? names still? Okay. We I don't know. know if I should call them out. I've been pretty quiet about it, but I'd say... Okay, say it! Well, this is the time to not be quiet. Yeah. Usually the players are the yappers. Like, they'll just argue all the time. And it's on the coaching staff to, like, buckle down and be like, guys, we need to come to a conclusion. This is what we should do, or like mm -hmm. figure it out, or like talk about it after screens and kind of give the team the direction when they're like struggling to work it out. But I'd say on FlyQuest, there are a lot of yappers and no one to like. Okay, but who are the ops? Up. Who are the ops? They said there's a lot. Who? Can we get they're, they're <laughs> specifically? Mo most of the players. Okay, but who? I'd okay, say, okay. So Prince, Impact. It was Prince and Impact for sure. Prince, okay, it's just Prince, okay. Impact. Prince and Impact talk okay, a lot. Okay, Prince and Impact. And I think me and Vikla didn't talk that much. We we're, were rookies, so like okay. we we're just trying to take it all in. And then Speaker was, he was a bit of both. I mean, he wasn't too bad, but. <laughs> oh, so Impact and, impact <laughs> and so Prince it's really bad. It's then. Impact and Prince. No, okay, I'm not saying the things they're saying were Oh, wrong. so you're backtracking now. I'm just saying. That's crazy. I'm just saying they talked a lot. Be confident. And it got me really confused. The best reviews, I guess, are something that give you like something super constructive to look forward. It should be useful. Yeah, you yeah. want to have a takeaway that you can carry on to next, next game, game and yeah. other games on top of that, not like stuff that would just get you confused and kind of make you play worse because you're not sure what to do or like how your teammates want to play or like you disagree with them and they disagree with you. So next time that like a similar scenario happens, you don't know what's going to happen. You're like, I hope, I just hope it doesn't happen and, we, <laughs> and then it will be fine. Okay, but you said quid. Needs you mid lane more, but what about? No, he's using that as an example. Uh, it's an example. He's using as a hypothetical. Yeah, but that happened. I'm sure that happened. What I mean, about me? It's a normal thing that happened. Well, probably. poor Meech. We we figured out. I I just talked to them and I have a good understanding of when I need to go. Well, or mid. Poor Meech, man. 
Do you agree with his assessment of impact? <laughs> <laughs> if I speak. <laughs> Say it, Elon. <laughs> I got him. I got him. He's actually coughing now. It's a real cough this time. Uh, I, I'm not saying he's stupid. Or like, whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa, whoa. <laughs> whoa no one, no one said stupid. anything. No, so, whoa, that's crazy. Is saying, saying impact is. He, he definitely talks a lot. Yes. yes. But I think we've been working well as a team, especially because of Jake. Jake's a really good speaker, so <clears throat> I think the biggest thing is like Impact has things that he wants to say, but the way he goes around it, like in the order, is not good. But his intentions are good. I agree with that, yeah. yeah. His intentions, his intentions are good, but like the order he does it in is not good. But Jake like helps a lot, as a coach should, like try to translate like what he actually means. Yeah, makes sense. So you're saying song song was not good then? That's what you're trying to say, huh? I'd say it wasn't his strength. He, he was crazy. very Song was very smart about the game. So Spika was fine. Dick Vikla was fine. Guys, so, I'm not blaming my team. <laughs> I'm just so saying. three Koreans were really bad. No, 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 no. Wait, I'm not blaming them. Wait, how's there three? Wait, what? I'm just saying. Yeah, wait, Vikla. Vikla was not Vickla was fine. either. Yeah. Prince, Impact, Song. <laughs> Why are you blaming Song? <laughs> he won worlds, song. man. I didn't do anything. He won worlds. I said Song strength was not like that. That like big leadership, like guys. Just listen to me. He's like, just a game strategic he's, coach. He's very smart about the game. So why yeah, couldn't yeah. you do that? Why couldn't you lead the team to victory? You want, you want a rookie to lead the team? Or? Why not? You don't got that dog in you? <laughs> Maybe. Okay, not, no. Okay, okay. I'm done, I'm done. I'm not done as a rookie. <laughs> I guess generally, because obviously you get people on a team and they're going to argue. How many in all of your team experiences, and I'll start with you, Armeo, because you've talked the least thus far. Uh, how many of those it's arguments are like about how the game should be played, and how many of them are, like, like what are the most common, I guess, disagreements on the team? I mean, I play jungle, so a classic one is like in mid-game when you're farming camps, <laughs> your team will be like, but I'm losing this two minions, because you're- Are you sure it's you're... not you specific? No, okay. it's, it's everyone. Okay, okay. You gotta trust me on this. Okay, okay. Maybe it's just me specific. I don't know. I'm joking. I don't oh, farm more than any of the other junglers that I'm playing against. Are you I sure? could, yeah, I could check. I tell them in scrims. They they say I farm. So they say that. They say I farm Krugs too much. I was like, okay, let's check the game. Who check farm? Who farm Krugs more in the scrim? The enemy jungler farmed double the Krugs. I'm like, <laughs> okay, guys. You can't deny the stats. Yeah, yeah. And look, who's more useful? Their jungler, because he has more items. It's OP. <laughs> As an example, that actually yeah, did happen recently. Okay. That literally exact situation, and my teammates were actually surprised. I was like. Yeah, you guys are coping. But <laughs> anyway, for me, something like that is a common argument because, especially in scrims, like if you go somewhere, the enemy will just int and die, and your team will be like, "See, that's why you needed to be there. Like, it was really good that you were there." <laughs> that was a I'm good like, game. not not even not. I don't mean early game. I mean like later. Like, people don't optimize mid game oh, enough. Like the, okay, that's yeah, 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 yeah. Where the jungler should like actually farm. And then I watch other regions, and their junglers always have really high CS. It's just. We're in the new region, so no, nah, I'm just kidding. But yeah, so that's like an example of an argument I would have, where like, it's just silly to me. Like it's a scrim thing, and, and actual stage games, you don't want your jungler to just be behind XP, and someone should farm the camps basically. Depending, on, it depends on the situation. So that's one example that immediately came to mind. I mean, other stuff would just be like macro, I guess. Like, should you like trade objectives? You know, like. Are we stronger? Just, just like a bunch of, of things like that. But I just think of jungle stuff and it's just always camp related because you're playing jungle, so yeah. Yeah, everyone always says blame the jungler, you know? <laughs> yeah, classic. <laughs> it's always jungle, though. Yeah, there's definitely always arguments around jungle. Yeah. I remember, that's <laughs> it's just, how, that's just how it is. <laughs> really, guys? Like, the laners always want the jungler to do something. Like, the laners always like, I want to fight or like, I can't give up his minions. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Skip a camp and come out earlier, you know? <laughs> and then the, the jungle will be like, no, just wait for my camps, like ward, or like, you should play lane differently. And then lane will be like, no, I have to play this way. I can't, I can't give up this, yes, I have to be aggressive. And there's, there's a pretty common arguments where you're just like, who should give up for who, or like, yeah, it's just, it's a power struggle, and you, you figure out who, who should be the dog and who should, uh, who should like get all the resources? That's a that's a good way of I feel like of boiling down all team arguments. Um, the final topic is going to be kind of interesting because it's your turn to kind of roast me or all analysts. 
I did, I did want to ask you guys, like, in all honesty, what do you think are the biggest things that outside analysts or the community get wrong about how the game is played or LCS players or perception of LCS players? I actually don't pay attention at all, so. That's a good mindset. I, I, I have LCS actually muted. What do you mean, LCS muted? So That's last like when you last, watch the stream, last year you on Twitter on Twitter oh on last Twitter? year oh okay I had a really bad haircut I was like nah <laughs> nah f this sh I muted that <laughs> and I I, I haven't Sorry. unmuted LCS since I just don't see anything all I see is like nice nice random like spider acts or like art stuff on my Twitter feed so that's that's I don't really have that's actually a really it. really healthy that's mindset good, good. I'd say analysts and their view on like which plays are good, especially in like all pro and all that are like when you just watch glimpses of segments where you're talking like, oh, this play is so good, like they're hard carrying the team. I mean, at least from my personal experience, I'd say my views are very, very different from what I'd say the majority of analysts predict. Okay. Oh, so, so you're saying Jojo Pin was overrated and you should have gotten more hype than EG? <laughs> how did you turn it into that? I did not say that. Like, literally, how did you amazing. manage to do that? I, that's crazy. Like, Jojo no, was just saying, like, insane. I mean, like, you so look good. at All Pro or you look at, like, what the analysts are saying so. about, like, good players and, like, which players to look out for. Like, oh, this player is the one who's, like, the reason why the team's winning. And then mm -hmm. just from your experience screaming against them, playing against them, you're like, what are these guys talking about? And... I'd say I noticed that a lot. If you're jealous, just say it. <laughs> you actually just I'm not saying nothing about that. <laughs> I was going to ask my follow-up then, because obviously we can't see scrims. Um, how, how does one from the outside better evaluate players? <laughs> just watch the game. So. Yeah, I mean, I agree. <laughs> I don't know what to there's say always like a there's too much narrative stuff when yeah. like those, like those are like, they won like 16 times or something, but it's like if you're, you can just watch the games, like you know, like that. Honestly, mm -hmm. just just watch the actual games. I agree with that. Um, yeah. I think, I mean, I'm, I'm sure you guys do watch your games. It's just we come to different conclusions, I'd say, from like who was the reason why they won or like which player is carrying which team. I think we just come to different conclusions. I will agree with that one. When I watch the LCS stream sometimes and like a VOD or like live, sometimes I feel like you guys look at it too, too much from the viewer's perspective, I would say, mm -hmm. rather than the um, actual game. So let's say a player has a specific role they have to do for their team to win the game. So let's say I would give, I can't think of a specific example, honestly. Are you trying to flame certain someone or what? No, I'm trying to think of like a certain champion in a certain role, but like let's say let's say like they have jungle to... champion or no? I don't know. Okay, I'll just give like Lushinami for example. Okay, mm -hmm. <clears throat> so here here's like a simple one. Since I feel like Lushinami is like not that lane dominant in my opinion, but I feel like most people think it's lane dominant champion. Mm -hmm. When in my opinion, it's more of like a you have a strong laning phase and it's very. It's a very coin flip toss for me, Lushinami. You can either win really hard or lose really hard. It's a very like sensitive matchup. And then once it really starts ramping is like the one and second, first and second item. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and then once you're on the mid wave, I feel like the mid wave is like the most important thing for Lushinami. But most people judge it off the team fight, which I don't really see. They, that's why I think most people don't actually understand the Lushinami and people bashing on it. When obviously it's not a good team fighter, you just have really good control. If someone walks up to you, bam, bam, get it on. <laughs> but like, if if you go to a quick fight, you're just like, get shit on, Lushinami. You want to like yeah. skirmish and like side lane. Yeah, yeah, pretty yeah. much. Okay. I, I feel like most people don't like try to view champions as they are, rather than like a big team fight happened. Wow, this champion is like complete shit. What are they doing? And like that also has to do with the teams failing to understand like what their champions need to do. Mm -hmm. So I feel like sometimes the reason people get upset over was kind of wrong. I would agree with that with Lucian Lee's fair. in general. LCS is back. You guys are playing your first games against, you're against Dig? Dig and FlyQuest. Yep. And RGC9. Wait. Uh, <laughs> you don't even know <laughs> Shopify <laughs> Energy, Shopify yep. Energy. I had to uh, think about it. There were too many team names. Yeah. So. <laughs> 
<laughs> you're saying it out. What's second day I thought you were so, like, wasting your practice? Your I remember, I remember. Uh, we know who's wasting practice. <laughs> yeah, it's, <laughs> no, it's not us. That's, 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 I'm just thinking. Uh, I'll start, actually, I'll start here. Sell, sell the LCS fans on your, on your team and your first game. Do I even need to do anything? Just, <laughs> our games are always bangers, so like, I'm sure people will be entertained, but just come and watch it and we'll prove by winning. I don't know, people f***ing hate us. Wait, what? Wait, 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 what? wait people oh, like okay. TL, no? Do they? I think so, I don't know. They have mixed opinions, I'd say. Okay. Like, a lot of people will, like hate on that TL LCK, but also, there's a lot of supporters who are like, yeah, there's a lot of supporters. EPA chance, you know? It's like, I, I say it's both. Yeah, it's so funny when I, sometimes I read the subreddit just for fun, just so I can like, these guys are so f***ing stupid. <laughs> are you <laughs> better? <laughs> why, why are you you're blaming mean, your fans? You're meant to no, 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 You're no, actually no, no, blaming your fans. No, 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 I'm not blaming my fans. See, <laughs> who you I'm blaming? blaming the people that are getting mad at like, so let's say like, I into the game, they're like, wow, he played like really sh But like, I know who minted that game, you know? I'm like, so oh, these are so, so stupid. Your teammates are you? No. Yon said, doesn't end. I said I entered. Or you entered. Like, if I, 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 give an I give an example. Like, if I entered and I see someone saying, wow, APA really entered, or like, oh, right, 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 so, you know? Okay, I get okay. it. I'm like, okay. wow, these guys are f***ing stupid. Okay. <laughs> Maybe wow. people hate watching now, you know? You know that's good. You that's, more, that's more audience. Wow. Anyways, all I know is that that's so fun to watch. <clears throat> Besides that, you really took this on a tangent. It's, it's yeah. why are they supposed to watch you? Oh, are they, why are they supposed to watch you? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. you're, you're on the Only team. macro team, no mechanics. Okay, sure. If that's what, if that's that's what you really, want to That's going to really help, I think. Yeah, whatever. Okay. I got nothing. Oh, yeah. Uh, I think we'll show a better performance than the, the previous round, Raman. Uh, we got the extra weeks to practice. We're against some, some noob teams, you know, Shopify and Energy. So. Energy's noob? I don't know, those guys, they we'll lost the we'll gun. They, they lost, yeah. they lost the LCS. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll find out. There you go, yeah. we'll end there. Thank you so much for joining me, all of you. This is a fun time. Thank That's you. the latest episode of Pros. They walk away with the win. Cloud9 step forward, there's the flash. The depth charge connects onto Mazu, and it's a dredge line onto Busio. You thought they were going for 180 carry, but they can take either one of them as Masu's gonna flash out, inspire Twisted Advance forward, but it's not gonna mean anything. This is Cloud9's base now. They're pushing forward and looking to put the finishing touches on this one, Kobe. Here the Nautilus, dawning shadow over the top, the Nautilus still. No. Dead! Why are we over committing to the Nautilus team? Liquid contract coming in on top of APA, but he ends up finding Mew just hit MP on flashing back away as APA goes golden. That's nothing but a trophy for energy as APA drops and core JJ's trying to get the hell out of town. Who he and the rest of energy still going oh. in. They thought they caught the knot. No way, not today. Energy turn it right back around and so flex 
him in the mid lane. Rich on the flank compared to the rest of the Ignatas squad. They kick the Trundle back at the pit, but he flashes back in to rejoin the fight. The Dragon's still at about 1,500. This XU is going to be taken low. The Drake claimed by 100 Thieves. Tomo trying to escape as they land Sniper. Want to finish him off. Sniper goes in after Tom, but they split their aggro. They both die. 100 Thieves, though, still winning the fight overall. It's three dead on the side of Ignatas. It's about to be four as Meat puts a bullet in Tomo. And only Rich survives. 100 Thieves get the objective, get the fight. Welcome back to the LCS waiting room. Face off day two and a familiar yet sorely missed face with Poe Belter. Hi. Welcome back. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having me. We were just talking about the last time you would have been in the LCS studio and it was a while ago. Yeah, I think it was like start of 2020. I think I played through 2021, but yeah. that was when COVID happened. So I think I haven't been here in like four years pretty much. How did it feel walking into the doors again? Um, dude, it was like, it was like emotionally stirring. I'm not going to lie. I'm yeah. like a really sentimental person. So I was like walking down the hallway that usually you walk down to go to, to go on a stage and play. Yeah. And I remember just like being a player and always just like trying to get in the zone. You like walk past the person who you're playing against and there's like <laughs> yeah. tension. Uh, but it, it was, it was a good feeling. It's good to be back. Yeah. How's it been just watching some of the games over time, like over the like last few years that you've been streaming? Because like the that's been the question that I've asked like some of the alumni, and they're like, yeah, I don't know any of the players. <laughs> there's a bunch of new players. Yeah, there's definitely a bunch of new faces. Um, a lot, a lot of players I still see in solo queue because uh, mm -hmm. I've still just been grinding solo queue and streaming. Um, man, it's it's like a strange feeling. It's like um, it's like. It makes you want to play again, yeah. but yeah. also it's like, I, I don't know. I, I, don't know <laughs> yeah. I don't know. You were telling us earlier, I mean, congratulations on your stream success because you've been massively consistent. Mm -hmm. You've been rank one North America. What, do you, what, what is your rank now? <laughs> we don't have to talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Former rank one, recently rank one mid laner Poe Belter. Uh, and you play against a lot of the LCS players. Who's like your, your biggest LCS solo queue rival? Biggest LCS solo queue rival? Um, I don't know. There's a lot of like... There's a lot of players who are tricky to play against. Um, not not even just in mid. I, I like Armeo. Armeo is always like really hard to play Good against in solo queue. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, there's Armeo. Um, okay. In terms of mid, who's really good? Um, I feel like I haven't seen too many of the LCS mids in solo queue. Maybe they're playing on secret what, what accounts. What about Quid? Because he's been popping off in the LCS. He's got like four player of the games in a row. Yeah, Quid's tough to play against in solo queue for sure. I always felt like he was better than people gave him credit for. Even mm. uh, last year when he didn't really have the best split. I chalked it up to just nerves because yeah. I, I met the guy um, at the time, my former coach, Kane, was coaching him. So I met them, had dinner, and he seemed like a very timid guy. So I figured mm. even, even though he's good in solo queue, maybe it's just nerves and He'll catch up, hopefully, and, you know, I, I think he's proven that. Mostly, yeah. I just get him playing jungle on my team. I, I don't even know if he can solo queue. Is it good when he's, your, when he's your jungler? Yeah, he's like the average, like, um, autofill mid laner playing Lee Sin with no skin. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, 20 kills. <laughs> that was actually the most confusing thing, because I remember in offseason, I was asking people, and I ended up asking you about Quinn, and you're like, yeah, he's, he's, he plays well in solo queue. And mm -hmm. so it was interesting to see that difference between um, what 100 Thieves on him uh, what a lot of players that met him in solo queue saw on him, but obviously that split that he had, and finally it's amazing to see him now be regarded as one of the best mid laners in the LCS this split. Yeah. It's kind of crazy how big of a difference it's been in the environment that he's in. Yeah. Eugene, Poe Belter, great to have you here. You'll yep. be with us for the rest of the waiting room. We're also going to be casting two of the games today, so really looking forward to hearing what you have to say during the games. But let's let's talk about yesterday a little bit because there was a, uh, a blue side thing that mm -hmm. happened with Senna. Yeah. And we've pulled up the four <laughs> blue side drafts. What's similar about all these blue side drafts? The best was when we got to the 100 Thieves versus Dignitas game, and we we're all looking at Champ Select. I turned to Afro, I'm like, they, they have to ban the Senna on third red side, right? Like, they gotta do it. Nope, mm -hmm. she went through. Um, and so this is the story. We didn't touch upon her for the patch specific, but she has become a staple in the bot lane, the current bot lane meta in the two weeks that we were off. And she won every single game yesterday, all on blue side. Yeah, uh, we get to interview a lot of the support players that were winning off the Senna Ayla, uh, and we got to talk to uh, Huhi. And the consistent thing is like, it's just now a thing where there is widely regarded that Senna is broken. 
but there are some teams that think they can play against it. And the one thing that I've noted from Senna as a pick is that, like, of course, yes, Nautilus has been the consistent pick alongside it, or Tom Kent when they picked Nautilus, when they tried to grab the Nautilus away from them. It was like, okay, then you have a pick comp versus what is a Senna Tom Kent, which really helps us. Um, and then, opposing team just like had a Cassante, and Senna was able to roam consistently, yep. was actually able to take plates against the Cassante space. So now they're like, they just let the Nautilus alone in lane mm -hmm. and farm because he wasn't going to die solo. Um, and then, especially in that energy game, 11 plates early with a very slow paced game mm -hmm. because there was nothing that they can do with a Senna taking plates against their face on top and mid. Yeah, it's really interesting to see what people have done with Senna for a while. That lane was literally just Nautilus versus Seraphine. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> um, but like you rotate the Senna up for grub control and then try to get top uh, plates off of top as well. Like we've seen a lot more teams doing that. Um, so it's been really interesting to see how the overall map meta has also evolved with Senna being such a dominant force in the bot lane. Yeah, I feel like we're going to see a red side Senna ban at yeah. some point today just because of the four wins yesterday and teams wanting to react. But we saw two ways win yesterday as well. And Paul Belter, I wanted to get your thoughts on that as a pick because you've been probably seeing it and playing it a lot in solo queue. However, it hasn't really had that much prominence in pro play, except for yesterday. How do you feel the pick has for strengths and weaknesses? Uh, I think the pick is fairly high execution. Like, it can feel super bad on the champ to even miss a single ability, because all the cooldowns are fairly long. I feel like Hui is... The strongest point is actually laning phase. This champ is actually, like, extremely dominant in lane. Um, but can be, even if you have a lead in lane, it can be difficult to pilot the champ mm. super well in team fights, and you run the risk of just being like run over if you just whiff your E, for example. When in laning phase do you feel like it's strongest? Because I, I see it getting pushed in a lot, like levels one to three, but what is your experience? Uh, I think level two, level three, he's actually a pretty strong lane bully. Okay. I mean, level one, you can already start to chunk out if there's angles to just queue them, or mm -hmm. I mean, EE is pretty no counterplay against most champs as well. Do you think it's blind pickable, or do you need to pick into certain matchups? I think it's I think it's pretty blind pickable. Um, I, I still don't know how I feel about the champ overall. Yeah. Um, but I mean, th this champ has just been buffed again and again and again and again and again. And yeah. Even this patch, uh, they buffed the lost chapter items by five ability haste. So there's just mm. like a bunch of these small stacking buffs I think from patch to patch that have made the pick more palatable. What's made me confused more so about he Hui has been. A, coming into the uh, new, I guess, meta, where it's like, oh, MR items are just strong as hell. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. like Koenig, Rookern, like they could go basically any MR item and it's really t difficult for mages. But also when you compare him to like an Azir or Orianna, like the weird thing is I expected Hui to be a strong scaler when he came out, but it never really felt like that. I don't know, how would you feel about Hui overall in comparison to the other mage picks? Do you think that he scales well going into late game? Because it feels like he's strong mid and early game. Uh, I think he does, but it, again, it's high execution, and I think yes. you need the mm -hmm. team comp to fit it as mm -hmm. well. Like in solo queue, a lot of the times I'll see Hui's get fed in early game, and you know they start the game like five zero, but then they just get completely blown up in a team fight, or the team fight happens way too fast. You know, like the fight is just over before True. Hui ulti pops, or you know someone is getting hit by the like the passive chain explosion. I think I like when teams are picking like Ivor and Hui together. It's just like a lot of insane zone control. So if you can build a comp like that where the whole sort of team comp is very good at zoning around objectives and then you play around that focus, that is like what Huey needs to succeed. That's perfect. Yeah, really good insight. Thank you for that. A couple other picks that have a little bit less uh, execution Wow. <laughs> like required would be Vola Bear and Renekton, which we still saw yesterday. You have no hands, I mean, Kobe. You Kobe can right have simple champions crying. and you can have complex champions, but we saw Fudge reemerge on Renekton. They pulled off the Renekton Nidalee combo. I'd say that actually does have some higher execution complexity. Fudge picked up the W there, and we saw, I think, some decent Volibear games because of his early game power. Yeah, I mean, I liked the, uh, I actually really liked the Nidalee Renekton in that draft, and I thought C9 did a really good job of spreading their topside pressure. The really interesting thing with the Volibear picks is that we also saw a lot of Volibear, but we saw a few Volibear bans as well. Mm -hmm coming through. So that also makes me wonder how that champ has been doing in scrims overall. I think he's probably pretty successful. Yeah. Like, yeah. I, I feel like because he was a pretty prominent pick back in like 2021, 
there's just a lot of teams that are familiar with the Volibird like slot mm -hmm. and know how to play around it. And it just, it just like fits a lot of the meta compositions right now. So I think it's pretty easy to, to put in. Yeah, and another champion that we have to keep tabs on because when we started off the conversation on Senna, it was like we expected a bend, but there's a mm -hmm. third bend that kept coming through, which is Twisted Fate. Yep. And Twisted Fate as a pick right now is like 53 or 54 percent win rate as a top laner has been played in LCK, LPL, like just generally speaking, has been a really dominant pick in lane and is a great flex pick. So that's one pick that we have to watch because banned out yesterday, it's, I imagine it's going to be played and I've been seeing it a lot in solo queue. And when I was watching Dokla, he, it, on stage in the L LCS, he's been playing like Melee, Champs, like Cassante, Aatrox, but in solo queue, he's just been like a ranged top abuser. <laughs> so, but like, so I, to the point of Twisted Fate, I expect Twisted Fate to get picked but we haven't seen it yet, so that's something to, to yeah. take note Maybe of. Maybe the Senna ban takes up the Twisted Fate ban, and then we see Volibear TF, which can get really goofy Ooh. with third times. Anyway, uh, we only have four games left mm. in sure. the whole split, so the All-Pro race for spring, it's heating up. Producers have three questions for us to answer related to the All-Pro list. Po Belter, you stream nine hours a day, so you don't have to answer these. You can just review our <laughs> I, review I don't our even answers. have a whiteboard, actually. <laughs> well, there you go. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I was over there. My bad, my okay, bad. so question one. Will anyone from Energy make all pro? Because they haven't yeah. in a year. True. I want, oh, say, I'm gonna tweak this. We have to say who if we're gonna say someone. Yeah. Yeah. That's a tough one. Okay. Oh, uh, my, mine is, I got, I got mine. I'm gonna twist, I'm gonna turn mine around. I'm saying who he will make all pro. Is that a tough first few weeks? Yes. Oh, I yes, who he at least? Yes, who he at least. Oh, are we showing it? Yeah. <laughs> Contracts the goat. I was going to say no, but I put in Palafox. Okay. He, even in their losses, uh, Palafox has had been playing well, and I think with the games that they've started to pick up, I think he's been looking good. But it, I, it was a no for me initially. It is so tricky because I think it's going to be really hard for every voter to remember the first four weeks mm -hmm. in comparison to these next five games. Because yes. Emily and I put Huhi, a lot of that's probably because he had that one Nautilus game. <laughs> that game and also I do think it, obviously NRG were making a lot of mistakes overall and I think they'd want a lot of their games from the first half back. But um, I thought he was playing well before that. I yeah. think, especially as it relates to our MVP discussion that we had previously uh, yesterday, I think a lot of it is gonna be really heavily skewed towards the end of the split yeah, as well. You, so you like can... a lot of people, like if NRG rip off a bunch of wins at the end of the split, I think you'll see more of their players on all pro. Yeah, Eugene, you answered contracts. You didn't have to answer, but since you did, I want to know why. Uh, I, I just said I'd shout him out. He was like in my stream chat the other day. I was like, oh, by the way, guys, I'm going to be on LCS. And Kanye was like, wow, are you going to cast my game? And I said, uh, I'm not, but I'll give you a shout out. Okay. <laughs> There's a shout out. An all pro shout out. Congrats. Next question. How many fly players were, will make first team? And this is interesting because if we would have asked this question literally yesterday, yeah. that would have been what, two or three? Yeah. But now you got to write down on the whiteboard who's going to do it. Ooh. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Oh, it's so tough. I'm gonna say, I'm, I'm actually, I'm, I'm cheating. What? 1.5. What is 1.5? Oh, I'm setting the over under. The I'm setting the over half? under at 1.5. Yeah, who are you cutting in half? Uh, right now, it's inspired. Because <laughs> I think Bwipo's there, and it's a, whether or not inspired makes it over river, depending on how. You know who I blame for this answer? Emily. What? <laughs> It's a slippery slope, what you did yesterday when you Okay, Rats, what's your answer? <laughs> oh, no. Are you talking uh, about my MV Pyramid? Yeah. Oh, my <laughs> God, am I? I keep qualifying mine with at least. I, I also think Whippo mm. right now is still the the strongest uh, top, so. I put down both Busio and Whippo. Oh, Busio one's interesting. Yeah. I think uh, support one's going to be a tough conversation, but yeah. Whippo for sure is the to best top laner from what we've seen. Uh, I would have put in Inspired, and I think by the end of the split, I can just put in Inspired, but it's between him and River. So okay. yeah. that's the tough conversation. So those you, are the two Eugene, guys. I, I see you wrote more down. Yeah, I got one too. Just pick Pike, bro. Just do it. <laughs> <laughs> You'll end up first team all for We're all waiting, bro. Just do it. The fact that he did that and then didn't pick Pike after he got the followers, you could never do that again. He picked Blitzcrank too, actually. He yeah. picked Blitzcrank, so he was just... I think we have one more question. You're teasing us. Okay, most Bit likely player edge. should be the only member of his team in in All-Pro. So this would be oh. in one, two, three of the All-Pros. 
This is a fairly tricky one because you're trying to project. You're basically trying to project oh, in your head every All Pro. You're right. Oh. Oh. I... <laughs> We've actually already answered this question. Yeah. It's who he. <laughs> oh yeah. We answered no one, it first. No one else from NRG is gonna get it. Unless Palafox gets it, we'll see. Is there a team that I think? Huh. Yeah. Grass is written down Palafox. Palafox. Yeah, we've already answered this question. I might it's if the I... only one of NRG can make it. You know what? I mean, I think I think TL's got a chance here with Impact being top lane mm. as well would be one of mine. Look, if you have a great next week and game today, I'm putting an X you. So like, just generally mm. speaking, I think it's Palafox. But I'm opening the door because we have four more games to play. We have a super week right. next week, and we have one game today. So if he actually has a strong performance in the first few weeks, he actually had good early jungling. Uh, that's possible. But you'd have to, he would have to make the climb. Because right now he's not. Right now he's not for me. But I see Emily. I'm her thinking because yeah. Cause if like, you don't, if you don't have one, it's, it's fine. I know. I can't three. think of a team, but it. I think All Pro, especially this year, is going to be so. Oh. Heavily, and I'm gonna try not to do this myself, but like yeah. it's gonna be really hard to separate yes. the latter half. Uh, I agree. I think Impact is yeah. probably the most likely one, though. Yeah, I got Impact in there. I agree. The first four weeks are gonna be really hard to factor in appropriately, but that's the challenge of. Because I was the thinking, like, how do we feel about C9? Like, if they end up ripping off a bunch of wins. I know. Blabber MVP. Anyways, with playoffs <laughs> on the horizon, we're excited to let all you fans at home know you'll soon be able to cast your own votes for Kia MVP and Kia All Pro. Voting will be live from March 8th to 18th, so stay on the lookout and get ready to place your vote. Blabber thing is only half trolling. Anyway, let's take a look <laughs> at the schedule for today. Standings up first, FlyQuest and 100 Thieves are tied for first place. It's crazy that the third place team is five and five. There's a three-way tie for third between C9, Energy, and TL. And then even Immortals at three and seven is not out of it yet. Dig and Shopify also fighting for that last playoff spot as of current. Yep, it's crazy to me because when you hear the Cloud9 players talk too, their main goal is just to make it a playoffs. And you're like, oh yeah, you're third, but you're actually two games behind last. Yes. <laughs> so yeah. it's as simple as that. Uh, you just have to continue to perform in the next four games. Just imagine if Immortals beats Cloud9 one time in the past, they'd have the same record. I, yep, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> that's anyway, bad. one of the biggest games of today is gonna be 100 Thieves versus FlyQuest, because as you just saw, they are both in first place, both at seven and three, and they're gonna be facing off. It's gonna be fun. Whippo and Sniper. Woo! That's Whippo a good conversation. Sniper. It's really interesting because uh, for those of you who missed it, and Poe Belther, uh, Whippo has really been talking a lot of trash on Sniper, like this whole year. Really? He's like 17 years old. I know. <laughs> Not only before the year, he was saying like, my one goal is to make it so Sniper doesn't win Rookie of the Split, or Rookie of the Year. Partially because is yeah, a rookie on his team as well. I was gonna say, well. in fairness, I oh, think that okay, was Yeah, he wants like his teammate to win. I thought he was just like being evil and like, But then no, we had no, him, no. It we had him on dance. pros uh, right before the break, and he probably spent like six minutes talking about how he doesn't think Sniper's very good. Okay. It's the wildest thing. I'm not sure. Anyway, uh, that that's fun to watch. Did, have you had any experience playing with or against Whippo, or did that that didn't overlap with you? Um, like on a team? No. Yeah. No, never. Have you run into him in solo queue? I've ran in, into him in solo queue. I've spoken to him. Very um, very passionate about the game. Yeah. Thinks about the game like all the time. Like loves yes. to talk about the game, as you said. Spent like six minutes talking about apparently how poorly his perception of uh, <laughs> Sniper is. Um, yeah, it's cool. It's like rookie versus the vet. Yeah, and I, yeah. I think with Bupo, as you would expect from every interview we've done of him, as you mentioned, he's passionate and he's very vocal about what he, his opinion is. Like, he's not going to hold back. And so a lot of the time, especially after the first few weeks, I think it was just happenstance. Yes, you're right. And the first thing is like saying, my goal is not to get Sniper the MVP because it's a Masu that I yeah, want yeah, to get yeah, that MVP yeah. for. And I, it's... And he's been the most vocal because there's a lot of uh, people thinking that Sniper is incredible. And he has been getting a lot of solo kills. Yeah. But then but was like, I played him in scrims and this guy is yeah. making mistake after mistake. I think that when you listen to Whippo talk about it, though, I do want to kind of like give it some context. You're fair. Because this the way he approaches it is... Like the the vibe I almost got is like an older brother who wants their yes. younger brother to be way better, right? Because yes. a lot of the stuff you pointed out was like matchup specific, 
how he's playing things in lane. And like, obviously, I think the strength of Sniper is that when he does see opportunities to kill his opponent, he always goes for it. And I really appreciate yeah. seeing that coming out of a rookie, especially in a role like top, where it is so much like a 1v1 kind of battle. Um, but I think the way Bwipo was approaching it, it was very like, I want you to be better because I want everyone to be better. Yeah, thank you for that clarification because he just kind of talks a lot all the time and yeah. he is mentioning things that Sniper would be able to listen to and even though some of it's harsh, could actually use it to improve. So it's mm -hmm. not like he's just calling the player trash, he's giving specific examples of things he can improve on. And the advice that he gave him too is just play the champs that you're good at. Like just play <laughs> what you know at the end of the day because like if, if you're good on a champion, you don't want to be forced on something that, hey, it's great in the meta, but it's not you. Mm -hmm. yeah, and that's what, honestly, Sniper has been doing. And it's not just Sniper. I think with the 100 Thieves conversation, for me, quit has been a big um, like topic yeah. that we even mentioned early on in the show, where he has just been, right now, uh, one of, if not the best mid laner performing in this split, which is crazy to think if it you is. saw what happened last split. Mm -hmm. uh, we talked about the nerves that were uh, behind it. There was a lot of conversation of just like, what, how is he able to translate that? The interview that you had with Golden Glue, Emily, uh, actually talk about that a bit. Yeah, I was gonna say, I think the really interesting thing was talking to Golden Glue about Quid specifically, because he was also someone who when he played really struggled with like scrims versus stage in terms of nerves. And he was talking to Quid a lot about that because Quid had been really upfront and being like, you know, he plays really well in scrims, plays well in solo queue, but it doesn't translate to stage. And one day he just came up to Golden Glue and was like, Grayson, I got it. Like, I'm good now. Uh, and apparently since then, I mean, he's been performing insanely well. But I do wonder, like, what what clicked for him. Because overall, I do think this 100 Thieves team has done such a good job of drafting for their players specifically. And this roster as a whole seems to work very, very well together. We just saw four player of the games in a row for Quid the first player since 2021 to win four pogs in a row. Ooh. And it makes me want to know who that player was. I'm trying to think who had a four game win streak in 2021, who then, I, production better know this answer. Cause I, I was feel asking like I know before this the day and they're like, we just move on. So feel, if we don't yeah, have it, know. I'm I feel very like, disappointed. I feel like I know this answer. Who is it? And I'm just Write based it down off your of, whiteboard. I'm, I'm playing a yeah. meta game basically. Okay, you of think it's Poe Belter? I think it's Poe Belter. <laughs> Four I in think a row the, oh, I on think the they, COD. I mean, you had that week where you won three in a row. I remember there was that one random week in 2021 where, oh, yeah. where COG won three in a row. It's not, but we'll never guess. Thanks, guys. Wow, did they just tell us? Yeah. Yeah. The people want to know. Crown. Crown. Okay. Okay, it was Crown. Big Congratulations. Crown. Now we know. Anyway, uh, that I, just also means that four player of the games doesn't mean you're going to be in the LCS forever and you're the GOAT. So Quinn needs to be, literally, he needs to be consistent yeah. after this. And today is big because the winner of this game will lock playoffs. It could be his fifth player of the game in the row. And it's going to be the way a lot of teams define whether or not 100 Thieves or FlyQuest is legit. This is the schedule for today. Immortals Energy are up first. That big game is FlyQuest versus 100 Thieves in game two, probably match of the week. But then the rest of the day is still really important. It's a battle for the final play off spot with Dig and Shopify, and then TL and C9 will get to see which team has a winning and losing record by the end of it. So a really exciting day of games that we have today. So let's take a quick look at Immortals. They're going to be our first game playing the Whisper Challenge. Hey everyone, it's Tactical from Immortals Progressive. Today we're doing the Whisper Challenge. Come to Dragon. Drink water? What did he say? Drink water. I can't hear you actually. Wait, did he get the first two words? No, he didn't? F Come. Pop. What did, f did he say? Cup? This is unplayable. Jinx Loke. E E O E E O E. A first strike. First strike. Yeah. Oh? Yeah. What? Inting. Shit. What the shit? Gank my lane. Go. Kiss my ass. <laughs> it's kiss my ass. Not even <laughs> close. I want to try that now to see if it's actually that hard. Because yeah. <laughs> Not a lot of good people are good lip readers, I will say immediately. <laughs> All right, uh, we're back in the LCS face-off. Yesterday, Energy had a big bounce back. They're gonna be looking to pick up another win. I'd say the win against Team Liquid, even though it's a team they've been able to beat in the past, is still nice for them since they did have a very poor ending to the first bit of the LCS split, and they came back yesterday in a big way. Yeah, it was a bit of a grind of a game. Um, 
like, it was tough. And I think it was tough because of what happened with Core JJ going top lane, then they were able to recover. And I think a lot of that, yeah, Dokla. <laughs> Not happy about that camp that happened early game in the first five minutes of the game. He's like, please get out of my lane. Did you see that tweet, to his tweet afterwards? Or he was like, I don't know what I did to Core JJ in this life or all of my past lives or something like that. <laughs> that, that was a good tweet. Um, but yes, the bounce back is needed. I feel like they're definitely playing better than they did uh, before the break. Um, so definitely working on a lot of their core problems, and it's yeah. looking good. Yeah, uh, just a massively tanky Nautilus, I think, was what everyone thought in that game. Yeah. It was helped a little bit by the fact that Azir and Seraphine were the main damage dealers, and he could build like 250 magic resist and got full farm on Nautilus. But that's it. <laughs> uh, okay, so we only have three minutes left. Let's check out the predictions for today. Mm. Pobelter has the difficult task of taking the guest slot, which hasn't necessarily always been that solid. Yeah. And he's going the 100 Thieves pick over FlyQuest. You guys all put FlyQuest? Yeah, we did. The Discord oh. channel also put it by 68%, 60%. No, that's just a flat yeah. 60. So, okay, okay, okay. wow, closer I've, than I thought, yeah. I've probably lost most of my 100 Thieves predictions, even though I think overall Same. I've had a pretty solid year, but I've gotten them wrong pretty consistently. So we'll see if they can overpower there. And yeah, Eugene, I mean, I can't say you're going to be wrong because the TLC9 game actually should be close. Yeah. Are it's you a TL homer? That, that's that what a... I wanted to ask you is, what do you think TL have to do to beat C9 today? Um, I just have a feeling, I just have a gut feeling about these things. I don't <laughs> <Okay>. know. <laughs> it's hard to describe otherwise. I have a gut feeling. Like sometimes when I was still playing, I would see a matchup like underdog versus top dog and I'd be like, yeah. you know, I just have a feeling about it. And it would go that way where the underdog takes the game. And they're legitimately both five and five. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, those are the best I, ones to pick. When it's not as one side. When it's going to be like a 50-50, but the fans think it's an 80-20, mm -hmm. then you, it's like a higher chance of picking the upset, and then you become elite. So good job with 100 Thieves and TL predictions. We're going to see how that pans out. Really exciting games. Day of games upcoming. Let's send it to the casters to get us into it. The LCS is back, and we are live on weekends. We've got new teams, new players, and most importantly, we are back on weekends. Tune in for knuckle-gripping Scion mid lane action on Sundays. Watch C9 and TL go head-to-head -head like two hog monster trucks in the mud pit. Mud pit on Sundays. And did I mention we are live on Sundays? Sundays, Sundays. These patches are so live, they're dead. Just kidding. Watch your favorite pros on live patch. Jojo Pyun, Blabber, insert more pros all on Sunday. where we are one step closer to the end of the regular season as we look to close out week five. Hola, what's up, y'all? I'm Rafa. I'm joined here by Kobe as we get ready for our first game of the day between Immortals and Energy. Okay, and Immortals, we got some must-win games, okay? Yes, sir. They are dead last place right now after their loss yesterday. They need to start making up some ground, and a constant strategy has emerged against Immortals. So in the last two games, both teams against Immortals have split the jungle map, and they have zone tactical off multiple waves. Yesterday, it was on the Smolder game. But if you remember back to before the break, FlyQuest also did it to Immortals. Inspired split the map against them when they picked the AD Twisted Fate and zone tactical off of multiple waves to start the game. And it's like Immortals have not been able to start <laughs> the, the past couple of LCS games 
with bottom lane getting any CS. It, it has been crazy the amount of focus yeah. their opponents have really put on getting that side of the map ahead. And it's crazy that you bring up that prior team strategies against Immortals has been focusing tactical because in week three, when this rematch occurred between Immortals and NRG, Immortals heavily prioritized the bottom side of the map, giving tactical resources, prioritizing the first two dragons in the game, and tactical had a pop-off game on that Varus, 9-1-4 to end. All right. Well, both these teams yesterday played some Volley Bear jungle. They ban away the Ivern here, at least from Armeo. That has definitely been one that both these guys uh, have used as well. And this Senna, I know a lot of people happy to see the Senna on the ban list yes, after sir. yesterday and so much success with this champion. Uh, we will not be having the Senna roaming around, going to Void Grubs, doing whatever she wants, collecting souls, winning games. Not this one. As Immortals close out the ban phase, energy take out Huey. We saw quite a pop off from two Huey games yesterday, Quid in particular from 100 Thieves, knowing that now that these pros are getting a little bit more time with this champion, they're starting to get the mastery under their belt. We're not gonna see the painter today. Immortals first pick on the table, many champions to pick from. We saw that even though that the Senna is not available, things like <laughs> the Nautilus is still strong, but the Fall of Bear first pick, Armeo didn't get the best work of this champion in the early game, but later in the mid game, he did make it a pretty decent fight in their match against Shopify. Yeah, Volibear definitely is an early oriented champion that wants to have lanes that are going to be volatile, wants to force plays, um, tower dives, skanks, getting those flash stuns off on people. So uh, we'll see about the rest of the draft here for Immortals, you know, wanting some lanes that are volatile, wanting some lanes that they can really get him involved in rather than... We saw a couple Volibear positions yesterday where I was like, ah, you know what? There's a whole bunch of farming lanes in this and uh, not, not the greatest spot for it. But the Nautilus locked in for energy for who he, um, I mean, honestly, was a monstrosity <laughs> yesterday. Yeah. Uh, a Colossus, um, the, the tankiest champion that we have seen Gargantuan. in a long, long time in the LCS. And we actually have the stats for you here. I'm very glad that they picked it again and they first picked it for him because the stats were absolutely insane. Now you can see at the top here, the base HP, which already looks intimidating. But then when we add on one instance of all the shields, a W from the Nautilus as well, you saw uh, they took the graphic down already, but the massive, massive, massive effective health that he was able to stack up, uh, particularly against an Azir in that game as well, yeah. with all the magic resist, with the anathemas on the Azir, um, it just became this unkillable colossus of a champion. And uh, even with the Senna banned out, energy have picked it up for him again. Of course, with Senna banned out, probably not gonna be farming Nautilus. And, yeah. and probably won't get to that Giga State um, in this particular game, but still was very good with the hooks uh, as well for the team. Yeah, I mean, the utility of Nautilus being able to get guaranteed engage with that death charge is always gonna be useful, even if you're not getting the economy to make him a super colossal tank. But here we have the champion pools between Ole and Hui, a lot of shared pools, but Hui has definitely been more on the exciting chef side, pulling out some things like Zack from last year when he was on Golden Guardians. But for Ole, he's been sticking to a fewer champ pool, the ones that have higher win rates so far in solo queue. The Maokai has been a favorite for him this split. Yeah, Maokai support uh, been a favorite for a lot of supports. <laughs> with, the, with the amount of CC that he brings and the little baby nerfs that he's received in consecutive patches, Still remained at the top. It looks like, though, Energy are banning out a couple of those range options uh, for him down there that uh, really pair nicely with the Callista to have that super aggressive bottom lane um, that would pair super well with a Volley Bear. You know, if you have a pushing bottom lane, um, you know, with either of those two options, the Renata or the Ash, then you get to push the enemy under tower. And guess what? Volley Bear comes level six, tower dives, made easy, and gives you like guaranteed a bottom lane control. So, Energy with the protection there. Uh, meanwhile, it is going to leave this up in the air. We've got the flexible Talia pick, as mentioned. You know, Contracts and Palfox both love that champ, so uh, could go to, into either of their hands right now. And they're retaining their flexible status True. here. 
with this roster for energy could swap around the poppy uh, technically yeah. even into Doko's hands if yeah. they want. That was the big thing that I was looking at too because we don't know if this poppy is going to be for contracts or if it's going to be for Doko so it leaves a lot of things in the air. Normally at this state of the game Immortals could look to get you know some counter picks secured for themselves. Renekton slammed and Thresh for Immortals. Yeah. That being said I'm expecting the uh, Talia to go into Power Fox's hands you know it's always really nice into the Azir uh, one of the popular answers there. Let's see how hard they have actually cooked in this one, though. I do want to say that in past weeks, uh, or yesterday, Energy had a pop-off game with uh, Dokla on the Aatrox. We know that Castle has usually gone to Aatrox in the past before. Whoa! Whoa! Nice. <laughs> okay, when we were expecting pop-off game, I didn't expect him to just slam down the gauntlet with Vayne in the top lane. Live <laughs> We're not even live patch first. Stop doing that. <laughs> At least on this patch, we are. We're, we, ah, you know what? Let them have it. <laughs> Hell yeah. And LPL on also on 14.4, but it's okay. We are also on 14.4. And ladies and gentlemen, if you try Vayne at home, we are not responsible for your losses, you know? You just... uh, yeah, I mean, Vayne is in a very good spot right now, though, um, for uh, both top lane and bottom lane. Super high win rate for, for solo queue. Uh, so, very excited to see what uh, Dokla can do into a Renekton matchup. Um, and Jungler's definitely going to pay a lot of attention there. And the funny thing here, Kobe, is that the first LCS Vein top, or this is the first LCS Vein top since 2022 Spring, Week 8, also by Dokla. <laughs> Unfortunately, it was a loss, but disregard that for the sake of the, the story here. Also, this is the fifth time Vein top has been picked in the LCS, and it has not won yet. So maybe Dokla can change things today as we get ready to load up onto the Rift. Another big note here, Tactical is 12 and five on Kalista. We already hit on it before at the top of Champ Select that when Immortals are able to play around Tactical and support him through the early lane phase and he gets off the ground well, then Immortals usually have a better time. It's why teams in their most recent losses have really hammered down on making sure that Tactical doesn't have a good game. All right, all right. Some spicy stuff here in game number one of the day. And IMT, we said at the, the opening here though, but they are now, after the loss yesterday, the, the sole possession of last place. So really need to kick it into gear. I like this, you know, Ole has always been one to adapt to champions very quickly as soon as they get the buffs in there. So being on 14.4 now with Thresh, with those buffs that you mentioned, um, Picking this one up with the Callista, see if he and Tactical can farm the first couple of waves uh, without getting the map split against them. I think this, uh, you know, draft is definitely going to be doable for them. Yeah, the trick will be who gets the bot lane first in the jungle matchup between Volibear and Poppy, and both have very powerful ganks set up. As long as you can be able to either lock them down under the turret. Depends on how well FBI and Tactical can fight for push here. So also, let me remind you that we also had another Vayne solo lane this year. Um, it was Cloud9, and it was in mid lane. Oh, that's <laughs> right. JoJo against. It was the JoJo game. Um, against Scion mid. Yeah. Oh, early level one. Palfox is trying to check to see some vision, but he gets ignited and flashed on. And if that's one way you want to start off as Immortals, it's first blood for Tactical. Oh, that was cathartic for Tactical. The last two games for Immortals, they get the map split against them. They get zoned off multiple ways. And now he's starting out with First Blood, protecting jungle, and going right down into a uh, Callista lane here. Did did use the flash, but honestly, they will be they, they, they won't be too worried about that at all. Next on to Ole, it's just some standard training between these two. I have to say, Mask is also enjoying his time right now. He, his mid lane opponent just got burned, flash level one, and died, so he got the first shove in by himself freely. So he's up on level and experience against Palfox. <laughs> All right, let's see. Uh, let's see how much they can actually do with it. Pushing in early on here, Volibear just doing a regular clear up towards the top side, of course. You know, the, the cause of that first blood and, and the ward did see that is a bottom side start for Volibear, so they know that he's going to be passing up towards this vein. Yeah. So, um, you know, Dokla should be able to keep himself safe here uh, on a normal timing, pushing the wave in against Castle. Um, it's very difficult. Like, when you face Vayne Tops in, in solo queue as well, 
Um, them having so much control if it's into these melee matchups, getting a lot of early trades, chunking you out, and then building up the minion wave, uh, especially with the, the prevalence of them all taking Flash and Ghost. You have to be so careful about getting outplayed there. So it's, it's actually very dangerous for junglers. Um, you know, especially into a really big wave there. If you want to go up and you want to get this vein behind, you want to put a stop to the abuse that your top laner will take, but you have to be very careful to respect that mobility and make sure that you can make your gank timing work and also make sure you're not like making a very inefficient path uh, in order to do it. So Dokla on his back, I like this. He picked himself up a control ward uh, for a little bit of extra protection there too. And the boots, really, really investing into that move speed. Yeah, and I think it's a good call too because Dokla is accepting that I might be on my own for a while, so I have to fend for myself. This could be on contracts to see if they can put a stop to Tactical's momentum in lane so far. As I say that though, I just realized that FBI is incredibly up on CS at the moment. I have no idea if that's just been the way that the lane state has been going on, but Armeo's here alongside contracts. The jungler on jungler action is going to be happening in the tri bush as tactical gets chunked out. Contract's taking a lot of damage for Armeo as well. He could be in trouble. The flash from Ole. Does he look for the dead sentence? It's the flash bite from Armeo as contract goes down and the rest of energy can't do a damn thing. Yeah, Volley Bear wins those, baby. Uh, <laughs> able to get there. Has a control ward in tri brush. Chomps him down. That is huge. This is the complete opposite story for the Immortals' bottom side of the map. Massive, massive stuff for them. So now we got to look ahead already even, um, you know, at the, the possible dragon stacking there. Armeo now with, with a lead for himself too, since he got the kill, um, should be able to control uh, Void Grubs as well if they choose to. Who he on his recall, coming out through mid lane to, to sec secure some of that river vision. I do want to recall some of the things that happened in their last matchup in week three. Armeo prioritized dragons in the first 10, 15 minutes of the game. Contracts went for the first rotation of grubs. Dang. As this could be trouble for Tactical and Ole. They know that Ole doesn't have flash from before. Contracts wants to punish it. Tactical is forced to leap and hop skip away, but he cannot save his support as FBI picks up the kill. Good timing there from Contracts. You know, big wave pushing in. Uh, like you said, they know he doesn't have flash from the, the previous one. So Contracts gets payment for them using flashes to kill him. Oh, another repeat gank. He gets right on oh. top of him with Tactical. Beautiful hook from Huhi. Oh, man, they thought that Tactical was going to get out, but no, nah, Energy are making sure that he does not get out alive. Oh, my goodness. You need to apologize to him right now. Like, Contracts returns after you get the kill, and they get both of them. Cut them down. We've, we've cursed the, the Immortals bottom. Like, I don't know. <laughs> We're celebrating. We're like, finally, they've thrown off the shackles. That Everyone has been, <laughs> everyone's been, you know, zoning them off EXP and, and abusing them. But um, Huhi again on this Nautilus has just been magnificent uh, this weekend, really landing that hook and then allowing Contracts the angle to charge back as well. Oh, my goodness. Massive, massive stuff there for the bounce back for Energy. Yeah, as soon as he walks up and hits. And he thinks he's just completely safe here. And then Contracts ha hex flashing over the wall outside of Vision, right on top of him so that the Steadfast Presence Beautiful. prevents him from being able to hop away and just easy cleanup. Yeah, I mean, uh, the communication there is so key too. Uh, Contracts does not rush it. When Tactical is hitting this ward, he's waiting for Huhi to walk as close as he can so he can get in range for the hook. Then pops his hex flash. Uh, to go in for the last second and the hook pulls him back. So it's perfect angle Let's see though as um, Contracts <laughs> is back bottom They even called in Palafox to hover too. I mean this feels so oppressive right now for tactical and only they got the first button They thought okay guys it's gonna be a cool game and energy took that personally. They're like we are not gonna let you snowball today All right, well, maybe immortals will look to the volley bear then um, to, to have some say about this game. Because Armeo is pretty strong, mm -hmm. um, obviously, with that previous kill. And approaching level six as he will continue to farm his red quadrant camps. Energy are going to take up the objective, take up the dragon for themselves. But Volley Bear will continue farming and does get his level six. So we'll have tremendous gank power and, and tower diving power as well now, especially once his flash comes back. It's uh, it's so devastating when you when you do have that flash option because you can throw your E down early, um, wait for a bit of the duration, and then flash in with your Q stun. Make sure you're able to get the whole combo. 
see where he goes with it as Castle does pop his ultimate, but gets the ghost at least out of Dokla. I'm curious if Castle is trying to fight for priorities to see if our Mayo can look up and look for one of these grubs here. One of them was taken. I don't recall who took the first one here. But the fact that energy have been able to prioritize and shift their focus over to the bottom side of the map, completely leaving Dokla up on that island safe and secure, it goes to show that the early game plan is going all the plan. Yeah, Armeo, Armeo snagged the the uh, first one there for him, so he got the nice little bonus experience. Um, doesn't have to deal with the shield uh, as well as he returns back for the other two a little bit later. Tries to continue on a pretty efficient path here. Cleared full reg quadrant up towards top side now. Finish off the, the extra grubs. At least the first one now. As Contracts comes over and gets another ward here replaced for Dokla for the main top. It's been pretty solid though for energy to bounce back. I'm curious though where Armeo can really look to get things rolling again for Immortals after the explosion that we saw towards the bottom side of the map. You already mentioned that once you're level six on this Volibear, tower diving is super easy, but it doesn't seem like that Tactical and Ole have been able to fight for wave control and be able to shove it back into FBI. It always seems FBI and who he favored. Mm. All right, well, maybe we'll get some Pal Fox action with the, uh, with the ultimate ready. Um, Bami Cinder done here at four contracts. The Giga Tank item for jungle. <laughs> Uh, that in itself uh, is not even really like a half item anymore. Everybody uh, loving the burn damage, not necessarily needing to upgrade it too quickly, and you can just go into your frozen heart, uh, into your next tank item afterwards. See how much play he can actually create here with his real flash ready. You got to think after Pal Fox goes base here uh, and returns back out, maybe they look for uh, some sort of play in the area. Two and a half minutes left on the next dragon, though, so little uh, plenty of time here to try and get some summoner spells first. Yeah, probably in the next big fight will be coming around that second objective, as you called out. Energy, though, I'm curious where Contrast continues to put his time into, because Dokola has just been left on this island. He's been farming up himself quite nicely. The level, the early level seemed really oppressive for Castle, but now that he's a bigger threat in lane and he has the, the tier two boots, he's been able to kind of weather the storm against Dokla and he's holding it down and being able to at least even up in CS. So it seems like Contrax is just like, Dokla, good luck, buddy. I will probably never see you for the first 14 minutes of the game. I'm ensuring that we win through bot side. Farming up, farming up on the Vayne. Vayne will be very good later um, versus this front line. A lot of health being built on them. These contracts, again, camping on bottom side of the map. Uh, Castle, though, doing a lot of work on these turret plates. Energy just moving in squads, being able to push in that uh, bot wave first, get the first roam in, pressure on Mayo, and make sure that he cannot enter the river by himself. Ole's going to look for a hook, but I don't think they can... Can they actually get a kill off of this? They get a decent chunk out of Huhi. Not lethal quite yet. And we still have the dragon in the next minute, so Huhi will have time to respawn and get ready for the dragon, so I'm not sure if they got really anything out of that for the side of Immortals. Yeah, let's see. Pops a couple of plants. There's no honey fruit around, so just going to go for the reset and head back down for the dragon timing you're talking about. But pushing in on the bottom wave here is going to allow bottom wave push in, mid lane constantly pushing in here for Mask as well. So Immortals trying to set themselves up as well for their reset free dragon. Sure. Contract's kind of guarding against any possible tower dive or pressure play here first as it winds down. 30 seconds coming up in this dragon. FBI has not gotten a chance to, to recall yet, but neither has Tactical. Looks like Armeo's back on the map with that Sunder Sky first purchase. He and Mask are the only ones with first item completions on the map, so they're very strong at the moment. They're going to look for Power Fox. The Flash does not escape the Sharima Shuffle. Beautifully done by Mask. Yeah, Mask gets him, but now Energy with a counterplay on top side. It looks like they are going to abandon the Dragon Spawn since they got one already, and they're going to try and get some money into the vein. Castle pops the Dominus. Meanwhile, FBI is also getting pressured here. The Keeper's Verdict from Contracts knocks Castle up as he tries to buy as much time as he can with the Dominus. One more on attack from Dokla kills him. Meanwhile, FBI is experiencing the same treatment on the other side of the map. This is huge for Immortals. They win mid, they win bottom. They're going to get the Dragon. And all the energy get is the one kill for the vein on the top side of the map. A little bit of time to get some turret plate money here too and, and try and accelerate this vein, but Immortals with back-to-back -back plays, they get two. 
really huge for Immortals to bounce back after what seemed like energy being able to rectify all of the snowball attempts from Immortals. They're back in it, just under 15 minutes. The first dragon for themselves, one dragon apiece. The second rotation of Void Grubs is up for the taking. It looks like energy will be the first ones there. All right. Probably just have the split. No Void Mites, no really big extra pushing power. There are Hex Gates, though, so could have been a little bit uh, of extra reinforcements arriving. Looks like they've just contented themselves to allow energy to finish these ones off, though, as three members here from Immortals all heading back down towards the bottom side of the map. And since that bottom tower is... Uh, is quite open right now. See how quickly Tactical can get up there. It's only 15 seconds left on turret plates. Um, so probably just... Uh... Maybe one more plate. No, not even. And Ole is just calling Tactical over to see if they can look for a cheesy pick. But with four members from Energy looming in the wings, could be too scary for them to try anything cheeky here as Palafox returns mid. Safety in numbers. They travel in a pack, go the safe route, they know that they're not going to leave themselves open to any more plays from Immortals. Just get there and try and catch the rest of them. And continue the farm game. All right. Into the mid stages here. Nice little lead here for Immortals. Um, and they do have some, some decent options later on. Um, Battle for first is coming up next, though. Yeah, this is kind of the appetizer. Yeah. <laughs> this is... This has been quite a nice game, somewhat even between both teams, both having really great responses in counteraction to what the other team had to offer. Now that the Rift Herald is live for the taking, Immortals are here. They've brought Tactical and Ole over alongside Armeo. Castle has answered towards the bottom side of the map where Mask is now answering Dokla in that top side. No contest from energy whatsoever as Mask with that Natchez Tooth Rush is going to be able to burn this turret down and that is first brick going over to Immortals. A huge amount of gold for them. 2,000 gold lead in 15 minutes. Yeah, and being able to have uh, Mask push out on top side, get the earlier reset as well. Expect them to be able to use this time. Nice little interrupt here from Contracts. Kind of interrupts the, the tempo play here. Doesn't let the Azir get the super quick reset. Does cost half his uh, health bar. And thankfully, Jungle Privilege just gets the reset and is just taking one for the team so the rest can lane up on safely. This game has kind of gone in spurts here, Kobe. We see like a bunch of action happen all at once and then it just gets quiet. It's very tense as both teams are very, very meticulous about where they want to strike. If I just want to recall the standings here, Immortals, as you called it out, they are last place at the moment, so every win is even more dire than ever, whereas Energy just recently took a win off of Team Liquid, ending what was their four loss streak or four game loss streak. It's important for Energy to continue this momentum. If Immortals stop it right now, then you know Energy might be in trouble heading into the, reg the end of the regular season. Certainly will. Contracts might give them some trouble now. Flash over the wall, finds Ole on that ward and a nice pickup for Energy. All right. Let's see what they can actually do with it. Because it's still a minute and a half left out on the dragon. So a little bit of jungle presence here invading. Contracts yoinks the big chicken. Rotate everybody down here to try and pressure bottom lane off of that pick too. Top lane is going to get pushed in by the Renekton. But energy are content to just have four people here hover and pressure here on the bottom side of the map with that 50% HP tower. Make sure Dokla can get the rest of the wave and push it on in. I have to ask, you know, is energy waiting for a certain breakpoint for Doklo? Because we, we don't see Vayne tops that often, you know? <laughs> like, I imagine that, you know, Vayne at a certain breakpoint just becomes almost 1v9 status as long as you continue peeling for her. But, like, what is that? Is yeah, that two I mean, items, three items? Two items is going to be really nice. Obviously, Vayne scales super, super well, especially with the double mobility summoners here. When you're playing Vayne against Renekton and Volibear, these are champions that... If those, if they don't have flash and they can't flash on you for the stun, yeah, uh, then Dokla has you know the the capabilities to have these montage plays. Um, but when they do have flash and the flash stun on you for the vein, it can get very dangerous, especially since Castle 
with his spell shield from his edge of night has the brush advantage. Wow, that's a genius uh, first rush so that he can cancel out the condemn. Dokla is just forced to only auto attack in between, popping the final hour for movement speed and both Mask and Palafox teleporting to the top lane to make sure that nothing else happens as it's a standoff between the two. Yeah, obviously also Contrax is going to be a big part in creating space for the vein. The Poppy W will be invaluable to them. Now they're doing a little bit of a bait here as, as they have Palafox and uh -oh. Contrax in the area. Castle takes it, flashes right onto Dokla. Mask is here as well, but it's a two on three against Energy and Castle is caught between Palafox and Dokla as he gets kited down. They use it, the classic vein as bait here. Dangling Dokla, the juicy vein in front of Immortals again, daring them to go for him. Palafox and Contrax both in the area and they get the kill this time. Tactical is going to take... Oh, did you see that? Who he was trying to time the dredge line on the passage. Not quite in range, but I see what you're cooking there. All right. It's still going to be the Dragon Four Immortals, uh, despite giving up that extra kill and the Renekton going down on top side. Second Dragon picked up for Immortals as well. As you called it, it was... It's a Hextech map, so we got Portal Gaming this time around, which allows for quicker rotations, and as long as teams are taking kind of cognition of that, then they have to know that whenever they go for big objective plays, that teams have much faster response times to those plays being made. Yeah, always, always changes your your, uh, your resets here and uh, the timing to go back and grab your wards, setting up for these objectives. Um, but uh, side lane play is really going to be the big dictator here as we get into the juicy, the meaty, the mid game. That's right. Um, with the vein uh, now having no summoner spells, it's a lot more dangerous for Dokla. They do have to be a lot more uh, cognizant of enemy positions. Make sure they can keep track of everybody so you don't have uh, those surprise brush plays coming through or the flash stun from the volley bear. Uh, able to punish you now and Looks like with the Azir pushing in topside, the rotation now for Mass to come down mid lane to support this Rift Hail charge should... Oh, yeah, it's Flash from Armeo trying to look for FBI, but it's a Flash cleanse in response as Ooh. well. The Keeper's Verdict already used for the Herald, but Dokla gets caught out. No subs as you called it. That's big for Immortals. Oh, Lay with the hook, but Castle also gets but caught. Castle gets popped. The Dominance that doesn't help him at all. Energy are able to trade one on back. It is a scrappy game for game one. Our supports this OP, Rafa. We got the hook champs. This True. <laughs> hooking in these top laners. The top laners are really just support food. <laughs> Both Olay and Huhi. Eating up, uh, and <laughs> both top laners down. Yeah, but it's like you called out earlier, Kobe, that the flash summoner spell is so important to keep track because that's where a lot of these champions can just immediately make plays as soon as they are within vision. Armeo, no hesitation, flash bear slaps right onto FBI. Unfortunately, he had both of his summoner spells up, so he goes down, but when Dokla steps up, big trouble. Yeah, all right, so who he, he flashes out and then walks right by, and Ole's got the hook going through right past those minions, right onto the vein, but then Castle he gets shoved in by Palafox, seismic shove, uh, and then they're able to lock him up once they have that one down. <laughs> yeah, honestly, like, hitting these Talia seismic shoves without setup is, is definitely something that is difficult, but it's so, so rewarding. Yeah. When you have somebody kind of sleeping a little bit like that, um, really, really big benefits. And Contracts Ooh. goes for the taxi. Contracts with the W stops tactical, forces him to both use cleanse and flash. And now those summoner spells are gone from the AD carry of Immortals. Let's see. Can they punish him any further here? It looks like not too much because again, Immortals have the side lane push. So both side lanes pushed all the way in. Um, Energy take their little timing. They go for the mid play. They get those summoners off of tactical. And then they're still able to farm both side lanes as Pal Fox rotates back, so back over to bottom lane. Dokla has top lane covered. So they keep their farm up while also getting these key summoner spells down pre-dragon fight. That dragon is spawning in a minute and 30. Dokla still farming contently has only Gone caught out once with both of the summoner spells down, but Ghost is available. Flash will be available for that dragon fight if he wants to join the rest of his squad for it. He is close to two items looking, I guess it's an Essence Reaver. I, I have no idea what the the best vein builds are these days, but 
get a little bit of crit on your side and more mana regen, I guess, will help as long with as also with the ability haste as well to be able to cast tumble more often. Just gives him even more mobility and slipperiness against these players from Immortals. Yeah, I mean, there's there's a lot of builds you can go for. Obviously, everyone's well acquainted with uh, you know Bork and and Rageblade and everything and being the on hit. Um, but there is also uh, you know the the popular one where you have Storm Razor, Essence Reaver, Cyclo Sword. You know, get yourself a rapid fire cannon as well. Um, I see one of those from Hit Point Master Spring uh, from Wellcom. Played it into the Aatrox, that style, um, for the top lane vein. So it looks, looks to be the direction Dope was going. We got a Baron start here by Immortals, just trying to call energy over, but they back right off. Contract shows himself and throws out the Keeper's Verdict, but doesn't cast it. Energy gonna look for mid control. Now the Baron window has expired. Next dragon is available for the taking. Energy gonna be the first ones here. Are Immortals just gonna trade dragon for Baron? This could be risky. Yeah, I mean, that sounds like a bad trade, Rafa. <laughs> <laughs> um, there is a control ward up here, but now they're seeing a few members of Immortals go up to support this Baron. So Energy definitely gonna think something is fishy. They call everybody back over, but Baron's already at 5k and dropping. Contract still has Keeper's Verdict. Oh, they punted our mail away. They have to back off. Only Tactical has the spears to rend, but he still wants his jungler there for the smite secure. Energy still trying to keep in line. Who uh, he looking for Ole as well. They've already used the box. Castle cannot get in. He is kept away by Energy as well. Ole looks for another hook, finds Dokla, almost taken low, but he doesn't pop the flash quite yet. He's just using the movement speed from Ghost, and the rest of Energy look to kite away. <laughs> Okay. Oh, they leash Baron for quite a while. Just a little bit of damage done, but no real harm there. Baron finally stopped, and after energy push in mid lane, they're going to return, try and clear out that vision at the very least. And Immortals are just trying to constantly <laughs> threaten this Baron anytime energy even think about looming towards the bottom side of the map. But now that a couple more Immortals members are too low on HP, Ormeo. Okay, takes the Dark's Passage away, gets chunked out by Palafox, but still alive, and will back away for now. Yeah, one, one thing that's annoying for Volibear is your Q actually has a little dash attached to it when, when you actually pull the auto off. And so it's uh, kind of annoying when you're playing into like Poppy and Talia and these sorts of champions too. So uh, some of the frontline difficulties there for Mortals uh, later on, we'll try and keep track of those and see if See if they are able to, to allow Mask and Tactical the space to really fight for these team fights. Energy, Dokla still now, no Flash, but they should be able to burn through this Dragon pretty 5, quickly. 5,000 HP. Contracts gets to secure onto our mail for the engage. Force to use the ulti to distance himself away. Castle on the flank, but he cannot get in. As the rest of Energy just push him out of the river pit. Mask is teleporting towards the top side of the map. I thought they were just going to try to Hail Mary this Baron. Maybe they still could. They have the inside track. Can they burn it fast enough? Nice. Nah, push, push out the top wave, I guess. It is going to cause the response here from Energy. Look, Palfox is even coming up too. Palfox has Tully ultimate as well. So Energy have the advantage with their early access to mid wave. Uh, Immortals teleport up and they push in the top wave, but Energy with the five people strong. This turret's going down. Who he links right onto Ole. He gets pulled back by Tactical. Our male forced to flash away. It was getting too dangerous. Ole with a two-man knockup. Mask for the Sharima shuffle. Hits Dokla and contracts in the mouth. Mask is count all between them, but pops the stasis to keep himself alive. Nice hook from Ole. Catches contracts. Immortals swoop the fight, and they can look to the Baron. Castle teleports in, and Immortals now they can go for the objective. Oh my goodness. It looks like Energy could just pick up a couple of minion waves here, but Immortals, they've done it. That play, that's going to be the breaker here for them. And honestly, too, after after Mask is able to go purchase with all that extra money, that should be a death cap. Yeah, that is going to be huge now for Immortals. And I want to get a quick chat reaction. Who is the most important player for Immortals so far this... Oh, we already got the chat vote. It's tactical here, but watch this replay again as it's all Mask. All right. Um, Armeo barely lives there, too. And then you see the Azir go in, flash over for Tactical. He's able to get Dokla with the red as Dokla tried to get over the other side, back over the wall. Leapfrog does not go in their favor. And it's the double for Tactical, laughing at that one. That's your most voted important player, having a big old smile as Immortals finally nice find... timing on that one. Yeah. <laughs> 
Thank you, production. As Immortals now lead the game. 4,000 gold ahead against Energy. And at this point, Kobe, who are Energy looking to to really clutch this game out for them? I mean, right now, they're, they're in full defense mode because they're in onslaught of a barrened up squad. Deathcap completed three item power spike Azir, three item power spike uh, Kalista as well. So they're they're really praying right now uh, for an Ooh, opening. Chain of corruptions from and dredge line, but it's not enough. The keeper's verdict is gonna punt. Looks like Armeo away. Mass does not get caught out though. Saved. As Ole is gonna loom over towards Dokla. Yeah, it should be really easy siege here for immortals. They 4-1, they they get mid lane pushed in. Uh, should be able to effortlessly grab that secondary tower. And even though Mass got hooked. One of the key players, one of the most important players here, a no flash Azir. Immortals just shrug it off and they continue right back to business here with their beefed up Baron wave, with their extra big gold advantage. They're right inside the base, inhibitor number one down. Castle moves up, trying to get a little bit of extra tower damage on mid lane as well. The rest of the team rotates over. Talfox looking for the engage. Weaver's wall cuts off Armeo, but the dark passage keeps him safe over the wall and Castle. I mean, he's pinned, but he's not in danger as energy cannot step up to threaten him. And Immortals have already laid waste to both an inhibitor and the inhibitor tower on the bottom side of the map, so super minions will be pouring in as extra pressure laying siege on energy. Yeah, continues to mount here. Immortals not going to let up. No reason to. Tower's almost down. Armeo says it's go time. They burn down the tower with the ultimate. The flash flay from Ole looks to lock up who he goes down. Mass picks up that one. Ole is safe thanks to the face call from Tactical. And Immortals just meticulously whittling down energy one by one. Yeah, nice force from them. And that was even with FBI landing his chains of corruption right onto Tactical at the beginning. But doesn't matter. Armeo just forces it. Volley Bear ult in on the tower. They take down the tower. They take down the kill onto who he as well. Immortals just fighting from the bottom of the standings, tooth and nail. This is this is why so many people have been referencing the the competitiveness of the league with how close uh, it has been. Even the teams at the very bottom of the standings uh, are not out of reach of playoffs. Immortals here, if they're able to get this one, get to four wins and and kind of ride a surge, uh, moving into next week. Next week being a super week. Yep. Their, their fate is very much still in their own hands. Yeah, because for playoffs, it will only be the top six teams. So Immortals do not want to be in danger of just being eliminated from playoffs by the hands of other teams. As long as they can continue clutching out these games, they put themselves in a favorable spot. As NRG circling towards the top side of the map, we don't have Baron for another two minutes, but they are just completely seeding Dragon Control, do not want to take any chances as they look to gain wave priority on this top side. Yeah, I mean, energy right now, it's really tough. Like, they kind of got to make a, an overloaded play on the map, commit a whole bunch of resources to one side. Uh, maybe, you know, pince with a uh, uh, with a Talia ultimate or something, because Immortals just have such an overwhelming lead that they can force it in. As you can see, Super Minions on bottom side, easy access here towards mid lane. Castle does have his teleport too, so as Palfox tries to wall them off and buy some time, yeah. Castle is just pushing up the side lane on top lane and waiting as the rest of the team keeps the pressure up and they can take Dragon whenever they want. Yeah, they're almost slowing it down on purpose just to continue putting pressure on energy while the inhibitor is down on their side. Palfox being forced to use the Weaver's Wall just to defend an inhibitor siege just goes to show that energy are in no position of making any picks anytime soon it has to almost be reactive defensive yeah got to hope for that golden opportunity to yeah. to show up for you you know maybe uh, an overdive from immortals or something uh, but immortals have been pretty good here about remaining calm waiting patiently castle's gotten the top wave up to the tower the rest of the squad has full control of the jungle quadrant so they could rotate to either of their solo laners uh, the Azir in mid lane or Castle in top side. And they keep energy pinned in their own base. The death grip just continuing to strangle energy out of this game. 7,000 gold down at 32 minutes. A lot of the late game insurance policies, I imagine, has to come up through Palafox and Dokla. FBI can look to pepper them down with these lethality arrows but against the front line of armeo who now has a decent amount of armor 
Castle is very tanky just on the raw amount of HP that he has in some of these Bruiser items. I mean, we saw this crazy late game investment pick from the Vayne top, and there have been a couple moments where he's had good movements, and other times he's been caught out. And this is like the burst build, too, that we were talking about earlier. Um, you know, with the Rapid Fire, with the Essence Reaver, with the Storm Razor, um, it's, it's, it's that big Q and that, that long range um, spike, but they haven't really gotten a lot of value. And now with the Baron melting, they've got to go for it. 4,000 HP contract and to be a hero! Contracts might just save the game by stealing the Baron away from Immortals. They look to catch out Mask. He pops the stasis, buys some time, takes a lot of HP, and Contracts don't tell me he gets out of this one. The Weaver's Wall is going to cut out the rest of Immortals, <laughs> and Contracts is able to just use his E to ferry through the menu. Wave Contracto, the GOAT. <laughs> oh my goodness. Sometimes when the game is just, it's so gone for you, it's like, yeah. That's when you'll make plays like this. Just run straight at it. He puts the W on for move speed. Because of it, Ole, Ole's hook does not hit contracts. He's running too fast. He goes right in front of it and just YOLO flashes over, hits the steal, and then walks his way out too. He even hit Keeper's Verdict on two carries to make sure that he didn't yeah. get burned down. Oh my Taxis God. Taxis to a minion says goodbye, Arpeo. It's it's the YOLO play that actually works out and, and it does buy them some time. Now, I mean, this weekend we have had some weird games. So yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I want to see what state this actually puts us in. Um, you know, Ener Energy have ha had some long ones. So let, let's see what they can do with this. I mean, Contracts just gave Energy a miracle <laughs> to work with. Yeah. If they can't come off of back off of this game, then you know, I don't know what else they can do, but they have definitely bought time. Is time going to be enough, though, Kobe? That's the question. <laughs> I, can, I can see the cogs turning. Uh, honestly, yeah, I mean, the, the, the dragon in 145 here. Um, let, let's see. It is the best feeling as a jungle to be able to do that exact play. Like, that. that is a dream scenario for League of Legends. And it does allow them a lot more, uh, you know, presence. They're able to finally break out of their base. Their inhibitors have respawned. They even get an extra tower here for the vein for Dokla. QSS picked up for Dokla. Um, let's 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 let them cook. I mean, they've yeah. got they've got the possibility still. If you can find a pick, they they have damage. You know, while we have this standstill at the moment, thanks to energy getting the Baron buff, I want to get Chat's reaction. We already did. Who is the most important player to the Immortals? Yeah, who's, who's the most important, important player, player now? To, to energy? <laughs> oh, I wonder. Is it contracts? I mean, now, <laughs> but, now the, but the funny thing is, though, Kobe, at the top of the day for our lounge waiting room read through, when they were discussing uh, All Pro, they were saying which team or which player would be most likely to be the only All Pro from their team. And a lot of them said who he. But. Mm. I mean, there is a possibility that Contracts could also make that All Pro list with clutch performances like these, depending on how energy, you know, perform yeah. for the rest of the split. And, and we could see it carrying over from last year. One of the biggest uh, things for energy was, was Contracts play, uh, both in the LCS as well as internationally. Uh, him, Palafox having a really big year, and it, it definitely continuing here uh, to some degree into this year. Nice little move here from Immortals, though. They've got the cannon kind of protected there with them. They're ushering up the wave, trying to get inside the base up to the inhibitor. Dokla recalling on the vein, and Huhi and the three-member squad here from uh, from Energy. Oh, Keeper's Burning punts Armeo away. That's one front line gone. Energy have to just force the fight now. This is their best chance to look for a comeback. Castle is caught. Armeo looks to find FBI onto the back line. Can he just whittle him down by himself? Clutch stretch line from Huhi. Keeps him away from his AD carry. Keeps FBI safe. The rest of Immortals, they're pushed. They still got the inhibitor off the back end, and they're going to look for the dragon on the turn. Another leapfrog of battle lines here when the Poppy comes in for the flank, and they send the Folly Bear back over the shoulder, but in the end, it is Immortals. Onto the dragon. They've got five here strong. Teleport comes in from Palafox. Immortals do not necessarily have to fight for this dragon. It, 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 they don't need to do it, but Contracts says go on to Mask. Play on to Contracts keeps him alive, but our mail goes down. Energy can just, they can just secure the dragon away unless Mask steals it. It is secured by Dokla as Contracts couldn't get into the pit, but clutch team fighting from Energy keep themselves.
themselves in this game. What is happening? Oh my God. They actually get it there with like Dokla Auto. Contracts is up on the side. His smite is on cooldown. They picked off our Mayo though, killing the enemy jungle. Energy, they stave off the Dragon Soul. They get another objective for themselves. This team is so fun to watch. Are you kidding me? These games just getting insane this weekend in the LCS. We're headed for another 40 minute banger. Yep, it's gonna be another giga banger. Okay. Watch the replay once again. So, Contracts does get the, the, the wall bang there on the mass, but no, the, all the damage was uh, from energy was focused on killing enemy jungle. Um, and, and they did get the kill on him. And then they had to finish it off themselves while, while Contracts is, is up on the ledge, kind of threatening off the rest of the members. They do it. Nice focus there from Energy. They pick off enemy jungle. Damn, they locked him up. And uh, the Lethality Varus doing some of the heavy lifting here. Big note here, though. Energy, every single member burned Flash in that last fight. For Immortals, same thing, except for Tactical and Ole. So it's up to Tactical and Ole to use those summoner spells wisely to clutch up this fight because it could be the spelling of Energy's comeback. What's crazy is that the comeback from Energy has not come from winning team fights. It has come from just getting these objectives. They have not killed either carry from, from Immortals since the bounties got onto their heads. Yeah. We still have these big over 600 gold bounties on both Immortals carries. Mask is, ha, hasn't died a single time in the whole game. And, and the one death from Tactical was much earlier on. But Energy, through stealing the Baron, through the little uh, isolated kill there on Armeo, bursting him down and then getting objective number two for themselves, they've climbed their way back into the game without having to really take down either of those, <laughs> those key carries in the back line for Immortals. Things are so tense. There's not another dragon for three minutes, but the Baron is alive for the taking. And Energy constantly have to send members to this mid wave because of the super minions pushing through. Now, Contracts is gonna look for Mask, but Ole is there for the saving. The box, but it's tactical with the Fates Call, keeps Ole alive. Castle TPing, looking for the flank on the light play, but Ole gets flipped back. That's one for Energy. Can they carry this forward? They kite on back. They isolate Castle. The dredge line connects. Castle's completely gone. Energy, five up to three. Oh, they've done it again. They win another fight without having to kill the carries from Immortals. Ole goes in, Ole goes down, then they kill the flanker in Castle, and Energy, get another Baron! Oh my god, Kobe! Energy are doing it! They are holding on to dear life against Immortals! They were down 7,000 gold! They have just swung that gold lead back on over to themselves! Oh my goodness. Set it all on fire! Burn it all down! Energy, they're lighting up the map. They've got Dokla now up on the top side, pushing before everybody else. Let's see the Hex Gates, they're gonna get back out. I expect the 4-1 split push here from Energy with the Baron buff. They can definitely get a bunch of extra gold, and here's another look at it. Ole wants to go with it. He comes out of the Kalista ultimate, immediately gets popped there. I mean, again, there, there's so much protection in having a Talia and a Poppy on your team. Um, but yeah, they, they just blasted him there and then Contracts was able to, to work his way out. So Energy very happy to then turn on Castle who is in the process of flanking. Yep. And grab themselves Baron number two. Let's take a look at the map state though. With this Baron empowered push for Energy, they're going with the split actually trailing split pusher. So while they uh, get the remnants of mid lane here, uh, the rest of the team kind of hovering in jungle to allow Palafox to get that side up. Contracts is caught, but he's still very tanky, but Contracts does not want to take any more damage during the siege, so he flashes away to preserve his health bar. And now Energy continuing to hold this position over Immortals. We literally are in a state where both Immortals carries have maxed out bounties. Both of them with the bonus 700 on their head. And an Energy is, is winning. <laughs> they, uh, at least until this next dragon fight. Yeah. Anything could happen, Rafa. Let's roll the dice, baby. Let's see what happens now, because dragon is coming up. Somebody's getting soul. R and Jesus take the wheel here between Immortals and Energy. We'll see who comes out on top. It is soul. And Energy are the first ones in the river. Immortals have to play through bottom side because they cannot play through the mid wave quite yet. Weaver's Wall is going to cut off multiple members. Armeo and Castle are the only ones over the wall. They're burning down the dragon as fast as possible. It's 
you can do it. Castle's gonna take the portal over the wall, looking for a creative flank. 3,000 HP. The soul is secured for energy, and Castle is isolated as Armail got chunked out of the fight. And energy walk away without having to sacrifice anything. Yeah, they they land uh, Varus ultimate, which starts chaining, and then just the poke damage there. Palafox throwing out the rocks. They zone them off. Immortals don't get in. Energy. We are going to go back in time at that Baron Steel. It was energy down 6,000 something gold. Yep. And contracts just run straight at the Baron. YOLO flashes in, steals it, ults two people out, runs to the top side, survives himself, and it starts this cascade, this timeline. The timeline branching here, Rafa, <laughs> into where Energy are now in a state with the Dragon Soul, 43 minutes into the yeah. game. And they've got the Vein Top pu pushing on top side with both summoner spells. Guess what? I don't care what happened at any other stage in this game. Now they're going to be able to move up, and the Hex Dragon Soul is so annoying to deal with as well. Yeah. They're going to do uh, the, the the four... Well, they're going to take over the entire jungle here and get two lanes. I just want to recall what Contract said at the end of last year in one of the content pieces we did with Energy, uh, how he was having an argument with his teammates, like, the best players in the world always play the line. And that is the mentality the Contract has in every single game. Sometimes it doesn't work out, but other times he goes for it because no one else can and he has to take the risk on himself to look for it and when it's big it's big also your your tolerance for risk goes way up the further behind you are sure so so everybody experiences it and jungles the most right because you're in the position to make those crazy plays um and so when your team is so far behind like that your your tolerance is like you know what i, I can tolerate any amount of risk you know what because if we don't if we try and play safe we're just gonna lose slower and the really impressive thing is what you do after the big play, yep. after the steal, and how they chain that into a real comeback, a real domino effect um, there against the mortals. And even last year, this this team, before energy uh, even even picked them up, they had some crazy comebacks. They are always looking for those low percentage uh, plays, those those comeback angles. Try and pick somebody off. Yeah. Um, you know, try and steal something. Now Immortals help. They're they're trying to push up and energy are collapsing on them. Chain of Corruptions lands on the Olay. Tactical with the Fates Cole. Pulls him safe. The Weaver's Wall looking to catch out Tactical. Pal Fox is onto the backside. Flash Death Charge right onto Tactical. Seismic Shove is oh. great. Burst is huge. Olay still surviving, but not very long. The Keeper's Vern to punch two members away. Castle's isolated once again. Energy take out too swiftly. And now it's the charge towards the bottom side of the base. Our mail on the run. Tokla living in his own world as he gets to run down the bear and the emperor. Our mail on the run, flashing away. Mass tries to stand and hold the back, but he gets taken out by Palafox. Tactical's neck, the seismic shove connects. The G is not going to keep him alive for much longer. Energy, they brought it back, Kobe. They're going to win the game. Energy, they've done it. With this push, they'll get inside. I mean, it's going to take a while, <laughs> but they're going to do it here. Whoa, the Taleo is so massive there. It is Huki and Palafox that get the first two kills. And then the chase from Dokla on the vein gets the uh, condemn and flashes out, barely surviving there. Nice job on the chase to really get the maximum. Now the wave has arrived. Looking to end. Energy. Making the final crash into the two <laughs> Nexus turrets. Take out Ole and Armeo once again. Energy continue to surge Whoa. on the bounce back, continuing this momentum as we look to close out week five. That's some uh that's some crazy momentum. That's that stuff is just ping-ponging all over the place. <laughs> these are these are some wild ones, some wild times we're living in. Wow, wow, wow. <laughs> you can see smiles. They're laughing. They're shaking their heads. Damn, that's that's League of Legends right that, there. That's Rafa. League of Legends, the experience right there. Oh my goodness, what a <laughs> game! Even Croissant coming out there with a relieved expression over his face on the other side. I mean, it's almost just disbelief from the side of Immortals, and it's just for energy so crucial to continue this win streak as we get ready for Super Week next week. Three more games left in the standings. This is going to help them put themselves in a better position for playoffs. But 
So we got a replay of that last fight, I believe, in Energy's comms during the... Oh, it's the Energy's comms during the pivotal Baron Spiel that uh, turned this game around. The branch in the timeline. Let's go investigate. Uh, All right. I, I, I actually... Another blue? Another blue? Okay, so. okay it's that, it's that, it's that. It's that. It's that. It's that. I will let you go. Okay, 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 okay. That's it, that's it, that's it. Yeah, no, 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 it's just slow, it's just slow. I'm running, I'm running, run, 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 Don't worry. Can we help him still? Yeah, I'm helping him, I'm helping him. Nice, nice. The zero zone zone, guys, Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow, wow. Oh, my God. Holy. Three minutes on solo, okay? Yeah, all right. I have item after 200 gold. Yeah, just don't get caught here. I love the focus, because they're like, after the wows, <laughs> which yeah. everyone's like, wow, wow, it actually worked, okay. <laughs> um, then, then they're back on to like, all right, when's my next item power spike? I'm 200 gold off this, you know. They're constructing the actual comeback scenario yeah. from the steel where you're like, I always try and reference this too. When you have a Kalista and you're trying to time a rend with your jungle, like that, that thing is not guaranteed, even yeah. though people are like, wow, theoretically, you should never lose. It's difficult. Well, but during the 2024 spring split, use your master card to make a purchase from the Incline store and save your card on file to be entered for a chance to win a trip to a League of Legends event or a set of eight player of the week statues. Entry period from March 2 to March 24. We're headed to break before Fly versus 100 Thieves. While we wait, let's hear from Quid in this week's master card player of the week interview. Like, like... Hello, everybody, and welcome to a MasterCard Player of the Week interview for week four. Congratulations on winning this, Quid. Thank you. Uh, question that I have for you is, man, last split, you had, I think, a really tough split. But this split, you came in and you really are dominating. And people are really saying that you are maybe the best mid laner this split. How has the experience been for you, the difference? Like, how has it felt? Last split was my teammate. Most of them was better, so I feel like I have to do well in stage. So it became to me like some pressure. This split, our teammate is more younger than last split, and my jungler is liver and also Korean, so I can play more comfortable, and we don't have any communication problem. We heard from Golden Glue. He talked about. Uh, those stage nerves. Randomly, one day you you came to him. And you said, "You know what? I figured it out. <laughs> like okay. I don't care anymore." Like that one yeah. day. What was that trigger? Was it just the teammates? Until week two, I uh, I was thinking about like in stage I have to do where or I I want to carry the this game. Then I realized when I thinking like that, I uh, I feel some pressure from that. So. Now, I just think, just enjoy my game or think like each kind of scream or I want to lose game. I just, <laughs> I'm going to just enjoy. Yeah. I, I, don't, I don't care whatever I play like this. I heard you have a little brother on the team. Yes, sir. <laughs> Who is his little brother? And tell me how the environment is. Like, how are the conversations are sometimes? My younger brother is Sniper Cause. I feel like he's only two years younger than, younger than me, but I feel like he's way, way younger than me. <laughs> I, I, I don't know I don't know why, but I feel like he's really extrovert. He likes talking and he always trying to run in. It's so funny. Everyone is in my team is so funny. Yes, actually from what I've heard that has been the case and I uh, I lied about that being the final question. The final question is, I was watching your streams. You stream a lot. Who is Quidward? Quidward. Yes. Quidward, it's me. Why is Quidward you? I don't know. Someone start talking to me. Quidward. They just said you're Squidward? Yeah, so I just ex accept. <laughs> you just accepted it? Well, guess what? You're going to have to accept this award. <laughs> and, I mean, you've just been dominating. So congratulations one more time, brother. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Red Bull gives you wings. There he is. He's right there. Cover more ground in the Kia Sportage Turbo Hybrid. Kia, movement that inspires. Oh, 
Oh, I've got contracts here for what was the longest game in the LCS this split so far. How long, how long was it? It was uh, 4206. That's not that bad. Not that bad, right? I've had Solo games worse. Oh, 46. So it was 46. Oh, 46? 46? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, 46 yeah, no, minutes. It felt, it felt like an eternity. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I want to start where, where the game felt like it started for you, which was the Baron Steel. Talk, right, me yeah, through the the, <laughs> the, talk me through that moment because it felt like a lost game at that point, but you saved it. Yeah, I mean, feeling kind of desperate. I was like, if these guys get the Baron, it, the game's kind of just over. Like, they'll just be able to see your Nexus and probably just, you know, just win the game. So, I mean, I just tried to time the, the smite with the rend, and you know, they rendered pretty early or just didn't, didn't coordinate it well enough. So, kind of got lucky, but we take those, you know? I mean, definitely a highlight play for sure, though. <laughs> oh my god. Because, like, it was. I think the most impressive part about the steal was A, you get in the pit and steal it. Great, right? But then you ult pop your ult too and then make the escape so they can't even get people off of it anyways. Yeah. So that was insane. And so I'd say, I would say my question to you off of that one is like, just how about the game as a whole? Because it, it did become a bit of a, sl a, a slog. And it reminds me off of like last split where at the beginning of the split, oh, actually, yeah, beginning of the split where you guys ended up losing the IMT. But it was like, I think it's more about how this split has been going. You had that long break. Tell me about this game, personally, how it felt for you, and why was it so difficult? Well, IMT are our, uh, our kings here in the LCS against us. They, I think we're zero wins versus them in the last like four splits or three kryptonite. splits or something. So they're our kryptonite, yeah. Uh, but uh, you know, it feels good to finally be able to beat them. But I mean, the break, we kind of just worked on our macro a lot. It felt like we weren't really connecting well in the game and had a lot of different ideas, but um, recently, we've been, you know, on a pretty good trajectory and, you know, just working really well together. So even though the games are pretty sloppy and messy, uh, winning is better than losing on the LCS stage. So, um, you know, I think we'll just keep getting better as the week's going. Sounds good to me. I appreciate that one on that one. Uh, thanks for the interview. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Up next is Dig and Toss versus SR. As we go, check out LCS Connected Comms Replay presented by at and and voted by the chat. Thank you, guys. Making his entrance here with the oh. Weaver's Wall. Gets JoJo stuck on the right side of it. Now Seismic Shaw oh. putting back under the Unraveled Earth. 100 Thieves are tied for first place. Welcome back to the LCS, where we have a battle for first between FlyQuest, who I think many people at the beginning of the split would have said, yeah, they're probably going to be at the top of the table, and 100 Thieves, the team that's taken everyone by surprise at how well they have performed already. Right off the bat, 100 Thieves doing what people did not do against them yesterday, blessed. banning Senna on red side. Real blessed. I mean, Senna has just been a terror, so it makes sense that they're banning both Twisted Fate and Senna on red side. Uh, but yeah, to the point about the expectations hit, yeah, sixth, seventh, that was the expectation that us as analysts and the community had for 100 Thieves, and they've smashed that easily. Yeah, they proved us wrong. We don't know shit. Yeah. <laughs> What's your expectation on the draft so far here, Pope? Um, I think so far it looks pretty standard. I mean, 100 Thieves is banning two really high prior blue side first picks, and Fly has targeted Talia, which was really successful for Quid, who's been on a hot streak, and Vi, I think, is a power pick for River, who is a really strong enabler, ganking type of player. Um, yeah, curious to see what they'll first pick. Yeah. Another thing, another kind of cool thing about this matchup is this is Busio against his old org, mm. right? Um, he came from 100 Thieves, and Papa Smithy was actually one of the people who believed in him then, now on FlyQuest. Um, which is kind of neat to see as we pull up that timeline and draft continues. FlyQuest taking the Ash first pick on the blue side, so they're going to be going for a pushing bot lane of some sort. Yeah, and the point about Busio, even when he was on 100 Thieves Academy, there were always times where you were hearing about, oh, he's still trying out for the LCS team, yep. either during the break or offseason. 
but of course at that time who he was on the team he was more essential to the squad and so yeah papa smithy was very loyal to him especially when he went to flat quest wanted to bring him on and so i heard there was a bit of a bidding war for busio and i guess who won off that one flat quest so um looking at the pick so far ash being the hover the pick as you mentioned one of the rare teams these days that have in the lcs that have been going for ash priority usually in this stage you would go Varus. of course Varus being banned um going to be interesting to see whether four or five goes for flat quest usually they'd hold on to um Whippo and Inspired, so want to see if we get like an Azir pick for Jensen once again. He said he was going to go Gen uh, Azir or Oriana until uh, someone bans it away from him. Yeah, this guy just plays Azir or Oriana <laughs> every game. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm pretty sure he'll opt for, he could go either way against Karma. I feel like they both match up pretty decently. Yeah, and then I, I am curious. So obviously I do have to call this out, uh, despite the fact that I do believe that Ezreal will be for Masu and the Ash for Busio. We did see Caria over in the LCK bringing out support. Yeah. Uh, in quotation marks, Ezreal. Um, but now uh, we're going to interrupt our draft, our draft to have some trash talk between the two top laners. Really Thank honest. you, Emily. We have Sniper and Whippo. I'd just like to give you a chance with the face off here to exchange some words before this match. Yeah, sure, out of mind. Do you want me to go first? Yeah, yeah absolutely. I mean, yeah, uh, obviously we already finished the draft, so I know what we're picking. Unfortunately for him, I got another pretty good Olaf angle, so uh, <laughs> I don't know if he was cooking, but last time he gave me Olaf, it was not pretty, so hopefully for him, it's going to look a bit better this time. Sniper? Yeah, I mean, we got to see about laning phase first, you know? I'm like the solo kill leader right now in the league, and I mean, I'm going to get another one today against you, bro. So just well, watch I solo out. killed you last time, so well, I don't watch know Watch out for <laughs> Doesn't really, it, doesn't, it doesn't really feel like that impactful when I did solo kill him last time, so, I mean, sure. Last words? Oh. Hey, I'm just gonna let my, my gameplay see <laughs> my actions. I'm just gonna put it there, but, yeah. Awesome, Sniper I'll Whipple, thank you there. very much. You? Let's there. send it back to the desk. <laughs> Got oh my god, that was so, oh, so good. good bro. Oh, that was beautiful. I actually did love that we just got a spoiler right from yeah. the get-go, just so they could continue this, the trash talk. Good stuff there. Yeah, so we know what is going to be locked, locked in for Bwipo on blue side. We'll see when that comes through. Uh, as the band's coming through, FlyQuest taking out the Bala Bear and 100 Thieves taking out the Nocturne for Inspired. I think they kind of need to go towards the uh, Aatrox ban just because that has been Sniper's best pick. And now that he's talked about, you know, solo kill leader, all that stuff, like when it was um, Fudge versus Sniper, he actually got the snow solo kill in that exact matchup. So as you can see, the lanes have been going great here for uh, Sniper, especially for his first couple games as a rookie. Kind of insane to have this level of a debut with no one really expecting this. I wonder, um, I wonder what he picks that allows Olaf to be played against it. I wonder if he just goes Cassante on four, which would be weird because usually you'd pick jungler on four, I feel like, and say last pick for top. Yeah. Yeah, and we'll see. I mean, one thing I do want to, that, that is of interest in this draft as well, is the Kaisa pick, yes. which is something that we kind of saw coming out in other regions, but she also did receive some range buffs on this patch as well. And there we go, the blind Renekton coming in. That is the answer that gives FlyQuest okay. the oh, Olaf angle. You played some top lane. What's your thoughts on Olaf versus uh, Renekton as a whole? Uh, I think it is definitely really tricky for the Renekton. I mean, I'm like terrible at top lane compared to these guys, of course. Fair. But, um, yeah, wow, really curious to pick top there, I guess. His mindset must be that he doesn't really have any picks he's confident against if FlyQuest blind picks Renekton. Mm -hmm. So he just wants to take it. Yes. Because, um, yeah, normally you would just pick jungle there and counter for your top laner. Unless it's a Nautilus jungle flex. <laughs> I don't, I, I don't think it's, it's uh, going to be. It, it looks like a hard game to be a Renekton, though. I mean, Renekton is usually more successful when they have uh, more melees, but they have, like, two really long-range ADCs and Orianna. Yeah. That's true. I actually don't see an angle for him if uh, FlyQuest plays uh, properly. They're holding on a jungle for five, so there just has to be a pick that River's been looking at. Now, Nocturne's been banned by them. That would be the, th the pick that I would look at if you're going up against Ezreal. Oh, not Ezreal, but Ash as a support. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll see what kind of would have to save the draft for 100 Thieves. But at least the simplicity behind it is there. Like you have yeah. a lockdown from Renekton and uh, Nautilus that allow Meech on Kai'Sa to be able to play out fights. But it's looking pretty difficult so far. I'm just looking for what River has to pick here. This guy randomly played like Trundle yesterday. I wonder if he'll do it again against Sejuani. It's good mm. for Olaf top as well. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, yeah. that makes sense. I think uh, FlyQuest Draft, just holistically, this is a look that they're going to be super comfortable with, though. I think yesterday they kind of got, you know, smacked around a bit by C9 on that early top side. Great call out. Pole Vaulter, you called it. Wow, There's the so trundle. Cool. <laughs> there you go. Your first draft call. Well, what do you think about these two drafts versus each other? Who got the upper hand? Um, I want to say mid matchup is fairly like farm farm. I think this used to be more Oriana favorite, but I think Karma and Ori can both just kind of farm it out. Top lane, I think, will be really spicy for sure. I think both of them honestly have some like ego behind this matchup too. <laughs> so I, I expect that to be a big swing either way. And then bot lane, I think, will come down a lot too. I feel like perfect execution. Uh, you know, we've seen how like T1 bot lane can play with double marksman. Mm -hmm. Of course, it's really hard to execute, but um, yeah, I feel like it's also a very swingy matchup where either the Ezhash takes over or Nautilus Kaisa gets like one kill, and then that's really good. Well, we'll see what happens. You are casting with Rafa, so take it away, Rafa. Yo, what's up? So first of all, Pobelter, 200 IQ brain coming in once again with the Trundle call out. Big fan of that as Sejuani just pretty much hates her life anytime they fight each other in rivers and skirmishes and especially post level six. You get that subjugate going down and oh my gosh, you're just completely whittled down. But looking into this matchup, there's so much on the line here that I want to reiterate. This is, these are two teams tied for first place. Whoever wins, will be in sole possession of first place going into our last week of the regular season. What does this mean? If you recall your time being an LCS pro, you're like, what do you do? What do you tell yourself in these moments to like just make sure your composure's good and that you're not succumbing to the pressure? Uh, for me, it's always just like another match. Um, Sorry. No, you're good, you're okay. good. Okay. Um, sorry. Uh, it's, it's always just like another game. I've played against these players all the time before. Of course, it's a big confidence booster, though, to be able to take the win and kind of cement yourself as top dog. It's just one of those times when you just have to hold it all together. We also are joined by Kobe as well. TriCast going into what is our match of the week and what many are looking at could be the match of the split. These two teams have been so far the most consistent. FlyQuest, we touted them as definitely one that could be a, a high performer, but 100 Thieves unexpectedly surging to the top of the standings where many of the vocal minority were telling, you know, just trust in these guys. I, I look at Golden Glue and Spooks and Jungle Juice to just see what they have done to really elevate this team. And this team has just been incredible to watch over the course of the split here. Coming. Yeah, 100 Thieves have continued to surprise people, have continued to overperform expectations. Even their own coaches are like, wow, I didn't expect us to be first place. But they're having really good like breakout performances um, from, of course, the new players on the team, but also Quid last year had a really rough time. You were talking about as well. Um, had has just had an amazing uh, split so far this year for the squad. Now he's going to be on that mid karma, um, which uh, which can really help out River as well. I want to see um, what they can actually do with this jungle counter pick yeah. uh, because there's a lot that you change in the the trundle sejuani matchup like because sejuani still has really good cc advantage over trundle so in the early stages you do have to be worried about um if you're in a 2v2 uh, especially with you know like olaf is up there uh, stacking up the stun and using uh ultimate um and stun here to lock you out before you can get full value uh of actually drain tanking and uh, and making use of uh, of the Trundle ulti shred. So we'll see because River, I've had a lot of confidence in him, but inspired as well. The junglers of these two teams are are really uh, stars for the league and some, some pretty heavy front runners for MVP candidates as well. Yeah, I'm glad you brought that up because we have three front runners for MVP that have been, you know, kind of heavily pushed by the lounge going into this game. River at the top of them and then inspired and Whippo falling right below him under FlyQuest. But I know Jungle Juice was very adamant saying, if Quid does not get MVP by the end of the split, I will riot, you know? So a lot of lot of speaking out about towards this mid laner that we've already talked about has had a huge redemption arc coming from last split into this split. 
All right, so some changes when you have uh, Sejuani and you get counterpicked by Trundle. Don't go Aftershock, of course. Uh, so we've got the Spellbook here for Inspired. You don't want Trundle to get extra value out of this red. And it's a good old-fashioned rush bottom lane here. They do get uh, some slight vision at first, though, so it shouldn't be too many casualties. A lot of damage on the Quid early, but no Summoner spells burned. It's just a little bit of information being given and taken. This fly quest get some information down poked into the bottom jungle quadrant but river sneaking his way through D -d -d dude this is this is so <laughs> so scary i mean usually you have to fully respect a team that has level one olaf and sejuani on the squad it's like axe chaining and sejuani passive is so scary level one but secret agent river made his way in he passed right through the guards, the NPCs. This is crazy. How did he just sneak through everyone? He's yeah, I thought gonna... Busio and Masu totally saw him when they were <laughs> circling back on the tri-bush, but he must have just snuck right out of their range. River's just going to get a free red buff. Yeah, that's a heist. I feel like River is really good at identifying these like small angles, like cheeky plays. He's very creative. That is actually crazy. All right, well, he's going to get it. Oh, oh, Grasp Karma, actually. Wow. Oh my gosh, don't tell me it's it's not tank karma, right? Is it just like a laning rune in this case? I think it could be just a laning rune. Okay. Karma, I think, is really good with malignant. No way. He's gonna gank with pillar? Level this is two? So sick. This that is, so is sick. awesome. Flash from Ayla connects on Amasu. Can he flash over the wall? It doesn't even matter. First blood for 100 thieves. This is so sick. The secret agent, master plan, five head. Uh, River here ganks the Ezreal Ash that is going to be pushing early on and completely changes the bot lane matchup. And I think River held on to Pillar because he he knew that the gank was so good, he didn't even need it, so he can probably still take W for power clearing his farm. Wow, and this is like the lose con of a bot duo like Ash Ezreal. If this, if this, it's so fragile uh, that if it crumples once, it, that can just be the entire lane. Yeah, changes the entire structure of the entire game here. River, it pays off huge. Inspired gonna try and do something about it. Let's see about the level three pass towards mid lane. Oh, Quid steps up into dangerous territory. It might be a flash for flash here from Quid and Inspired. The permafrost stun into the CC, but it's just Quid burning his own flash. Inspired and Jensen not gonna flash forward for the kill. and make sure that they can guarantee on the next return gank uh, a kill there against Quid. I, I think Renekton was kind of getting owned. He was like zero CS, got pushed out of lane, had to TP back. Uh, Olaf gets to proxy, walk back to lane, have better gold on his buy, and just walk back and save TP advantage. So I think Olaf definitely getting the better of the matchup here. Would yeah. you say that uh, Bwipo's winning the trash talk? <laughs> uh, so far. Right now. <laughs> so far, this looks like a great start for the Olaf. Yeah, his buy is much better. I mean, Renekton no TP and only as a D blade. Yeah, this looks rough. And you can see, do it even affect River? Like he's like, okay, Olaf is proxy farming already, and on this side uh, of my jungle camp, so he waits in the brush, to make sure there's not going to be surprise Bwipo popping out. Then continues on, picks up his red buff, continues his clear here. So, Bwipo, I mean, th this guy is the most outspoken player we have in the entirety of the LCS, uh, and his, the Olaf, he really does feel like it's his Ooh. pick. Jensen, pillar, Jensen might have to flash here. He just walks on out relying only on the movement speed and just trusting that Quid does not have the damage to take him out. Yeah, um, Jensen also has a phase rush here on the Orianna too. Um, so definitely have some confidence in him being able to deal with possible pillar, you know, ganks in the future from River. So River looks topside. Jungle surfing action from River. Bwipo forced to pop the ghost, but he does not have flash. So as soon as River just waits out the ghost time here, he can just pillar and lock him into place. Sniper hits him with the stun. Pillar interrupts. Whippo should not be able to get out unless the flash. Both flashes committed by Sniper and River. And I'm sorry, Sniper, that does not count as a solo kill for the headshots, but at least it's a kill for the lane. This is still okay for Olaf because he has TP. They both need to recall here and they will miss the wave. Yeah. Oh, I think. Oh, Ooh. River sidesteps it. No way. It allows him to get out, right? Oh my god, it does! River! He's freaking smurfing this game! That was clean, that was clean. Sejuani W is overloaded on the damage on the second part of it. Oh my goodness, steps his way out. As he said, Olaf does have teleport, teleport's back. So, you know, the, the wave isn't gonna be that big of an issue and still gets back to pushing, still gets uh, back right up to the tower. But River, this, this man does more than just yeah. like, what you're expecting from jungle. He's got the secret agent level one, ganks on bottom side, then uh, you know runs through river, ganks up on top side, dodges out, doesn't give the counter kill over. 
crazy, crazy stuff. I feel like the off-season pickup of 100 Thieves grabbing River when Golden Guardians like exploded and uh, and ceased to exist was one of the biggest heists that we have seen in the LCS. Inspired still gonna be able to take up uh, Void Grubs here for them though. So collects all three during the recall of River. Yeah, you know, River has clearly elevated his team. And you know, one of those players that he has elevated is Sniper in the top side. The rookie who has been on a tear picking up solo kills against multiple top laners after his first couple of weeks in the LCS, gaining that confidence thanks to his team, thanks to the coaching staff, and now Whipple is in his sights. He didn't get a solo kill technically, but maybe, <laughs> just maybe with the extra help from River early on, he might have the tools necessary to take down Whippo. Yeah, okay, is it gonna be fair if like he gets like six ganks and then he gets a super big All right, lead, that, that might be a little inflated. <laughs> Are we gonna be like, oh, sheesh! He's, I don't know, Phil Belter, if you, if you get ganked six times and then you solo kill, is it still a solo kill? I, I don't qualify that. If there's like <laughs> outside interference and then yeah. you like lose a summer, you get chunked to like half HP and yeah. then you die 1v1 after. You, yeah. you type top <laughs> gap after that's the like six a gank? Fake solo kill. Yeah, that's fake to me. <laughs> We'll see, we'll see though, because uh, Flippo, you mentioned the early CS lead that he was able to get and, uh, you know, got, got right back on track there as well. So, uh, should be feeling pretty good about that one. Meanwhile, this grasp um, is doing work. I got to play this. This looks, yeah. this looks dope. OP? OP, baby. Just get that free extra HP. Yeah, he's uh, he's no flash, but he rushes Merc Trism to Ori's edge. He's pretty much unkillable, and he is actually just torturing mid right now. Uh, the Oriana was the counter pick, but Karma's doing great right now. Honestly, too, since uh, you know we had the the spotlight on River with so many of these plays, uh, he has been a terror in solo queue. Like his solo queue win rate has been insane. What's your experience uh, with getting River on your team and with playing against him? Yeah, River is super difficult to play against in solo queue. I don't know. Whenever I get him on my team, though, he's like off roll. He's like playing ADC <laughs> oh, no. or something. So like, I haven't had the most success with him, honestly. But always like super super difficult to play against. Mm -hmm. Uh, Jensen just forced the shockwave the way so he can pick up majority of it and get a chance to recall because the pressure has been relentless from Quid. No dragons have been picked up. Just as I say that, River is already on it for first dragon. I don't remember who took the first rotation of grubs. I want to say it was inspired. Yeah. Uh, so we have the grubs also at the top of the uh, indicator here. So That's you can right. see the grubs um, up you, right Toby. next to the gold between the towers. But um, we are gonna get the dragon picked up here for River while Inspired is on top side and Sejuani uh, does have ultimate ready. So I wonder if there will be any sort of payback there. Uh, Sejuani swapped to Ignite. This guy's out for blood. <laughs> yep. <laughs> oh, flash for flash from the supports. Ayla trying to nail Busio. And he does have Hex Flash here for Ayla as well. So always looking for those types of trades, very valuable. Inspired, since they know 100 Thieves were on Dragon, invades on top side of the map, and with the ping there, it looks to be indicating, we've got a big double stacked wave here for Bwipo, almost three waves, and Inspired looking to head up there. Jensen as well. Even Ash is coming up. <laughs> oh my gosh, and there's gonna a, be a party. His ult is ready too, Busio. <laughs> it's all the fans for Sniper, they wanna get his autograph. As they're clearing out the wave behind him, Sniper has to clear the wave in I think front. Sniper can clear this wave if he pops ulti Q. Yep. I realized it a little late, but... Empower Q, the stun from Inspired. Rivers here for the assistance, pops Subjugate on Whippo. He's isolated from the rest of the team, but he throws out one axe to make sure he at least gets the kill before he eventually falls to the rest of 100 Thieves. All right, Ayla arriving too. They hook it in, so it's, it's, it's one for one, and they got most of the minions at the tower. So not too much damage done. I, I think you're pretty happy about that if yeah. you're 100 Thieves. I, I think even if he uh, if he ulted and queued faster, he would have even survived. Do you think it was a situation where like, he, you know, the rest of the team is coming and he's like, ooh, should I bait a little bit longer and make sure they commit for it? Or is, <laughs> or is it just too risky over the over the line there? Uh, I, I think he just uh, realized a little, a little late. late. Yeah. All right, well, regardless, after it, he gets at least one grub trying to deny at least the full stack here from FlyQuest. Dream would be to deny two of them, so they can't even get to five Void Grubs, but that's too risky. They're outnumbered. Yep. Full rotation up there for FlyQuest. And Ayla, as you can already see on the minimap, is heading back towards bottom side, so they're gonna give up the others. Can't get in, but at least 100 Thieves did take away one to make sure that FlyQuest don't get all six for the full-on doomsday scenario of those little Void Mites tearing away at the towers. 
Masu is by himself against Ayla and Meech. Tries to clear the wave with the True Shot Barrage. He holds it down while Busio returns back to lane. Sniper might be... Oh, he's looking for the flash down on a Jensen, but he still has flash, so he should be safe. As he flashes away, the Shockwave pulls him right back in. Can Inspire look for something? Not even the Pillar can stop the damage out of Jensen to take out Sniper. Nice moves here from Jensen. Pulls him in. Uses the phase rush early on the to get a little bit extra damage on the Renekton, and then as they commit towards the tower, the flash away shockwave. Who's who's fault there, POB? Who you calling? Where are are you saying good play, Jensen? Or are you saying? Oh man, I love my boy Sniper. But uh -huh, I, I, yeah. I think that was that was pretty rough. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean this guy's game is totally over. Pretty much they opened top lane to make that play. He flashed, and you know they didn't even get the kill. So I think this Renekton. Maybe in He's in pain. of suffering, yeah. Certainly in a lot of pain right now. This is where you start saying it's a team game. Um. <laughs> I mean, I think overall they're still in an okay spot, even if Renekton is not that useful right now. I think Karma is really strong and can definitely pull a lot of weight in the fights. And, you know, worst comes to worst, Renekton is always a stun bot later on if you can find the flank or the flash angle. Yeah, uh, honestly, too. I mean, Kaisa with the with the buffs from Kaisa, I feel like you could put a lot of faith into me. Hundred Thieves, their uh, their young bottom lane has has performed quite well for them. There it is. Gets them both with the shockwave, and uh, Sniper is the one in the tower range. So big stuff there. More money into the Oriana. You never want that, especially against Jensen, or one of our premier Oriana players in the LCS. Uh, from from the Hundred Thieves side, though, I feel like. Kaisa uh, is definitely going to be the uh, a possible ray of hope here. The Ez is actually farming super hard, doing really well in bot. I think this lane was mostly isolated 1v1 because of all the top lane topside shenanigans, so it's surprising to see how ahead he is. Yeah, just the just the river gank at the beginning, but it, it actually doesn't seem like that river gank uh, level, level one for the bottom lanes. Um, had a lasting effect on the CS, you know, the, the Ash Ezreal still able to accrue that CS lead and start pushing back in. Was still cool though, and got them at least that kill money. I hear production now. Okay, teleport in. Dragon, eight seconds away. We've got Whippo with teleport ready, so they're gonna try and buy some time, let him push, keep pushing on top side. Everybody else positioning around. Plenty of vision already set up for FlyQuest. I think I think FlyQuest is pretty happy to just give this straight, keep pushing top, keep building this advantage sure. that Olaf has. I mean, they throw out the ultimate against Ayla, keep him in place. Dredge line connects on an Inspire. He has Flash, but doesn't get to use it in time. Might have been questionable as you already called it out. Could have just sacrificed the dragon while Whippo is making pressure on the top side of the map. They have River here to secure the Dragon, so no contests available from FlyQuest, but Whippo just might get the second tier turret. It's gonna be close. Yeah, that, that looked pretty disconnected. I know if I'm Olaf there, I'm calling, hey, just like give this, I'm getting so far ahead top lane. Uh, Renekton not even having TP to defend it and then Sedge ulted in, so that was kind of surprising. Yeah, secondary turrets on side lanes were so much gold. Whippo still eats up, but a free kill given over? <laughs> <laughs> Down there on the bottom side, messing around with the Nautilus. Let's see. And it went into one of the worst possible places, into the Kai'Sa, with, with Meech getting paid. Um, one of those very strong late game possibilities. So maybe they'll end up regretting that later, but see what Blipo can do. So is this Olaf is just going to be a menace. Yeah, this guy is juice. This guy is coming into the team fight with like two items. Everyone else has like one. Yeah. And he's also got a Sejuani on his team. So he's gonna have, uh, be able to proc stuns as well and gonna have an Orianna helping out uh, speed him up, make sure he fully gets in there. Uh, honestly, I've, I definitely see him wrecking havoc. Let's see what happened with the uh, with the pause here, if we can get an update from production. I can definitely see this Olaf just like taking Ori ball, getting Ori W'd, popping ghost, and mm -hmm. just like yeah. killing everyone. I mean, maybe they can keep him in check with like Trundle ulti, kite him with Mantra E or something but it looks pretty rough for 100 Thieves it's, side. It's gonna be scary, that's for sure. Because Olaf just runs through champs like Renekton and Nautilus, and you, I don't really rate Kai'Sa as one of the best champs that can really deal with Olaf either. I mean, he runs at you, 
You like try uh -huh. to run. You're trying to reposition with your ulti. You like, like flash. You like ghost. He still runs you down. Yeah, yeah. Maybe uh, your best hope is like somebody. One of your teammates gets plasma on someone else far away. Yeah, actually. <laughs> and you're like, please let me let me kill her instinct away from this Olaf somewhere, and uh, and try and carry that way. Uh, definitely is kind of far in the future for them to be able to do that though. Uh, looks like. Uh, Rafa with the headset switch. Yeah. We're Hello. Go ahead. Am I coming through clear, loud and clear? All right. Cool. Can you hear me? I can hear you. I okay. So. Okay. All right. All right. Well, just making sure. Sorry, guys. We just had a little swaparoo on the backside, but as we're in this pause, looks like we should be getting ready soon between both teams. Not sure what the the pause was for, but it's okay. As in this game state so far. 2,000 gold lead ahead for FlyQuest. A little bit of a oopsie from Inspired around that Dragon Pit. But as you called it out, I mean, Whippo is already having his way with it on the top side of the map. So much CS ahead of Sniper. How does 100 Thieves bounce back from this? They have two dragons on their side. Are they looking to just kind of Team Fortress it out? Just five-man death squad against FlyQuest? Or do they actually want to try and match Whippo on the sides? Um, I think they need to start finding some picks, maybe some like cheeky backline poke with Mantra Q. L definitely start looking for picks with Nautilus Kaisa. Oh, the channel Crystal Arrow already lands on the river. Do they want to go for it? It's just a little chunk from Jensen as Inspired tries to pressure him off of it, but River doesn't pop anything there. Inspired throws out the ultimate, looking for the stun. Ayla is keeping Busio back. No one falls from either side as 100 Thieves are just pushed out. Yeah, with this whole time, too, FlyQuest have the Ezreal pushing on bottom lane. So, I mean, this Masu here on the Ezreal is quite rich as well. It's not gonna, just going to be the Olaf that you have to worry about. You know, Jensen uh, with the, the extra kill that he got in mid lane uh, and the Ezreal as well, really free farming the bottom side. Plus, there's just so much map pressure for FlyQuest. They've, they've got these outer towers uh, on both side lanes down. So FlyQuest continually get to push in first, get that like pseudo vision from minion waves moving up and then rotate over. I guess they're making a move a little bit towards Whippo here with uh, River starting up the Rift Herald for 100 Thieves. Doesn't seem like there's gonna be an answer from FlyQuest here. It's a teleport from Whippo, Ooh. but just to go to the other side, oh man, they really, really don't like Sniper right now. They've brought all the fans here and Sniper, can he get out of this one? He has a flash to work with, already sliced through one, tries to slice through another, pops the Dominus. He was looking for at least a trade kill back, but meanwhile in the mid lane, looks like he might be in trouble. Masu tries to flash away, Meech is under the tower, gets the shutdown, and he speeds for an out. He has River to escort him out to safety. 100 Thieves with another kill for themselves. Well, well, well. Gets the shutdown onto the Kai'Sa as well. Meech continues to stack it up. And even though FlyQuest get the pick on the Sniper on bottom side, it's like, Renekton's, Renekton's already <laughs> pretty pretty out of the game. I guess if, if Whippo's able to turn it into a tier two, then he'll get paid, but River's already here to try and stop him. Yeah, I wonder how they found that pick on Ezreal. That was actually a bounty that Kai'Sa was able to pick up. So huge that they get compensation for yeah. Sniper getting targeted in bot lane. Farm bounty. To that, uh, production gave us a very ominous note. They're like, all right, we're going to test some stuff. <laughs> Get ready. <laughs> um, we're it figuring does, things out here. <laughs> it does look like uh, they're still going to continue pushing out on, on side uh -oh. lanes here. Teleporting on to Jensen. He does have the phase rush. Jensen might be in trouble here. Right. Flash over the wall. All right. Well, he's out of there. Flash for a teleport. That's going to leave the bottom side of the map wide open. It, if Masu can get away from this, then they're hard forcing. Wow, musical chairs with the TP. Inspire TP. throws out the ultimate, looks for Meech, but perfect cleanse from him. Able to escape danger since he doesn't have flash from the fight before, but gets locked up here by all the CC from FlyQuest, and he eventually goes down. Jensen picks up that one. Inspire taking down to the Ignite, and the last hurt shot, is gonna trade one back, but he falls to Masu on the cliff fire as the rest of FlyQuest try to lay siege. And Jensen tries to go protect on topside afterwards. You said it, well, uh, not done quite yet. Oh, Busio might be in trouble. The pillar is going to separate him from the rest of the team. Webo can fire. Masu, Arcane shifts in. Not enough damage on the quid. All right, Pull out there. Who won our game of musical chairs? <laughs> <laughs> with, our, with, our, with our swap of the extra teleport back up topside here for Jensen to, to make sure they didn't lose that outer tower as well. 
Uh, uh, definitely favoring FlyQuest, I think. Yeah. Uh, feel, feels really bad to waste both TPs like that and, you know, not really get anything. Yeah, I mean, the, the Dragon is coming up, but, but everybody else coming out of base with the full reset here for FlyQuest, so... 100 Thieves trying to get early priority there while the reset is happening. Uh, at least get maybe some position with a brush play. I guess they're hoping they can get some sort of quick pick. Man, I, I really think it's in FlyQuest's best interest. I mean, I'm sorry, 100 Thieves' best interest to not take this fight. I just see no way in which this Olaf does not completely run over everyone in the fight. Two item spike and an Orianna to buff him. Inspired looks for River. The ulti finds him on the back half of it, but he just shrugs it off for now. Dragon still at 8,000 HP. They don't know where Olaf is. Yeah, Whippo is looming in the shadows, waiting for the perfect flank opportunity. Doesn't have flash, but he pops the ghost and he tries to pick a target here. 4,000 HP on the dragon. Storms right on in. River tries to face tank it, but he burns River down. Whippo just goes right on to meet. The killer instinct over the wall keeps him alive, but Inspired is able to pick up the dragon on the backside. Whippo is finishing off the rest of the members of 100 Thieves and she just, just runs them down. 100 Thieves are sent to scraps and Meech is the last one on the backside of it, but man, he is in a world of trouble. He's got nowhere else to run and he's trying to wait out the death timer here, but Inspired will secure Cure the kill. FlyQuest push themselves up 5,000 gold. Gives them the thumbs up, uh, a little dance on the body there as well, because Inspired knows that one was blowing the game wide open. Uh, you you yeah. said it, Pope Belter. It's You can kind of see the writing on the wall. It's like Whippo is on Trinity Force and uh, the Sundered Sky here. Yeah, he uh, he had so much impact that fight. Pushes out the Nautilus towards topside and then goes on the rest of the four with Ghost, you know, pretty much face tanking and killing everyone. Yeah, and you'll see, like, he does go right at uh, uh, Meteor and he, he chunks the Kai'Sa and the Kai'Sa is able to ult over the wall, but Kai'Sa's gone then and they already just basically killed River. The other ones just get annihilated there, so Kaisa's out of the fight. Nautilus was already out of the fight at the beginning because Whippo wrapped around and they chased the Nautilus away, so 100 Thieves completely dismantled there. No chance. 20 minutes in the game. Baron has spawned. FlyQuest are going to see if they can just lure 100 Thieves and bait them in. They're going to slowly burn it down. There's no vision quite yet from 100 Thieves to check it. As Quid is now going to check with that Mantra Q. They still see that 8,000 HP. It's going to slowly sink back up. The Rift Herald is going to be spawned by 100 Thieves. Maybe they can try and jockey for position in the mid lane. All right, Rift Herald popped. Try and get something back. I mean, the charge is not going to kill the tower. Are they baiting themselves? Not quite yet. They, no one wanted to steer the Rift Herald into the tower. So it's just so tense from the side of 100 Thieves. Man, it is going to be so tough for 100 Thieves to try and claw their way back. Now down 7,000 just from all of the residual gold that FlyQuest has picked up off the back of this fight. So they're trying to crash on in and collapse. This tower should fall. Sniper popped the Dominus just as a force of strength to force FlyQuest away. All right, they got an objective bounty. Whippo was pushing on topside, and, and that's all the way up to the inhibitor tower, but they tried, uh, and they kept their eyes on the prize. They got an objective bounty, 400 thieves. It's still going to be such a massive gold lead that they're facing, and a massive discrepancy in that map control. You see, after Whippo pushes topside, he comes back down to the red quadrant uh, of the jungle here. They've got wards already for FlyQuest up behind the Baron. And FlyQuest's turn off of Baron is really scary with Ash Arrow and Sejuani and Olaf just ready to go turbo on you. So if 100 Thieves are going to try and stay safe around the Baron, try and, um, you know, poke around and try and stop FlyQuest from doing it, you have to be really, really careful uh, about the possible turn off of it and the catch. They, they actually don't have any blue trinkets here. I feel like... You know, they need to definitely swap to Blue Trinket here. Kaisa mm. can check with W, but I, I think eventually it's coming down to FlyQuest taking Baron control here, and there's going to have to be another 5v5 to contest Baron, which, again, I feel like just favors FlyQuest with how ahead this Olaf is. Yeah. Jensen, congratulations, 3000 uh, assists for you. Do you see, Pobelter, a contracts play in, in River, maybe? <laughs> <laughs> if FlyQuest start doing the Baron and they're burning it down and you just yellow it. Dude, that one was crazy. Uh, yeah. That was like the Callista time, but there's no Callista to uh, throw a wrench into the equation here. Yeah. 
Meech sidestepping the Glacial Prison here, the Cleanse to break open the slow and flashing away from the True Shot Barrage. Meech still surviving, but now down both of his summoner spells. It's going to make any future fight for 100 Thieves even more difficult to carry through. They're so calm. Uh, the, the game is in the palm of their hands. FlyQuest, uh, you know, tied with 100 Thieves currently for first place, but really this entire split, it has been FlyQuest a juggernaut. You know, they dropped a game here, they dropped a game uh, there. Yesterday, obviously, was a very big one, but they're bouncing back really quickly here uh, in this one. It looks like it could be a teleport up top to try and get another objective bounty. They're gonna get an early push on the minion wave. How low is that tower? Is it? Is even close? Maybe no, he definitely can't push that. Oh, arrow coming in. River flashes, but still gets caught by it. Is going to be enough to keep him locked down. Not quite yet. He speeds on away thanks to the W. FlyQuest were looking for that pick, but it's still a flash off of River. And if we talk about miracles, it's going to be even less easy to perform if there's no Blast Cone to get over to the Baron Pit. I think the one saving grace that 100 Thieves has is that Karma is online. Like, maybe we can start chaining the Mantra Qs. It's going to reset every time with Malignants, but either than that, it seems really difficult for anyone else to find an opening. Like, maybe yeah. a Renekton TP flank, but that's still super hard. And it's annoying because Sejuani's trying to body block all your Mantra Qs, standing in front of you with a, with a uh, Kainic Rooker and, and Merc Treads. Uh... Got to thread the needle. I yeah. guess FlyQuest will be happy to take up this dragon. They've got the control ward on Baron that will see uh, 100 Thieves as they move in, but 100 Thieves know that would be way too risky to pin yourselves inside there. They know Meech is on the side, and he has no summoner spells. Just watch your eyes for Inspired if he tries to fire his next Glacial Prison. Actually, he's just going to throw it right onto River through the front. A teleport is coming in from Whippo, and he has an all-access back pass to Beach. Meech has to be careful when he plays this fight because Whippo has now arrived to the party. He pops a Ragnarok and he just melts River the Shockwave from Jensen! Cleans them all up and piles them so that Whippo can just run them through! All 100 Thieves members get eviscerated in an instant! Quid is the only one left standing, but he's not going to do enough to keep FlyQuest from being able to charge into the base. All right, the standoff. <laughs> Inspired just <laughs> trying to keep him from recalling. Boking around, he can't solo kill him, and the rest of FlyQuest move inside. That's going to be breaking open the base. I guess these guys are just going for the end. I mean, they didn't go to Baron, so they must be trying to end here. Yeah, I mean, that that was an absolute massacre. I guess they'll, they'll get the oh. inhibitor and look back for it. Now they're going to go oh, collect. Oh, no. They pick up the Karma, and then they're going to get Baron. Oh, boy. I mean, Quid is able to survive for a little bit, but... Inspired is just keeping him in range so that Whipple can easily clean this one up. Ragnarok is not available, but Quid is running low on mana. Ayla's here, the flash away, the dredge line, it forces Inspired's flash. Hold up now. 100 Thieves are back on the map. Inspired use, forced to use his ultimate here. 100 Thieves might have a window. I mean, Karma healed so much and, and bought so much time there with the, with the grass, with the tether that the rest of the 100 Thieves are able to arrive, but they don't get anything for themselves. They, they're just able to chase them off. Wow, he must have farmed like 10 Grouse procs there. Yeah, massive. Honestly, I want to check in and see, see what he's at now. TP is coming in from... Wait. Oh, he has unsealed spellbook. I didn't even realize this whole time. <laughs> I was like, how did he teleport? Oh my God. <laughs> okay. Well, awesome tech from Inspired as Boosie might be in trouble. The uh, death charge. Oh, and the face plant into the wall. Oh, that's not good. Okay, Meech picks up a kill. 100 Thieves now five on four, but Ayla's going to be caught in the straggle fire as well. Jensen gets the Crypt Bloom as well. Inspired looking for another target. 100 Thieves are forced to run as Masu Arcane shifts in. It's an open inhibitor through the mid lane. So they have to make sure that they are tending to the minions that are pouring in through. FlyQuest are now on the Baron, but 100 Thieves know that they're on it, and they can try to match 4v4. I mean, it's 3k. You got to look for the turn. There's ah, River man. gets clipped by the ultimate 2,000 HP. Sniper oh. goes in, flashes in with the dominant, tries again. As much work as done possible. Masu falls. Sniper is traded on the back end. Quid falls as well. Meech is going to get run down by Bwipo. FlyQuest even in the face of adversity. Persevere and take the Baron. It was a good try. You got to go for those, but it's yeah. just too far behind at this point for sure. Yeah, Sejuani Ultimo is ready. Inspired turns around. They nail him with it. They get the kills, they get the Baron, and FlyQuest will come marching into 100 Thieves territory once again. And this is a 10.7 thousand gold lead 
that they have acquired. Jensen hasn't died the entire game, by the way, uh, on his Oriana. Absolutely crushing it. Power spike. Take a look back at that replay once again. I mean, it is just chaos between both of these teams here. All right, 100 Thieves, yeah. As you said, they're getting, they're getting desperate here. They know. Trying to trying to make one of the plays. The Sejuani ultimate into the Ezreal ultimate chunks River out. So he doesn't die, but he can't really enter the fight. You know, he's got his his ult on, but he's kind of on onlooker as Wipo gets to run rampant and do Viking things, running over everyone. Rest of FlyQuest starting to take up position in this bottom jungle quadrant. But the Baron on their side, they can start beginning siege prep against the bottom inhibitor tower. Quid dodging out on the arrow from Busio. But he'll have it back up again soon, thanks to the ability haste in okay. his build. I think there's going to be one last stand. Renekton has a ward flanked to P2. I think they're going to try one last fight here. Otherwise, there's no chance. Oh, it's a blue trigger ward. Oh, no. Oh, no. It's okay. Uh, they throw the <laughs> There's one more bounty. ward. There's one more ward there. <laughs> they're, getting, they're getting the objective bounty on top side. Yeah. 100 Thieves are just calling for Sniper. Get that turret first, and then you can recall and then maybe, maybe look for a TP flank. There was that one ward in the blue jungle quadrant, but it would be a long walk back to make that flank possible. And FlyQuest might just take the base before Sniper makes it even happen. They're going to go for it right now. There's one right outside of the base. Sniper, does he want to dash over the wall? Does he want to walk the way around? But he's spotted on that control ward, so FlyQuest have full information of this flank even happening. Happening, so they can just continue to barrage down onto these Nexus Towers. River is forced to recall and soak up HP. Ayla might just go down the death charge. Bwipo just melts him with Masu. Sniper's on the back half, tries to threaten Masu, but Bwipo trades his life for Sniper. It's still an advantage for FlyQuest. One Nexus turret between FlyQuest and 100 Thieves. Mage falls, FlyQuest being able to persevere once again. The shockwave clips him. FlyQuest will take sole possession of first place. <laughs> Smiles there from Whippo. He definitely had fun. Some trash talk beforehand, some celebration afterwards. Goes to uh, congratulate every single teammate FlyQuest once again, reclaiming the uncontested first place spot at the top. You gotta think though, in the back of your mind still, Cloud9 with the performance yesterday, uh, you know, even if they're not at the top of standings here. All right, Jet, what you got? We got Bwipo right here. You did mention that it was a good Olaf angle. Confirmed? I mean, I think the gameplay spoke for itself, but not in the way that he wanted to. <laughs> I'm seeing the damage. 18k for you. Your, your Jensen got 10 kills on Oriana. How's the team feeling now going to the last three games? I mean, for me, uh, especially the first game we played, I wanted to... Uh, I was actually considering picking a different champion yesterday. Usually we have a lot more insurance and scaling in the top side, and... We don't want to put too much pressure on our rookie bot lane to perform on stage, but since we had a 7-2 record and we were going into uh, an important match in the, against 100 Thieves, I thought um, trying to see how our uh, bot lane performs under pressure where they have to get ahead and they need to win lane in order for our composition to work is going to be a good test right now so that we can kind of readjust when it comes to playoffs. Because as a rookie myself, it was really hard to like mimic what happens in scrim and then pull it off on stage first try. So going into playoffs and thinking about playoffs, I wanted to make sure that they had an opportunity to, you know, try, see how, see how we play on stage, and then kind of fine tune how aggressive we play, how passive we play. Because over the course of the break, I've been working a lot with uh, with them, making sure that wave management is sound and the way they think about the game is more cohesive and including everyone on the team than normal. But today we went back old, same old, same old, a little scaling in the top side and make sure that we have some insurance just in case we don't get the advantages we need or like we would want. Our top side still got it covered, so um, that's still our main strength, I think. And obviously today we showed against 100 Thieves, which is the second best team. So pretty happy about that. Yeah, sole possession in first place. And Jensen, really quickly, another another Oriana win. Uh, yeah, 10, 10 kills in Oriana. How does this one stack up to the Oriana games of the past? You did secure first with this one, at least for now. Uh, uh, I mean, how does this stack up? I mean, it's just like an average Oriana game for me, like nothing special here. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, uh, thanks. Congratulations once again on the 10-0, uh, Oriana. That's it from here with FlyQuest. Uh, up next is going to be Dig versus Shop Fire Bill. And as we go, check out the LCS Connected Comms replay presented by AT&T and voted on by chat. Flash, can you hope? Maybe he can't get out. Wait, this guy no flash. No, 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 no sums, this guy. No sums. Wait, wait, wait. I think Kaisa knows sums as well, by the yeah, way. Yeah, Kaisa knows sums. Dark Hila wanna throw ult. Okay. I, I can TP behind them right now. I'm TPing behind them. I'm TPing behind yeah, them. Looks good. Looks good. Go forward, guys. Forward. 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 Out for now. Yeah, yeah. TP. 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 
Now ult Randall. I'm going in here. I'm Kaisa. Kaisa. Kaisa no Sams. Kaisa no Sams. We can end, end mid, end mid, end mid, end mid. Okay, oh, we have uh, wave. You think we can? We or I think we can. I mean, one person can come from... Red Bull gives you wings. There he is. It's right there. Cover more ground in the Kia Sportage Turbo Hybrid. Kia, movement that inspires. So what makes a yordle? I'm glad that you asked. Explaining the answer is no easy task. Sure, yordles agree in both size and in name, but that doesn't mean we're exactly the same. In gadgets, and yordles are all about tech, like Rumble, inventor of flame-spitting mechs. There's bots, electricians, a chemist or two, explosions set off by suspicious shampoo. The Yordles of Greensprout grow lush, wholesome crops. They farm and they garden, they fish and climb rocks. You think you're outdoorsy? You might lose that bet to Teemo, the Grove's greatest Vandal Scout yet. For fresh inspiration, escape to the Isle of artists, musicians, and chefs by the mile. With Lulu to grant you that whimsical spark, you might find yourself at a huge water park. In Yarnville, where Yordles make scarves and warm hats, it's there you'll find knitters and Yumi the cat. This stuff is like magic wherever you walk. Yarn houses, yarn bridges, a yarn talking sock. From surfing to fashion, from acting to map, we've all different passions, our own unique path. Some call us obsessive, some say it's a phase. That one little thing sends us into a craze. When yordles can't tinker or teach or make art, it ain't long before our whole world falls apart. However we fix it, we must fix it soon. By might or by magic or giant harpoon! But one thing's for sure, that for worse or for better, what makes us all yordles? We're yordles together! Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the LCS. It's time for game number three here today. We got Dignitas going up against Shopify Rebellion. I'm Captain Flowers, joined by Azale, and we're bringing back the notorious P.O.B. for the back-to-back -back cast here for game number three. How'd you like your game number two in there, buddy? 
Uh, that was that was pretty fun, honestly. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I was like kind of nervous. Uh, I wasn't sure if I would say anything like bad or weirder something. I hope it came across okay. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, man. We all say goofy stuff sometimes. You just gotta follow your heart. Say there, Pope. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So jumping into this one, both these teams now tied in the standings. Remember, it was Shopify taking down Immortals yesterday, while Dignitas fell to 100 Thieves. Both of them sitting at four and six here now in the middle of the pack with Renekton and Twisted Fate fanned out by Dignitas, the Azir, and Callista targeted here early by Shopify. I'm really curious, what, what is your take on uh, Insanity's champion pool? Because some people are really a big fan of when he's playing kind of this crazy stuff. Some people are like, ah, you should just stick to what's normal. Yeah, uh, what's, what's your take? I think he's like definitely a creative style player where he just like likes to break the meta or pick things that are not mm -hmm. very conventional. Like last year, he had this weird like, graves mid arc. Yep. And then earlier in the split, he was playing like he played uh, Zach, he Zach. played Garen, he played Sion. Yeah, and then I think he's tamed it down now. I asked them actually, I was like, you know, how do you guys feel about him playing these like edgy picks where you guys like, okay, like cut it out, play some meta stuff now? Mm -hmm. Or do you let him do his own thing? And they said, no, we just like let him do his own thing. All yeah. right, well, we got the Senna and the Varus band away, targeting some of those popular bot lane marksman choices. Let's see how Dignitas wants to start this one off here, playing from the blue side. The Orianna would be a classic we see pretty much. Uh, I mean, you've played a lot of competitive League of Legends as a mid laner. This is one of the most evergreen champions, I feel like, in pretty much everyone's pool. Yeah. Actually, they go for the Smolder, though. Okay, yeah, going for Smolder. Tomo being the first player in the LCS to break that out in a previous week. Has played it a couple of times now. How do you feel about this champion with it being so new? Lots of conversations around the scaling potential and how fast it stacks and the differences between pro play, solo queue, things like that. I think as the weeks have passed and people have figured out better how to play and how to itemize the champ, I think it's like a pretty solid pick overall. It does scale pretty well um, and like, Loki, it's kind of a flex. Like, you can flex at top mm. in some cases. I don't know if they'll flex at mid, but... Uh, yeah. Yeah, I think it's a solid first pick, yeah. I've been kind of surprised to see it not being played in solo lanes much in pro at all, because in solo queue, it feels like much more prevalent as, a, as kind of like a flex. Uh -huh. um, I know Nemesis was playing it a ton mid, and people were kind of watching him. I know I was watching Lorlo a lot when he came out, and he was playing it a ton top lane. I think, you know, definitely as a counter pick or as an answer, it can be pretty strong in some matchups. Yeah, I think um, if they pick something where you can just farm stacks, uh, something that doesn't have huge dive potential. I played it against like Fiora one game in solo mm -hmm. queue. Mm. It felt super good to just be able to like build Swifties. You're and just kite. farming queues on them. Yeah. yeah. So, so I think top lane, if anything, there was a. Um, I think Damwon in Korea did play a top, although he did go like this corrupt tank build. Uh, are you talking about the grasp stuff? I've seen I've seen some people doing a lot of like grasp tanky uh, smolder top as well. Yeah, and just playing off the stacks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it can definitely work. I mean, there's a lot of power just in the, in the obviously, the true damage and the execute as well. Uh, so we're going to have Illusion locked in, Volibear on the other side. Volibear, obviously, really popular now on this patch, it feels like. Oh, yeah. Uh, has been getting stronger and stronger and is becoming really prevalent now. And even with Senna banned away, Nautilus is going to show up in this game without her. We've been seeing a lot of this guy here as well. They'll be playing that down in the bot lane alongside the Smolder for the side of Dignitas. And they'll lock in Talia for what I'm assuming is the mid lane. All right, so if you're Insanity here, Talia's locked in. What kind of champion are you looking to play? I think Insanity's mindset is like, don't worry about me. My champion pool is so big. I can go 4-5. Let's just lock our solid bot duo. They go Nami Lucian. Classic combo. Um, I think a lot of options you can go mid here. Quay, I think, is good versus Talia. You can go Orianna for sure. Mm. Karma's still on the table. And all of these picks synergize pretty well with Volibear jungle as well. How about for you personally? What would you play into this, just knowing the three champions on the enemy team comp so far? Um, I think I would probably favor... Oriana, personally, that's okay. just me. I, I like the matchup versus Talia. I feel like there is solo kill potential throughout the game. And I mean, Oriana is just one of the best picks for mid for sure. Mm -hmm. It's interesting seeing Lucian Nami come back. It's definitely not something that's been getting played a lot on this patch. Only four picks across all regions on 14-4. Um, but Lucian Nami, as you said, classic combo. Uh, and it was kind of interesting, you know, hearing hearing different people's opinions on, on this you know, as a duo. I think it was um, Jan, who is on pros, talking about this, and he said he felt that a lot of people kind of misunderstood the point of Lucian Nami. He felt that it's less about you know the laning power, and a lot of lanes are actually more 50-50, and it's more about the control around mid, and how you can actually play off the ways uh, around mid lane, that people can't actually challenge you there. If they step too far, you can chuck them down, so it allows you to have first move to objectives more in mid game. Um, and that was kind of how he was looking at the power of this pick and this duo. 
you know, how do you see Lucian Nami and, and kind of how it fits into pro play? Yeah, I think I kind of interpreted it similarly to you, where you expect the Nami Lucian to be able to get a lead in lane and then transition to like a strong mid game with a gold advantage. But I, I do agree that even if you don't find the greatest advantage in lane, that it's still strong in mid game with the spike, like just as Nami gets um, like one real spike mandate. and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right, well, hold on now. We've got the Hui being hovered with the Orianna that you called out earlier. Dignitas respecting that sort of line of thinking, banning that out, also removing the Udir, taking out one of those options. That's a pretty solid pick to choose for top lane into almost any matchup. Pick that one blind. They don't want him taking that. Double jungle ban from Shopify, making sure that both Vi and Poppy are off the table, and they will lock in the Hui. We got Kobe standing by for a little bit of trash talk as we get into the second half of the draft. Welcome to the cage match between Shopify Rebellion and Dignitas. We've got Insanity and XU. XU, I'm coming to you first. The jungler for Dignitas. Who is the weakest link on this Shopify team? Who are you ganking? Who's the easiest? They're all free ganks. They're all Everyone free. can die, yeah. I mean, David doesn't have a dash this game, so uh, he's a pretty easy target. Mm. Uh, You're PVA, man. You struggle <laughs> with that on its own. Bro, you can't like, gank anything. I have a 90% win rate on Sedge. What do you have on Hui? Well, Ooh, you just got what? demoted to Sedge wanting duty for a reason. Yeah. Oh, I mean, we got to win, you know? We need this one. I don't know if you'll win. Yeah. <laughs> the classic, the classic. All right, good clean game. Uh, expect those ganks uh, or the mind games that are coming with it. There we go. Oh, my goodness. Let's get into it. <laughs> Oh my god, Insanity it, is too funny, man. <laughs> uh, first the eyebrows yesterday, I don't know if you caught that at the, at the beginning of the day where he's doing the eyebrow wiggles to the camera and stuff. <laughs> the guy's cracking me up. Not afraid to flex a little personality there, but it will be the Gnar locked in for Dignitas for Rich in the top lane. This Sejuani picked up for XU like they were talking about. What will this final choice in this draft be for Shopify? How do they want to navigate the matchup into the Gnar? Remember the Udir, the Renekton, both already banned out by Dignitas. Really the only two top lane picks here in the band so far. Shopify going to take their time. Shopify about have, this one. have basically no engage at Could all. Be Chase. Oh, I was just about to say that. You, you think they're just going to play kind of like longer range? Yeah, yeah. Chase is is, uh, you know, classic, like, a, a lot of top laners love playing that into Nar. Mm -hmm. Jace just got pretty strong buffs for laning. Um, so I like the pick, and Fake Out is like a Jace guy. He loves playing it. Which comp would you rather be playing on? Um, I think I'd rather be Dignitas side. If, if I'm just viewing from the mid lane purely, I think I like playing such, uh, I mean, I like to play Talia with this uh, Sejuani CC to play off of, or Nautilus CC. Um, that's just me, though, personally. Yeah, and I will say, you know, as much as I think Jace is a solid matchup into Nar, we see this a lot in, in pro play where people play these compositions like Shopify has, where it's very low to, to, to none uh, as far as hard engage goes. Yeah. And if you make any sort of mistakes with this, the game falls apart completely, right? Because you don't have pick really to be able to pull it back. I think it becomes a lot more difficult. You're very dependent, I think, on playing from a lead, on being first to the objective. Whereas on the Dignitas side, they have so many go buttons. You can cut people off with the Talia ult. You have, you know, potential flanks from Meganar. You have engage from Nautilus, from Sejuani. Like, there's so many ways, it feels like, to start the fights and to find picks. Shopify, I think their composition seems so much less forgiving to me. And yeah. that makes it tough, right? Like, especially when we're getting towards this end of the season, when we're getting towards only one week left to play before we make it into playoffs after this one. With how close these standings are, with how crazy everything's been, you got to make sure that every single game you're putting forth that best effort. And for Shopify, I always look critically at teams that don't draft a lot of engage when they've been having some issues with communication and coordination already. So I think if they want to walk away with a dub here, they're really going to have to step it up, both individually and as a team, making sure they don't fall into those situations like you guys are talking about where, oh, okay, I guess we're just sitting in our base praying they mess up. Yeah, I feel like on paper, Shopify Rebellion, honestly, it looks like to me they have three winning lane matchups and, you know, they have a jungler that can capitalize off those advantages. But if they don't find a lead early, then I can see their 5v5 being pretty tough to execute. You know, very squishy. Four squishy champs with only one volley as frontline could get run over if you don't find a big lead early. Yeah, I mean, pretty much anyone who gets engaged on is probably going to get one shot, you know, except maybe that Vola Bear. Uh, what would you say the job is then, you know, for, you know, if you're saying it's it's expected winning lanes you know, for Shopify, what would you say the job is for, for Dove, you know, on Dignitas? You know, how, how are you going to, as the enemy mid laner, kind of minimize the loss in the early game to keep it stable? Um, I think as Talia, I'm just looking to farm out the lane, which I definitely think you can do in this matchup. Definitely apply gank pressure to mid. I think Hui is very gankable as such, Talia. 
and then just look to move around the map together to kind of neutralize these aggressive side laners like Jace and okay. Nami Lucian with the Talil. That, that would be my game plan. So you think Dignas should play through mid first and then use that to go to the sides, basically? Try to secure mid lane advantage, you know, be able to have Talia unlocked to be able to move to the sides? Yeah, exactly. Just look to counter the early aggression that I'm assuming Shopify is going to bring to the table with, like, Jace top, Nami Lucian bot. I would expect with the Nami Lucian like you're talking about and Jace, that early control and Volley Bear versus Sejuani being a matchup where you would expect Volley to win in the head-to-head -head on that anyway, should be lots of early control across the rift, mm -hmm. right? for the side of Shopify, but we'll see how it all ends up playing out once we get in there. Loading in right now, doesn't look like anything's too crazy in terms of how it's going to be. Sejuani back on the Aftershock. The Sejuani we saw earlier in the day was rocking the Summoner Spellbook. Generally, that is an adaptation playing into Trundle, going back to the Aftershock in games that do not have his presence in there. As always, going to be keeping an eye on Tomo this game in particular, seeing how fast he stacks up, getting to those critical breakpoints for the 25 early on and then the 225 later for the Execute. I will say I'm a little bit surprised that Tomo's actually playing Cleanse. There's not that many good things to cleanse. Like, sure, there's some sort of CC potentially coming out from Huey. There's the Volibear Q. That's about it. There's yeah. not really a lot of value to be yeah, got from this. Shopify was like spam pinging that he has cleansed. So yeah. I think they're really happy to see it. Okay. I mean, I feel like when you're already playing kind of a losing 2v2 bot and then you're playing cleanse, which is going to be useless in the 2v2, like that just makes it even harder. Yes. That's rough. Yeah. I feel like maybe his expectation was that Lucian might pack Ignite. Like aggressive mm, Lucian players yeah. will do that. Just try to cleanse the Ignite. But even then, wouldn't you rather, if you're just going it purely for that sort of angle, I feel like barrier or something is going to be more value. I agree with you. Yeah. So we'll see. We'll see if they're going to be punished. We've seen some smaller games go very tragic, including one yep. yesterday from Tactical, uh, where things went really bad really early, and it can super push you back on how fast you're going to be able to stack this up. Uh, the new kind of modern build we're seeing now is people still sticking with Essence Reaver, but it seems to be Essence Reaver into Shoujin. Obviously, it gives you a ton of CDR. You're going to have no limit on the amount of mana you have, and hopefully really be able to ramp up how much you're stacking in the mid game as B-Boy and Zazel dropping that deep ward, looking to see if they can get a little bit of chip damage on them as they're walking to lane, but I think Tomo and Isles being very safe, not gonna challenge through the tri brush. They know yeah. there's no shot you can actually scrap with that 2v2, so just gonna be playing it safe and walking the long way around. One of those situations where you look at what you might gain from that choice, and there's really just nothing there that's gonna go positive. So just you can try gain to, one stack. Let's try to get the stacks going stack for in first the lane Good instead. Trade. Yeah, <laughs> great, great choices, great choices. But remember that in the previous games we've seen Tomo on this champion. Usually he'll hit that 225 breakpoint around the 23 minute mark somewhere. So that's where I'm going to be expecting this one to be as well, unless things just completely go awry one way or the other. You can see junglers both starting off in their red side quadrant and looks like it's going to be full clear here from both. Yeah, you can really optimize the stacks, especially if you're scrapping early, um, you know, and especially if you are playing against some of these easier lanes, uh, then you can get a lot both from CS and from kind of poking away on your opponents. Uh, the fastest I've seen in competitive is, is sub 20, you know, in 19 minute-ish range. Um, that's about as fast as I've seen it. In solo queue, you can get it really fast, but it'll be interesting to see how they can do it. And also, I mean, even in that game from Tactical, he got it around 26 minutes after it absolutely abysmal start we had no stacks at all because his team put him mid and then we're donating him wolves and raptors over and over and over Ooh, x you forced to flash out i was thinking we were just going to get the full clear but no boogie taking advantage of that hard winning matchup in the 1v1 there with the volley bear versus sejuani forcing the summoner spell out of the dignitas jungle yeah i was going to be going in for a hook there trying to trade back nice seismic shove in from dove uh, it's getting pretty scrappy in mid lane here So talk to us about this from the, the Huey point of view, uh, Pope. You know, you're saying you feel this is a winning matchup for Huey. What is it about this matchup that you, you kind of like from that side? Uh, I think Talia is always susceptible to just tanking EE and a W auto. Wow, this guy took two turret shots. Ooh, yeah, that was, that was pretty rough for Shopify's bottom lane there. A little unlucky. And you can see that Tomo was really worried about the dive. This is something we've seen happen a lot to Smolders, where the wave gets stacked on them. Uh, they're getting pushed in on the wave. The jungler comes down. We knew Boogie wasn't there, but he did not. And Ectio had been pushed out of their bot side jungle, so I think he was very nervous that Volibear, you know, could have been down there, could have been wrapping behind. So that's why Tomo and Isles did back off. But Bevoy takes a couple of turret shots that allows them to be able to step back up. Of course, pick up the farm, and they're just going to try to bounce the wave as Bevoy has gone back to base here. Uh, and then Tomo will be able to reset. And he's in a pretty good spot. Uh, they obviously, do they have a Targon's charge? They do have a Targon's charge for the cannon, so we'll be able to crash this no problem. 
up to 11 stacks now. All right, usually you like to see them grab that 25 break point around, I think the six or seven minute mark has been where we're seeing it in pro play. Kind of depends a lot on early on if you can hit the double snot bubble on both yeah. enemy players at the same time. Since you do not have the AOE on your queue for the farming just yet, that'll be one of your faster stacking mechanics. As you can see, Boogie, again, just trying to place down some vision here in the enemy jungle. Take advantage of the fact that he's got that early power on the volley bear and track X you as adeptly as he can. So we're seeing tier for both Wei and uh, Antalya. You were talking earlier about how you kind of prefer uh, Lost Chapter builds and even like Luden's Rush and stuff like that on Talia. So talk me through kind of the differences between some of these builds and what you think, you know, Dove might be going for. Yeah, well, when I play solo queue, I feel like Luden's is just better because you spike faster and have more damage. Definitely in competitive, you never, almost never see anyone going Luden's. Everyone almost goes Seraph's with the, uh, you know, the durability mm. and you have increased mana pool. You're staying in lane longer, there's less fighting, so. Pretty standard stuff. Um, man, kind of a shame Shopify wasn't able to win harder in the early game. Sechu was only like three camps for a while, whereas Voli had full cleared. And then Bot was like winning pretty hard, and then he tanked two turret shots. And they couldn't even pick up that plate, actually. That plate just died to creeps. A little bit, a little bit rough on that one. Still, well, a plus two wave advantage for B-Boy up over Tomo, but... Tomo will be able to equalize some of that here, farming up these minions as they're about to collide into the turret. You can see on the left side of your screen there, the levels. Almost all of our solo laners now level seven. You can see Rich just tagging it now as another one of those a chews flies out from Tomo as he gets closer and closer to the 25 CS mark. Yeah, that was really good CSing uh, from Tomo. I don't think he missed a single one. Uh, you can even get so many of the kind of like awkward health minions because you have, you know, auto Q as an auto reset. You have the W as well in there to help prep. So I uh, did a very good job. I don't think he missed a single CS, you know, with that wave pushing into him. Uh, even though B-Boy and Zazel were looking for a little bit of pressure. Boogie, though, going to take this time to start up the dragon. We can see XU will get eyes on this. We'll see if they think that they can do anything about it as their bot lane is pushed in. Uh, and Sanity, we know, is going to be in the area and uh, will be pushing XU back. And Sanity will not land any of the CC there, but doesn't need to. Just forcing him out of the way, making sure that there's no contest here on the Drake. That is a Drake number one secured at six and a half minutes into the game, so pretty early. Also not trading it away for the Void Grubs at the same time as Fake God versus Rich. The 1v1, Fake God sidestepping away there, flashing into the range of the Wallop. Returning another out of attack, but does not want to overcommit. Rich walks back away. Both of them now very low on HP, but critically the difference is Fake God now without Flash. We'll see if Dignitas can move anybody else up and punish that here in the next five minutes. And Rich just got the Honey Fruits as well, so he actually doesn't even have to base. And if that Boulder Toss was going to connect, you know, maybe Fake God would have had to Flash even earlier. Might have potentially not been able to get that little bit of chunk down onto Rich. And Rich maybe could have looked to actually follow in. But with no TP, the wave will crash. I'm not sure if it's a Cannon Wave on top or not. Um, it is, so he's not going to lose as much. You know, Jay should be able to get back to get most of this, but still going to be feeling pretty damn good about things as Dignitas, and you talked about the three winning lanes Pope Belter on, on the Shopify side. Dignitas seems to have neutralized these lanes pretty damn well. You know, we're seven and a half minutes in. It's only a 300 gold lead and the one dragon. Yeah, I mean, the way that Jay's top plays with and without Flash is so different. I think that's actually huge for, mm -hmm. for Nar in order to just be able to farm out the lane now. Um, this chase is so scared. He even QE'd the bush, you know, and gave up the cannon creep because he's so afraid now. Uh, yeah, pretty pretty sad as the chase side. Honestly, I started going just conquer on chase every game so I can just fight to the death. With the phase rush, he was just kind of losing out 1v1. Yeah. 66 to 58 for farm. I mean, plus one wave advantage isn't really anything to write home about. You can see in the top of the screen right now about a 700 gold lead globally for Shopify. The one Drake, but all three grubs in the first rotation did go over to Dignitas in the meantime. So we'll see how Shopify is able to respond to that later on in the game or if Dignitas will continue being able to have enough control over the top side river to hit that six grub mark. Rich back up in top side now just continuing to farm things up. A little bit behind in farm, but not too much. Bottom lane, we'll check in on Smolder. 28 stacks eight and a half minutes in, so maybe a little bit slow on arriving at that point, but now he's got the AoE as the Nami wave flies out. Tomo summons Mom. B-Boy gets chunked yeah. a little bit by that. B-Boy does not have the resources to continue to fight here, so they will have to use the heal to escape as Dignitas was ready to reinforce with XU. Yeah, nicely done there. 
It was a good little catch on the Isles. Isles tried to obviously buffer the hook, but he was so close to the wall, it didn't actually dodge anything anyway. So Flash was forced as the ultimate was committed there from Zazel. But Tomo getting a good trade back. Now up to 39 stacks, it looks like there. So really going to start to accelerate as you start to pick up more and more CDRs. You get more points in those abilities. Uh, you can really ramp the stacking up here pretty quickly. Uh, and is feeling pretty confident to just step forward and trade with those Qs as well. Uh, especially when you're playing Fleet, you know, the, the Q does proc the Fleet. And when you get in the enemy champion instead of a minion, you obviously get a lot of a bigger heal there and can use the move speed just back on out. XU gonna spot Boogie though, as he was looking to wrap around and that's gonna defuse any sort of play. So talk to me about, you know, from Dove's point of view now, he's got CDR boots, he's been, you know, level six for a while, obviously he's up to level eight now. You know, how do you actually get out of lane here without giving up too much, without making it too obvious? Because Insanity is obviously just gonna try to relentlessly shove you in and keep you locked under your turret. How do you force yourself to be able to get active on the map? Yeah, I think it's hard to gank mid actually with, um I feel like the problem with Sedge plus AP is that the enemy mid can just itemize Our merch trips. really easily and just be pretty much unkillable. So he, he needs to do this. He just clears the wave and then he just hovers one time, sees if there's anything to do. If not, you have to go back and catch the mid wave. All right, plus 400 gold for Shopify. So still very, very little difference between these two. And honestly, for both teams, you really want to find a win here. The last three games remaining, particularly from Dignitas' side, we'll talk about them first because they are the ones slightly behind right now in terms of the gold. Their last three remaining opponents in the Super Week are C9, TL, and FlyQuest. That is not an easy lineup. That is not an easy schedule to have to face here at the very end as you're trying to make sure you don't end up being one of those last couple of teams to not qualify for the playoffs. Yeah, I mean, it, it's really tough, right? You know, these teams that are having these very difficult strength of schedules, every single win is incredibly important. You know, trying to pick up wins, trying to keep your, your hopes alive, uh, you know, for a championship, for that MSI berth as well, uh, means a lot. And over on the other side, we think about Shopify. They've still also got to play C9, but then they have Energy and 100 Thieves as well. And obviously, this whole split has been very competitive. There's been a lot of parity between pretty much everyone, but these are all still teams that everybody looks at, and you're like, okay, that could be a pretty scary matchup. So I think for both of these squads, you're looking at this matchup as probably your easiest remaining game left for the regular season. Yeah, absolutely, right? You know, it's, it's, it is going to be a, a difficult spot. Uh, five wins, you know, maybe would be enough to get you into playoffs. We'll have to see how things all shake out. Obviously, right. we'll be looking at playoff scenarios a lot more next week, which is going to be the final week of the season. It is a super week, though, so it will be three games remaining after they finish up here today. And you can see the strength schedule for both these teams really tough. Um, but it is going to be an, an exciting finish, I think, to the LCS. It's been so much parity, and that has kind of continued into this week. We've seen teams you know, that are even sitting at the bottom still be very competitive, you know, uh, energy, you know, nearly losing earlier today. We've had, you know, a lot yeah. of our teams at the bottom um, really be able to step up and, and actually take games off the top teams and threaten a lot of these teams in the midfield as well. All right, Shopify, they're on to the second Drake of the game. Just about on timer from the first. Remember, the first one fell six and a half minutes in, so about an extra 30 seconds required to start this one up here for them. But it looks like once again, there'll be no contest. Shopify secure Drake number two for themselves and we are going to get another Cloud Rift here today. You can see a lot of On My Way pings coming out on the Grub Pit as well, recognizing, hey, that's already up there. Dignitas got the first three. They want to try to be able to challenge for this. Remember, so many times we see junglers just do a quick drive-by, smite away one of the Grubs, stop them from getting that full six and the bonus that you would have from double Void Might spawns. Right now, Boogie is heading right there. Also worth noting, we talked earlier about Fake God losing the Flash and how that affected the Jace matchup. There was not any subsequent punish on him for that. He's got the Flash up, ready to go again, so we can continue to try to play more aggressively on that champion as Shopify is just going to get their bottom lane right back down to the turret. Try not to lose too much more to this. XU is still hanging out here, but B-Boy and Zazel will make it back here in time. It's also interesting, Boogie probably going for, for Iceborne here on the Volibear. You know, it is obviously a pretty popular build, but I feel like I've been seeing more and more people go towards Thunder Sky and Tank. I know mm -hmm. Kobe plays uh, basically exclusively Volibear these days. He's in the one-trick status, and uh, he feels that that build is a lot stronger. Thunder Sky obviously just has so much value, and a lot of these early scraps. We're going to see if they can find a turnaround here on b Void. Oh, they send Mom over the top of the Tidal Wave, turning around back at him. Means that they cannot close the gap in time. Zazel protecting b Void as he makes his way back underneath the Tier 1 turret to stop Tomo and Isles in their tracks. So do you feel like Shopify have gotten enough out of the early game here? I mean, they got a couple dragons. That's really their only advantage. 
But I, I don't really think so. I mean, Smolder has farmed more plates than Lucian has. I, uh, I, I don't really love it. I, I feel like I'm just seeing Lucian flipping ulti on cooldown. Whoa. Here comes the dive, though. B-Boy in some trouble, trying to get away from this one. Does have to pop the flash below half HP, and there was a lot of Dignitas players ready to commit for that one. Isles also very low, though. Going to be a reset for the Dignitas support, too. Yeah, it's kind of felt to me like the, a lot of these cullings, B-Boy, I think, is, is just kind of feeling the pressure to get something going, you know, realizing they're not getting enough done, they're not being able to create space in lane, and he's kind of just letting it rip. I mean, maybe a little bit of, like, ah, I got to make something happen. Yeah, I mean, he, he might be getting, like, a, a modest first strike payout, but definitely not what you want to see from Nami Lucian in lane. I feel like when it looks good, it's like we're dashing forward, we're, like, chunking them to 1 HP, they're missing CS, they're burning sums, but he's kind of just hitting Nautilus with all. All right. Engage comes out. Dignitas looking for Boogie, but the problem is Rich has to run. Isles now the focus. Fake God puts a little DPS into him, but Isles still walking away with about one-third remaining. The first Grub claimed by Shopify there, but the Herald is now on the map. So only a four grub game this time around with Shopify having enough control over the top side river to immediately start up the Herald. Yeah, he should be able to grab this Herald. Obviously, it was a bit of a dicey moment there for Miles. He had already used his summoners down on that failed bot dive. But now Smolder are going to be rotating over towards mid. They're going to shove a Dove down towards that bot lane. And I think with Sedge 1, you should definitely be giving Raptors over to Tomo. It looks like that's going to be the case here. Mm. As once you have the AoE on the Q, you can just start stacking up so quickly by farming a lot of these jungle camps. You, know, you go mid, you farm the wave, you go to the sides, you farm those extra jungle camps, especially Raptors and Krugs. You can get so many extra stacks off of that really accelerate you to 125 where it just gets easier and easier and easier as you're picking up more cdr you're getting more aoe uh, and you can really accelerate to where we saw you know from from tactical even from a point where i want to see he was around like 50 stacks or something at this point in the game he still got to 225 by 26 minutes because he got yeah. such a massive amount uh, throughout this mid game and um, we'll see how quickly Tomo can stack it up and if he's going to be donated all those jungle camps as well. We talk about accelerating the pace of the game, accelerating the pace of your stacking or whatever, but unfortunately the reality of this game is no first blood in almost 16 minutes. <laughs> I am praying for a ring of fire from Nexus Blitz or something along those lines as neither team has really found the opportunity to make any seriously aggressive plays. Uh, Pobelter, if you were on either squad, either perspective is fine, what's the big play that you would look for to really try to break things open here in this mid game? I think it's going to come down to third Drake. I feel like that's okay. usually the pressure timing when if, for example, you're dig side, you're like, okay, we drafted scaling lanes. Let's kind of just scale up, give first two Drakes, then we can contest third. So I feel like it's about to get to that timing where maybe they're willing to butt heads, smolder has some stacks, everyone has some items. Yeah, when you're looking at the item completions, it's pretty even across the board here. So no major advantages have been picked up, honestly, on either side. You know, B-Boy obviously has been on Stormrizer for a while. We have the mandate in for Zazel. That's kind of that big one item spike for that Lucian Nami duo. And they are going to drop Herald Bot, so it should be a turret going down. Dove in trouble. Oh, Boogie with the flash for the engage, but now he's going to ult the tower so they can keep on diving. First blood over to Huey, and they're about to make it too. Boogie keeps himself alive. The Herald's going to be summoned up to take the turret as well, and Shopify Rebellion smacks him. We'll see if they can get anything back um, on the B-Boy here. The ulti oh. tags him. That was close. <laughs> that was way too close, man. The clutch Nami heal just to try and make sure that he does not die to Smolder's mom. But Shopify, now 2,000 gold in the lead. And Sanity shielded him as well with the WW there. Uh, the shield from from Huey, I think, actually kept him alive. Mm. It looked like that was insanely close uh, before that Nami heal landed. Way well, you're going to TP up towards top. They're going to try to keep the pressure onto these additional towers. And it looks like it is going to be Dignitas, though, getting the dragon. And if you get this uncontested dragon, that's kind of like the only thing that Shopify had going for them from the early game was the dragon stacking. So I'm a little bit surprised that they didn't elect to actually fight here. Didn't feel that they were in a good position to do it after the scrap on the bat side. And they're at least getting a little bit of gold out of the trade as they TP towards top. They get the tier one top. They got the tier one bot just before that. Uh, but this is just buying a lot of time. Dude, Boogie just gets popped. Dove working together with Rich. They find the punish there on the oh enemy jungler as that volley continues trying to invade, trying to control this territory. But it ain't going to work out that time. Dignitas is on the board. Fake could get Dove here, potentially. We'll see if he's going to back off. Uh, is going to respect the fact that XU is around. Knows he was warded because Jace started running this as soon as he walked through that brush. Yup. 
131 stacks on Smolder as well, so it's time for that turbo farm point where he's going to be able to really, really get those stacks going as XU hangs out around the mid lane, looking for a potential play here. Popo, you talked about how the third Drake is the fight point, and we mentioned how, yeah, it ended up going for free over to Dignitas. If you're on the side of Shopify, are you happy to take the plus 2,000-ish gold lead in exchange for not having soul point, or would you have rather had the Drake? I think they're happy with building a gold lead. I think the only thing that matters is, like, getting more gold, getting more items. I mean, these guys look reasonably strong now, actually. Lucian okay. and Nami both on two cores, so I think at this point, uh, like, mindset-wise, if I was Shopify, I would just be, like, happy that we finally made a play and got some kills on the board. Uh, whatever about the dragon, and okay. just look to make the next play. Boogie trying to get away there from that dredge line. Manages to find him over the wall, but not really anybody in range to follow it up. They go fishing with the Sejuani ulti, but B-Boy just steps out of the way of it. Not too worried about that. Dignitas seeing if they can find something there, maybe off of a freebie, but not wanting to really overcommit for anybody. Yeah, and you can see Tomo now is on those two items, so he has uh, the Shoujin completed as Ooh, well. Nice little damage. chunk comes through, mm -hmm. and Jay's fishing with a Shock Blast as well. Uh, that is going to be tough. E auto. Yeah, I mean, that's that's Stormy's rapid fire, right? Your upfront burst is so high when you're proccing, obviously, you know, first strike, you have uh, the mandate proc, you have the E from the Nami, like all these things just hit all at the same time. Obviously, yeah. the criticism of this build is always that you're sacrificing sustained damage for that. Do you think, though, that it doesn't matter in this case? The Shopify have enough sustained damage to kind of make up for it? I think if they keep fighting chunks like that, and then eventually if they can convert it into more control or, you know, push this mid turret, mm -hmm. then, then yeah, that's totally fine. It's always the question, right? Because we've seen some games, you know, I think back even way back to the start, and it was actually some Turtle games, you know, in week one when he was playing really well on the Lucian, and we'd constantly be able to chunk people out, but never actually convert that into an objective, never actually convert that into a kill. They couldn't kind of push it over the edge. Um, you know, it, it does start to become very difficult if you can't kind of, you know, have that straw that breaks the camel's back, so to speak, where you start to get really a lot more. I feel like it does fit the theme and the identity of the composition, particularly in this game, though, with how you guys were talking earlier back during draft about how there's so many more options for Dignitas to just go in for a fight, whereas Shopify's going to have to try to poke him. Fake God, though, he might be in a rough spot. The shutdown over to Rich as Dove gets the shield from the Seraphs, and Boogie doesn't have the damage to take him out just yet. B-Boy swoops in, and he finds that quick one-two pop. He gets back away thanks to the healing from the Nami, and Boogie's ready to lock down Rich. He should die in the meantime, oh. but instead he's going to walk away insanity swoops in and spiraling despair consumes xu a double kill back over to the way dignitas lose three shopify lose two we finally got a little bit of pvp on summoner's rift man boogie got out of there with no health whatsoever that missed all from xu though really has to hurt felt like they could have got more there he actually ended up picking up the lucian off just the explosion part mm -hmm. kind of funny yeah Tomo trying to get away, does get caught by Insanity. A little bit more damage will take him out, and it's the Summon Airy that does the last little bit of damage he needs. Tomo not respecting Insanity's damage potential. Yeah, a little bit surprised that he elected not to flash or, or anything there. Um, I guess just didn't think there was going to be a way out. But we can see the fight one more time. You know, Rich finishing off the turret, gets the Mega R into the turret there. And Dove, you know, able to actually burst down Fake Out quite a bit, but Fake Out critically got a lot of damage out before he went down. Talks through the rest of the fight here, Pope. Oh man, so Sejuani like Q flash W misses everything. It looks tragic, but actually, look, he walks into the ulti explosion and he dies. <laughs> Ooh, that's that's an oof. And that's I an thought, oof. For I me. thought this Volibear was gonna burn to death, but he lives with like one HP with the Triumph proc. Man, that is some sad stuff, actually. Like, you look at Sejuani Alta, you always think about the lockdown, the initial burst, yeah. the the after effect is just, you know, a side thought, the a secondary buff. thing in your mind. Yeah, it's like, what does that even do? That never does any damage, well, but it, it does Lucian. just enough damage it to kill <laughs> Lucian in that moment. But it looks like Shopify and Dig are ready to square off here for the next Drake. Remember, it's a two to one lead favoring Shopify as they had that total Drake control early on. Now the engage coming out from Isles. He flashes back away so they don't find the counterattack. Nice, Mom finding its way onto two as Zazel and Boogie trying to disengage here for a second. Dignitas falling back after their initial attempt does not find any full kills. Still about 3,000 gold favoring Shopify. 
And considering they did not get bursted down super low, now they're going to start up the Drake. They're going to try to force their opponents to either come into them, or they're just going to have to take something else as a consolation prize. And it looks like the Tier 1 turret will be just that. Tomo the one to take it down. The Smolder up to 178 stacks. The Drake probably going the way of Shopify Rebellion, but XU's made his way into the pit. He's trying to challenge for this. Has to Arctic Assault back over the wall. And the Drake goes the way of Shopify. They're now on Soul Point. Yeah, they moved to Soul Point there. We're able to get enough of a chunk out early. And I think Rich, you know, going in with the Mega Nar, tried to get the ulti down into Insanity, but he flashes away from that. And I think the fight's going to kind of dissipate afterwards. And Shopify do have a little bit more sustain. Obviously, Zazel's healing them back up. They have position on that Dragon, so very hard for Dig and Tuss to fight from there. So they just try to take the best that they can get, which was that Tier 1 mid. Yeah, I think you really have to convert that hook. Uh, he landed a hook on Jace. I was surprised to not see that turn into like a Talia combo or follow up with Smolder combo. Yeah, just weren't really able to find it. I mean, Tomo, you know, used the ult pretty early, was across a couple of members there. Uh, it's going to be going in towards the BT. Uh, makes sense. There's quite a bit of chunk, quite a bit of poke over on the other side. You know, we saw how much Solution can do, uh, but Insanity on the way can have pretty good poke. There's a Jace as well. So just going to be going in towards BT, get that sustain, be able to start shrugging off a lot of the poke that they can dash out. And then it's pretty much always rapid fire next. Tomo, though. Yeah, we got some problems here. B-Void trying to escape with a follow-up from XU and Rich coming in from the side. They found the enemy AD carry. And now, as the Volley oh, Bear tries to escape, bear. it ain't gonna happen, man. Double kill for Dove and Dignitas got a 5v3. Baron's the call. Enemy jungler is down. Fake God and Insanity still have a lot of range to try to mess with these guys, try to get them off of there, but it's a tall order. Baron down to about half HP now already. Spiraling Despair finds its way onto XU, but that's still the tag. Oh. Holy cow! Huey just gets it done. The first on this champion is Criminal Man. Rich goes over the wall trying to find some kind of an angle here. It'll be a one for one trade on that one as Dove tries to escape, but Fake God is hot on his heels. He needs a little bit more burst, but he won't quite find it just yet. Another oh kill comes God. in. A triple kill for Insane. This is what I'm talking about. You cannot disrespect the Huey. Oh my god, the severing bolt, man. The QW there. The isolated damage from the Huey is just insane. It's in the landed multiple of those and just executes XU in the pit. Then is able to get another one out on Tomo after he went out of the wall to actually take him down as well. 3v5 Baron hold, that's crazy. I mean, this is absolutely crazy. There's the ulti, the spiraling despair, and this is the QW, the isolated execute there. No one else was in it with him. Do you think that's just a case where XU you know, just doesn't realize how much damage that's going to be? It didn't even feel like they were trying to dodge. I think, and then... I think like, you got to dash the, the Huey root. After you get hit by the root, it's over. But for sure, I think he could have Sejuan queued out of it. Maybe he didn't see it. It's kind of a difficult spell to track sometimes. Yeah, and there's that root again. You, know, you, you called it out. The root, really powerful. I think sometimes underused. Sometimes people, I think, default to using the fear CC way too much or the EE. Uh -huh. The root setting up the QW is so powerful, especially in these chaotic fights where, again, Tomo had cleanse and flash. I don't think he saw the root. I don't think he saw the QW coming through because he could have got out of there. And that's one of the few things you can actually use cleanse on in this fight. If he flashes out of that, could be pretty different, but Insanity kind of carrying the game. 7-0-1. He had a monster yeah. performance yesterday and was able to bring them back in what was going to look like a loss to Immortals. So back-to-back -back days, his way is looking nuts. It is an Insanity diff here so far. 27 minutes into the game, Tomo Smolder still at 220 stacks. So it is a pretty late evolution. Isaac, you were comparing it earlier to yesterday when Tactical got off to such a bad start. When he played Smolder, still managed to find that final evolution at about 26, 27 minutes or it was so. Just about 26 on the 26. Dot. Okay, even, so even with having way less stacks early game than Tomo had. Which tells me that since Shopify did not put the same kind of pressure on Tomo in this game, Dignitas has not done a good job facilitating that stacking in the mid-game phases. Tomo just now hitting there at yeah. 27 minutes into the game. This is a critical point for Dignitas, and they really need to be able to stabilize with this, or Insanity is just going to keep running them over. Yeah, I mean, they, they definitely have not optimized. I mean, they, they moved him mid at one point, but then shortly after they moved him mid, they just sent him back down towards bot, right? You know, when you're playing around mid, when you can stack off the wave, then take the Raptors, then take the Wolves, you just keep doing this kind of cycle, you get so much value from it. Like, obviously, you still want to get experience and some gold on your jungler, but Smolder does so much more with it, you know, especially when you can really accelerate those stacks. Uh, we saw it. We saw yesterday, Tactical got up well over 300 stacks, and it was to the point where the last time I checked in, it was over a 10% execute, which just it's gets insane. Like, this champion scales to infinity, so if you can get the stacks, it's always worth doing it. The splash damage becomes pretty crazy. 
Uh, they are going to be looking to fight for this dragon here, not wanting to give up soul over to Shopify, but we'll see. Shopify can find the poke before the fight to deny it. All right. We've still got a two and a half thousand gold lead for Shopify. Tomo trying to get away as B-Boy wants to burst up. Nami Yossi over the top. Tomo's already down. Shopify loses two men. A shutdown only with Sanity from Dove. Absolutely massive as Dignitas still has four players ready to go. Rich takes out Boogie. They're flashing after B-Boy. He tries to escape with the wall and won't find him. Now Dove goes riding the Weaver's wall, but fake gods with an answer. Dove goes golden and B-Boy's got to be careful here. He steps away from the rock. He tries to dash back out, but Isles locks down fake god and Dove is unstoppable dignitas find their fight man even with tomo getting nothing done in that fight tomo dies pretty much for free watch tomo on the left side of your screen as rich steps up you know b-boy is going to come in tomo goes over and tomo basically just dies 100 to zero waste both the sums you know he doesn't dodge man. anything and they still are able to win this fight like look at this he flashes after just into more of the culling dies but look at the damage here. Dig over the wall. Such yeah. a good CC combo. And Sanity also gets one shot, though, and he's definitely way more useful of a target than the Smolder. Yeah, when the team has nine kills total and one dude has seven, you cannot afford to lose that dude. Dove trying to go into the back line, find the plays here. B-Boy, nice sidestep away from that initially, but then Isles finding the hook is what really sends it home. Yeah, Dove, I think, did a really good job in that fight. You know, Rich doing well as as well and i mean sandy you called it out and is that strongest member by far dies still has a bounty afterwards which always is a terrible feeling after you <laughs> yeah, give up like dude. a 1k shutdown and you still have a bounty um but ding toss take the second dragon we're back around the baron area here trying to find that setup i haven't really been able to get anything going in the side lanes it feels like from shopify the jace has felt like a side note you know it doesn't really feel like fake god has been able to get too involved whatsoever in this one yeah, I will say though, as Jace, as you start to reach more and more items, he's like an okay oh, scaling pick. He can land poke, uh, they don't really have any heals on the other side, and if you can hit Tlir or Smolder with QE, I think it's, uh, it's decent enough value to make the pick feel worth it. Yeah. Yeah, I think, you know, the, the thing is, it's it's got to be hitting Smolder, but it has to be Smolder has to have no minions or anything else around too, right? Because he has BT at this point. You know, we're pretty late into the game, so you're going to be able to heal up pretty quickly, but Isles going over the wall. Isles wants Boogie, and they'll force out the ulti from the bear immediately. XU wanted to see if there might have been a follow-up play to make, but does not connect with the Glacial Prison on anybody else from Shopify's squad. Double control board in the pit for Baron now. Dignitas trying to make sure they control this objective. One control board over the wall coming out from Shopify, trying to make sure that they at least maintain some little bit of vision on that one. As Dignitas make their way back into the mid lane, this is what I believe for the first time this game here in the past 60 seconds or so, a Dignitas gold lead. Even though it's only a couple hundred, it has been in Shopify's favor the entire time. Otherwise, Shopify now trying to retake control over the topside river. Yeah, so what do you think is the job now here for, you know, for Insanity, for Dove? And what should the mid laners be, be looking to try to get done over these next couple minutes? How do they enable their team, you know, to kind of set up the next fight? I feel like overall, Dig is playing the comp a bit better. You know, Nautilus keeps landing hooks, and they're finding the CC that Talia can play off of, and they're opening the fights really smoothly like that, whereas I feel like Shopify has just been kind of going through the game off the back of these, like, ridiculous hate play, play plays. Um, I, f I feel like Dig keeps walking into the play roots as well. I think they need to be a little more mindful of dashing out of the root or like being careful where he can shoot at. Yeah, he's been doing a really good job. And even even like th that placement <laughs> feels like he's hiding a little bit in the brush and, and Dig definitely uh, losing track of it. Especially in the fights, it can be hard you know, when there's so many different things going on. A lot of the effects are pretty loud. Uh, but Shopify, a little bit on the back foot. You know, they don't really have any pick. They don't really have any hard engage. So they are kind of dependent upon Dig engaging into them. So we've been talking a lot about Insanity this game and how the way has been carrying Shopify. But the reality of where the game is right now is it's plus 600 gold for Dove on the Talia. He's only one kill behind where Insanity is. He has completed his fourth major non-boots item. Insanity's still working towards that. And for Insanity, it is a massive purchase. The death cap going to be item number four here. So trying to hit that power spike before a fight would be huge for them. But Dignitas do not want to open that window. They're already starting up the Baron. They're daring Shopify to come and try to answer this. The TP will show up. The Baron's still at 6,000 as Dignitas disengaged. Yep, exactly. And they knew Jace went down towards bottom side. I think they saw him on that ward crossing over by the enemy blue. Um, so saw him going down towards bot. They wanted to get that TP. As soon as the TP comes out, they weren't looking for an actual fight. They just back right off. Look at that poke, though. Wow. Down on Isles. are going crazy, yeah. 
Miles not too happy about dealing with that way, man. This champion is so powerful from such a long range. And remember, this is still before we combine the two sticks into the hack. Once he gets that massive AP bonus, this dude is just going to completely destroy the entire team fight. As B-Boy, again, just trying to look to trade really swiftly with this on-hit build, with this pro or proc, I should say, since it's the Storm Razor plus the Rapid Fire all together. Dignitas trying to stay grouped up. Double buffs ready to go here on the whole team. And they'll push up as five, or push up into the river as five. Yeah, okay. now it's a question of just, you know, Shopify looking to try to control around that Baron area. Obviously, and the idea is always, oh, if Dignitas go for the Dragon, we take the Baron. I don't feel like those plays ever really work. Oh. Fakeup may have just caught himself. Fakeup, that one's gonna hurt. Dove is dominating now. XU trying to find a follow-up, but B-Boy dashes away in time. Dignitas with a 5v4 for the next 45 seconds, but the Drake is spawning now. Dignitas should be able to secure this one for free, and Fakeup is a costly mistake on that one. Yeah, I mean, he takes a trade in mid. He still had his flash available. I think he went hammer form and just kind of went in and, and killed himself. Uh, yeah, kills bad, man. I mean, Nar just jumped on him and ulted him into a wall. Yeah, that's that's tough. Um, well, I mean, <laughs> now's his now sole point. Yeah. Uh, Dignitas, that's three trade dragons for Dig. And uh, we have four, if you count some older, he's got 305 stacks. So got they already the got stacks, their elder yeah. in, man. 300, I think, is the benchmark where it hits 10% on the execute. Let me double check that. Uh, it still says it's just about 9%. So I think it's it's got to be really close now to that 10% execute. Yeah, um, he's going to hit RFC right now, too, or yeah. soon. And then yeah. that's going to be a, another big spike. Yeah, RFC is so nice on Smolder because it extends that Q range, of course, right? You're able yep. to get those long range Qs, especially this late in the game where you have that massive true damage burn. You're splashing it from the 125 stack upgrade as well. Uh, and it becomes there very, it very difficult to actually play around it. All right, we are hitting critical mass for so many of these champions. Dove now with a needlessly large rod in inventory, working towards his final item, towards that full build. You can see the hat now completed for Insanity. The Rapid Fire Cannon you guys are talking about on the Smolder. Lucian also nearly full build for B-Boy with that BF sword sitting in inventory. It's going to come down to just the blink of an eye, I feel like, with the way that these team fights have been playing out, with how fast these health bars have been exploding. It's Shopify once again on the defense as Dignitas try to push up, sit down some vision, and force their opponents back. And they're trying to punk, uh, poke out Tomo, but he's just going to be able to fly over the wall there as... Uh... Bevoy was dashing forward. It's just so tough, right? And all they can do is kind of sit back, try to get this poke, try to find some sort of a window to find a way in. They can't be the team that's proactive. That's always the difficulty with these sort of compositions where Dignitas just puts out so much pressure just by kind of stepping up. Nice little chunk Whoa. there from Bevoy, but it's just flash forward for Miles. Here comes the Weaver's Wall. It's insanity getting caught out. A huge shutdown for Dig. That's the most important player on Shopify Rebellion, and they don't even lose anybody here in the trade. Rich was taken low, but his flash got him out in time. Dignitas with a really important move there. Yeah, that's a huge pick over onto Insanity. They don't get boogie critically. They are going to be going over towards that Baron. You can see they're already onto it, trying to force Shopify to come into them. They can look for the turn, and there's Dove catching boogie. Boogie in trouble, man. The lollipop hook finds him. Dove needs a little bit more damage, but now the hammer form. Fake up wants to go to the skies. B-Boy grabs the kill back on Isles, but the fight ain't done yet. Rich has rejoined the fight after using the Unleashed Teleport, and Dignitas, they may have lost their support, but they killed the enemy jungler. This should be Free Baron. Yeah, it's looking like it's going to be there. Baron, B-Boy, and Zazel trying to get something done. The TP's coming back here from Fake God. We'll see if they can make a miracle happen. Rich has the Narbar charged. He's ready to go. Mega Nar, the ulti, ready to cast. Baron down to 2,000 HP. This should be secured nice and easy. XQ's got it. Now Dignitas has to exfiltrate. B-Boy does not want to get any closer on this one. Dove's going to be chunked there a little bit by the accelerated shock blast. Insanity's trying to join in on the chase. B-Boy jumps up, calling over the wall. Dove in trouble. There's the shutdown with the credit back over to B-Boy, helping Insanity finish him off. Dignitas have lost their mid laner for the next 60 seconds. Now the tough thing is there's, there's nothing for them to get. There's no objective on the map. They can't run over to a dragon and grab a soul. So they can push up a wave, maybe get a tier two mid or something. But Shopify, at the end of the day, they're just going to eliminate the Baron buff from Dove. And that's about it. Dignitas still come out so well from that big trade. All right, talk us through this uh, replay here, Bo Belter. All right, uh, I think they had a really good engage. Lucian dashes in, they immediately come with the Talia ult, and yet they, they get the one-shot on Huey by comboing with Talia combo. This feels so good as Talia, by the way. Just have this easy CC to play off of. Nar hits Mega, and he's juggling aggro of like two, three people. 
feel like the fight is just pretty much over after the play one shot, honestly. Yeah, I mean, we're just seeing the power of that engage, right? The power of the combo, you know, the guaranteed setup there with the depth charge from the Nautilus. You know, Isles flashes forward, sets up his mid laner to be able to get that kill. A lot of damage put out by Bevoy, but yeah. not amounting to much of a result, unfortunately, for him as, you know, it was all kind of just into the back of Rich, who was able to flash out and survive. And on the other side, they couldn't do the same. And look at that Q poke just through the minion from Tomo. It is getting so deadly here at this point. He is now over that 10% execute benchmark. Uh, it's 6.5% of your health as the burn in true damage and a 10% execute on every Q, let alone that base damage that's coming in through too. All right, gentlemen, we have been trading Drakes for the past 39 minutes. It's finally time, 30 seconds from now, for the soul to go over one way or the other. Big chunk on the aisles there, taking him down to about 1,000 HP. It's a 2K gold lead for Dig, but we've already been talking about how many items are in the inventories. It's not going to be that impactful at this point in the game. Dignitas with control over the bot side river. Shopify trying to check into it, but the range and the power of Tomo's smolder is doing some work on these guys. Tomo still looking to shoot another one of those snot bubbles over the wall. And Shopify have lost half HP on both support and jungler. The Drake is alive. We'll see if Dignitas can just force this down. Another one of those smolder cues, yeah. just finding the poke on B-Boy. Yes, he has lifesteal to heal it back up, but Dignitas seemed to have complete and total control over the bot side river, and Shopify Rebellion will yield the Cloud Soul. They're just gonna have to give it up. I mean, yeah, B-Boy has some lifesteal, but, but Boogie was down to half HP, Zazel was down to half HP, they had no vision. It'd be so difficult to actually walk in there knowing that the engage is all on the other side. There's just no way to really fight it out in these situations. Uh, unless you're first to the objective and they're walking into you, then you can get a lot more done. Insanity hasn't really been as effective these last couple of fights. He's getting targeted, he's getting burst down, and it's making his job incredibly difficult. I, I feel like they have no answer to this smolder at this point. They have no way of getting on top of him. He's just standing at max range, just queuing everyone, just chunking people out, and, and he's still just stacking harder and harder. Rich may have got caught here. B-Boy putting a lot of damage into him. They're not gonna find the snipe there. With the way, B-Boy trying to get away, escape. From that Weaver's Wall, Boogie now locked up next. Gets back out with half HP. XU has to flash back out to guarantee that he survives. There was a lot thrown out there, but no dead bodies on either team. Tomo had to use the cleanse. Blue will be secured by Shopify. They don't give that over to Dignitas. Yeah, and your job just gets even harder now with the Cloud Soul on the other side. So much additional move speed to this team. If it wasn't already hard enough to escape the engage, if it wasn't already hard enough to chase someone down for a kill, it just got that much harder here for Shopify. So Dignitas feels feels happy to just honestly keep farming out to keep stacking on Smolder and look to play towards these objectives. You know, that has been the name of the game for them. They're not really overextending. They're not really giving any opportunities to Shopify. And it feels like a game where unless there's an easy opportunity given to them, they're just going to play for Elder. They're just going to wait for Baron, wait for Elder, just keep stacking up these objectives. So I'll go ahead and ask you guys, Pobatter, I'll start with you. What do you put Shopify's chances in this game now? Because it really does feel like the cards are entirely stacked against them. Yeah, I mean, maybe like 15, 20%. I feel yeah. like this Lucian is six slot. He can still dash forward and potentially one shot Smolder, Smolder miss positions. But I, I think it's Smolder's game to kind of lose. I think it's Dig's game to lose, especially now that they have the soul. Um, there's no really easy way to get on top of Smolder besides just dashing at him, I feel like. Yeah, there's not really anything they have to actually catch anyone. And look at how much damage. That's one Q on a yeah. B-Boy. Lost about 40% of his HP there. That's <laughs> rough, man. You could dash in. He just Qs you and flies away. <laughs> uh, and you're going to be coming out worse for wear. It feels like Tomo getting pretty confident, though. Yeah, Lucian going for that dash. B-Boy trying to punish however he can. Tomo loses about one third HP. But again, both of the AD carries have so much lifesteal because of the presence of Bloodthirsters in both inventories. Unless it's 100 to 0, it's not really going to mean much. You can see, though, Dignitas a little bit nervous as soon as that dash comes in. Isles instantly locketed. You know, he, he pops the lock in immediately. You know, they are concerned about how much damage could come in. Uh, they know probably the only way they could really lose this is Tomo getting randomly one shot. So uh, they're going to be playing around that. We have the Knight's Foul for him. We have the Locket for him. You know, this kind of support itemization obviously does make a lot of sense at this point in the game. Sejuani also picking up a Knight's Vow as well, uh, which is on the Talia. So, you know, really just trying to get these additional items for your carries for the core members right now. All you got to do is keep them safe and itemize to do so. So, funny enough, talking about carries, talking about itemization, it's a 3,000 gold lead for Dig, and the entire gold lead is the difference between Talia and the Huey. Dub is full six items, and Sanity's still only sitting on five plus control wards. TP coming in now. Shopify trying to disengage. The Mom flies out, but it only hits B-Boy. 
Dignitas not getting a whole lot out of that one here just yet, but the Glacial Prison Ooh. finding insanity, forcing him to save him from the CC as Tomo has to try to flash away. Now, Shopify again on the back foot. Insanity hit by the seismic shot. That could be the pick that does it. Dove finds him, and now Shopify has to try to defend, but Fake God's gonna die next. Tomo taking the kill. It's 5v3 for the next 50 seconds. It looks like they may just be going over towards Baron or something. No, they're just gonna stay mid. They want to try to push for the end here and try to close out this game. It was a great Mikhail's from Zazel on the initial, says one of y'all, but it just didn't matter. Insanity gets caught, Insanity goes down, and now it's B-Boy, Boogie, and Zazel trying to make a miracle happen. Well, it's gonna take a whole lot, man. Isles here on the front. He just barely ends up falling, but they'll trade him back for Boogie. And if you're Dig, you're totally fine with that. Still 25 seconds before Insanity's back on the board, and you got a 4v2 against Zazel and B-Boy. It's all about the Lucian, and Rich slams it back into the wall, follows it up with a wall up. That's gonna be GG. Zazel can't hold it. Dignitas with the four-man squad here at the very end, 19 to 13. They'll take down Shopify Rebellion. Dignitas picking up their fifth win here, taking down Shopify. It was a long one. We've had some long games today. 44 minutes on this, <laughs> 400 and something stacks on the smolder. 471 stacks by the end of the game. Whew. Pretty ridiculous. That's a 13% instant execute on the queue. That's nasty. Is that like uh, the most stacks anyone has had? Or what, what, what in the like LCS, I think, for sure. In the okay. LCS, for sure. I can't, I can't speak to, uh, to globally, um, but maybe we can actually get a check on that because that is a, a pretty crazy game. We bought them so much time, and Shopify just... It felt like they were holding on off the back of some Insanity Heroics, but it got tough in the late game. I mean, Insanity was the main character for what felt like the first half of the game, but again, I can't put enough praises on Dove for the middle and late parts of the game for Dignitas. His Weaver's Walls were absolutely essential for some of the fights that they were able to set up, and then at the very end of the game, when we were locked in a stalemate for so long, the Seismic Shove catching out Insanity, that's the thing that ultimately seals their fate, so I gotta keep praising this guy. Awesome stuff from Dignitas there to be able to pull out the win. They're gonna be very thankful for that, again, heading into our final week before play playoffs next week. A reminder to all y'all, Fantasy LCS is happening over on Sleeper, so go ahead and make sure you lock in your picks and bands for next week's games if you want to be part of the top of your league. Now we're headed to break before C9 versus TL. While we wait, let's learn a little bit more about Vulcan and JoJo. What's up, guys? I'm JoJo. And I'm Vulcan. And we're playing dual queue. You me? No. Because it's already all out of the game. I never see her anymore. That's true. So I don't okay, so it has to be played right now. Milia? It's not a support. It's actually a mid laner. Akali? No. Oriana? No. Azir? No. <laughs> LeBlanc? It's LeBlanc. Because of AD LeBlanc, man. It's so oh, That's true. What do you think is the most like you? Huh. Set. <laughs> <laughs> that's actually a good guess. <laughs> it's not? No, it's not. But it's a very good guess. Okay, I need a hint. Can I get a roll or is it too well, easy it's then? It's like a similar champion to set. Garen? No, not in the play style and like the, like the, the, the way yeah. the champion looks. What well, looks like set? Renekton. <laughs> no, <laughs> it's not a top laner, it's a support. Braum? Yeah. Okay, I got that. Me, of course. No? Yeah, I didn't think about it for a second, no. Fudge. Yeah, but then I, I thought about it more and it's not good? You would need so much food like to keep sustaining his body, you know? I should have gotten barber or something. <laughs> then I could eat. <laughs> FIFA? I don't know which... Oh, really? Fortnite? Okay, is it a console or PC game? Or both? Both. Minecraft? Yeah. <laughs> really? Yeah. <laughs> that was actually just a random guess. Good job. Okay, I have to give you a hand. It's not a champion. Uh, wait, what? <laughs> Okay, so what's the question then? If you have to delete something from the game, let's just say something. Something from the game. Yeah. You would delete support. Jungle. Yeah. <laughs> you <would> delete jungle. <laughs> you can get this. Favorite movie? Uh, it's like Interstellar or uh, the other one. What's it? Inception. Yeah? How'd you know? Did I say it before? Yeah, you said it before. And I, re I just remember that it was basic and everyone yeah. says that. <laughs> it's actually a good movie. Yeah, I mean, I like it yeah. a lot too. It's just yeah. basic though. True. Yeah. Yeah, you're not really getting this. Like, uh, if you get this, like, I'll buy you food. You're not getting this. <laughs> what did you put that way? <laughs> <laughs> Just think what I would put. I mean, you put, I don't know, Ser Seraphine or like Sona? No. It's an ADC. It's an ADC? Ezreal? No. Nope. Twitch? No. Nope. MF? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why did you put MF? I don't know, I just put down a random champ. Okay. Thank you. Fortnite. Yeah. 
Yeah. It's easy, no? Nice. Yeah, that was easy. But who got more? You actually got a lot. I think no? I got more. Yeah. Dude, why'd you put your new rig in the basement? Didn't you hear? Bill's a good gillionaire now. Basically, my new connection is so strong I can game anywhere. Check it out. We've got Gamer Rocker, Gamer Floaty, Gamer Couch. Whoa. It's got wheels. Gamer Bench, Gamer Throne, and Gamer Mower. What's that? It's hard to game while walking downstairs. I get it. That's smart. Live like a gagillionaire with low latency everywhere. AT&T Fiber with all five. Make more good in the Kia Sportage X-Pro. Kia, movement that inspires. Look what I just made. The perfect pearl. Not too bad, but check this out. <laughs> Whoa, a true Venus clam. Red Bull gives you wings. The new Red Bull Sea Blue Edition with the taste of Juneberry. Wings for every taste. Hello, and I'm here with Victorious Dignitas Jungler XU. After some a little bit of banter with your ex teammate Insanity uh, before the match started, I know he kind of popped you in Baron Pit, um, but you ended up getting your revenge by winning the game. Take me through just the game overall. How do you feel like you performed? I mean, I think my job this game is kind of hard because uh, like they had Volibear and they had winning lanes like everywhere, so I just had to run around and cover dives. Um, so I think it probably looks like I'm doing nothing, and honestly, I kind of am doing nothing, but. It's like good if I do nothing, you know, I'm making the game like have nothing happen. So, yeah, I think it was a hard game, but I'm glad my team pulled through. They really carried. So, I mean, I thought you did a really good job covering on bot side when you needed to, to make sure the smolder um, didn't get too far behind. And I think obviously Tomo was spamming smolder. He was one of the first people I was watching in solo queue to try to see like how the champ worked. Um, that's obviously been super high prio for you guys in draft. So it's just, you kind of trust in Tomo to be able to carry. You think smolder's OP combination of the two. I think it's a combination of the two. And also like, I feel like we're really comfortable with either side. Cause we think like Tomo's the best smolder in the league and it's like not even close. I think everyone else who flicks it, like it's really bad at it. I think when FBI picked it against us, it was like, it literally did nothing. So. Um, yeah, I mean, Tomo's really good at the champ. We think this champ's strong, and we think other teams can't play it, so we're leaving it up always. Nice. A good combination. Uh, yeah. And then lastly, moving forward, obviously you guys are in a really precarious position trying to make a playoff push. What do you think you as a team need to improve on the most to end up making it into top six? Hmm. I mean, I think today's win was a pretty big win. Uh, I'm going to I'm gonna go out there and say it. I think it solidified our top six, because I think SR and IMT are like, fuck now, or um, they're... <laughs> They're in a bad spot now. Um, so obviously on our end, we don't want to go 0-3, but I, I don't even think if we go 0-3, we'll miss. So um, I think we have a lot of time to like prep and actually try to like focus on our macro. And I don't know, I think just a lot of the little things, I think we're at a point where in scrims we could beat any team, but it's like when we come to stage, it's either nerves or it's like we're a little more passive or something. So just gotta figure that out. All right, well, all the best. Also, everyone gets one, so you're safe. Okay, I'm safe. Uh, <laughs> I, I just won't do any more interviews. <laughs> Oh, you're good. Uh, we'll see you on the other side for TL versus C9. This was previously on the LCS, the Cloud9 arrival. They have a few uh, senior citizens with them, Yeah, I think? God, they're ancient. Mateos and Hai. We also have a surprise desk guest for this champ select, Inspired. Congratulations on first place, man. Thank you, thank you. Uh, hello, everyone. Yeah, he's going to be casting this game as well. 
uh, and then recording some content after the day. But how do you feel about this Team Liquid versus Cloud9 matchup? Cloud9 is a team you beat uh, earlier this week. We or sorry, they beat you. Yeah, I wish. <laughs> I wish we beat them. I've ruined. Uh, kind of I've ruined the, things. I'm sorry. I kind of got stomped, honestly. Uh, oh yeah, I, I see Team Liquid is watching the game that we lost. They insta in Italy. <laughs> I mean, Jojo is a good player. I think uh, usually uh, he will just take over the games. And I think if his teammates don't really do many mistakes and just play well around him, I would always take uh, him over APA in like competitive game. So mm. I think that's why Cloud9 is going to win today. But we'll see. Maybe Jojo will have a bad game. Maybe APA will just uh, surprise him with his Zeeks. I think last time he, he beat mm. him, he was playing his uh, signature champ. Maybe again he will he will do something similar. Um, one question I had for you, Inspired, just as we see the Volibear uh, uh, ban coming out from C9. Volibear has been super high prio. I think we expected to see him here and there, but it's been really high prio in LCS on this patch. So I'm wondering what you think of that priority and what makes him such a strong pick that he is so um, has such a high presence. Uh, I mean, he's just a very strong early game jungler. Like, no one can really contest him in the 1v1. So you either pick uh, scaling laners with him, and then he just secures your early game, or you just pick something that is uh, strong in the bot lane, for example, and you play to stack drakes. So, yeah, it's just a mid ball in the jungle that uh, has to take over the first 15, 20 minutes of the game, and then after that, he just tanks some CC with ult and, and stuns people. We also have Senna again. Yeah. It won all four games yesterday. Then I think it's been banned most of the day, but it's back on the blue side. How do you feel like the, this pick has developed this week in the LCS? I mean, I think Senna's broken, and I bet Senna would love to ban it, but they had to ban Zix. Right. So I think they had to ban Zix, so they, they were like, let's prepare something into Senna. We know they are going to lock in Senna, mm -hmm. and let's just ban Zix because we don't have too much practice into Zix because no one else than APA really plays it. Mm -hmm. So I think that's why C9 did it. It makes a lot of sense, and I feel like there's been a different way a lot in which a lot of people are playing Senna. Like, we've been seeing a lot of, like, Senna laning with top lane and just, like, abusing, like, um, uh, a melee matchup. So, where, have you seen that a little bit in scrims? Like, where do you think that has come from? Because we saw it in LPL a little bit. I mean, Senna is just, like, the, the, the big point of Senna is that she can roam to grabbies and, like, impact them up while her support is still getting gold and it's uh, not possible to dive him. Like, you, Damken is, is gonna farm, he has TP, even if enemies commit so much resources to kill him, yeah. he will just TP back. And it's not even worth for Senna, like, to, to, to commit into that. But Senna is opting into the other option, which is uh, accept that Damken will be scaling for free and just pick Smolder, which is uh, also gonna scale for free and mm -hmm. hopefully will carry the, the later part. Of the game. So, so if you had to pick between a one, two, three to have, which one would you rather have on your side right now? I mean, I think as a jungler, if you have Senna TK, you have way more options to do anything in the early game. Like you can be a bit uh, proactive, mm. and you play with Smolder, you just uh, you as a passenger on the game. You just need to make sure the game is stable and uh, make sure your uh, your Smolder is in position where he can take over the game. So as a jungler, I, I always rather play TL side. Yeah, it's a lot more fun to play TL side, yeah. even if the scaling might work some of the time on the side of Smolder. Makes sense. And I'm looking at C9 side, and this is. It's been interesting because the what we've heard it has been like Cloud9, the break has been much needed. I actually got a chance to talk to Jack and like just in general feeling really happy about the progress that they've had during the break. Uh, hearing about the success that they had in scrims, obviously the game that they had just yesterday has been good. So it feels like a lot of the coordination issues have been so far resolved. I don't want to speak it into it. We don't know just yet. Like it's just one <laughs> they've won a whole game. They fixed time. it. One game. Um, but. If that's the case, I mean, a lot of people have forgotten the first three games that they had of the split were what we expected of them stomping individual lanes. JoJo had uh, great performances within the laning phase. Even in the loss that he had versus 100 Thieves, I felt like his Akali was actually ridiculous. He was like farming uh, perfectly within that game until the later game te team fight. So this comp is a risky one with how we've been seeing Senna, Tom Kench been playing out through the split, but I have a lot of faith that they can pull it out if you know, we see the C9 that we saw at the beginning of the split. I mean, it's way different draft uh, comparing to yesterday. I think yesterday they picked a lot of uh, playmaking potential champions and mm. today they are playing with Smolder. So we'll see how will Brabble adapt because uh, I think he, he will have a different job today comparing to yesterday. So that's going to be interesting to see. I think he doesn't really like to play this style, Yeah. but, uh, but he for sure can do it. There's the Blabber Iburn hover. Do you think this is a jungle pick here for Cloud9 or would they... I think it almost has to be, then they'll save Fudge's pick for a counter. Yeah, I think you, you, you should pick the jungle here, because you know that Senna will be uh, will be participating in the top fight, so if you get counter picked on top of that, I think uh, it will be really hard for Fudge to play. So he's just saving he, his champion. 
It's Ivern. Ivern. There it is. I yeah. do like Ivern with this composition. It's going to be interesting to see if Bi a Blabber can play it out well. Um, because it's just, you were right, it is a different role in general. But you have Smolder, Azir, great uh, front to back overall. Um, but it's going to be a different pick for him in general. Yeah, I think uh, he just wants to secure the early game for his team. Ivan is good because he can full clear his jungle in three minutes and then just uh, run around and make sure that uh, if any laner of his needs help, he will be there for them. So I think that's why he decided to pick Ivan here. He knows uh, if the game goes long, he's going to be useful. I think he just wants someone to, to tank the damage for his team, so he'll probably, they will probably look for a tank top on last pick. And uh, now with your jungle hat on once again, you saw the first three picks, said you'd rather be the jungler on the TL side. Now that you have the Ivern versus Lee Sin. Which side would you rather play? Honestly, I would rather play Ivern side right now. I mean, I'm watching on Team Liquid side. It's like really hard to make plays. Yes, you have Talia with Lee Sin, but uh, in isolation, I think uh, Azir can easily push lane and, and get Pry over her after like a uh, few few levels. And Ivern will always be there for him to mm. cover him when when he needs a cover. And it's also Jojo on uh, on Azir, so that also plays a big part in it. So I think I would rather play Cloud9 side. I, I like to play the game uh, like uh, very stable mm -hmm. and make sure that not much happens and uh, then you scale well. So yeah, I would choose Cloud9 side right now. Jojo's Azir early on in the split was actually insane. He was getting targeted. This was versus NRG. He was getting targeted consistently on sidelines. And I mean, this is Elise and Atalia, so this might be somewhat similar, but he was being able to get out of those situations very easily. I thought he had a perfect game on his ear. So if we're judging it based off that last game, makes a lot of sense. And it's a lock-in on Jace. Ooh, Jace top for fudge. Yeah, I actually really like that. I think that is a really cool pick and it also goes well with the rest of this draft. It also may mean that coming out of JoJo, we will see that kind of showmaker like tank Zier build that he went yesterday as well. So I'm kind of curious to see where, where that ends up. But overall, C9 just seem a lot more comfortable. I, I like the, how they've been drafting on the latest patch. Yeah, my fear is that, and I'm looking towards you, Inspired. What lane are you hovering over? Because you'd want to protect the Jace, but obviously Smolder and Nautilus are going to be under threat with uh, Senna. So it's going to be hard to be able to maintain both sides, right? Uh, I think, uh, honestly, Smolder and Nautilus will be completely fine in lane. Like, okay. There's no way that mm. Senna TK can set up any dive because they just don't have that much damage. I think if, if uh, Berserker wants to play safe, he will play safe and last hit every single minion. And uh, top will be very volatile, so I think Blabber will have to be around top squad a lot this game. That makes a lot of sense for me. That being said, you're going to be a part of the cast. We're going to be headed over to the casters on this one. Take it away, guys. Thank you very much, everybody. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the final game of this week here for LCS Face Off. I'm still Captain Flowers. We still got a Zale, but now we got Inspired joining the show here. How you doing, my Our friend? Hilo has Hello. skyrocketed. I'm yes. Doing way better than yesterday. <laughs> Hell yeah, that's what I like to hear. That's what I like to hear. So obviously you just got done talking with everybody else about this draft. What, uh, what's like your biggest takeaway from what you got of the, of the champion select for this one? Uh, I think it will be really interesting that uh, how Fudge plays out his lane because okay. I think if I would be him, I would uh, lock in something a bit safer, something a bit more tanky for the team comp because he already has a you lot of scaling smolder. carries. Like he already has a smolder, so he kind of needs to just not, his lane, not lose his lane too hard, not give too many openings to enemy team. And doing it as Jace is kind of hard. Like right now, enemy have Talia listing that will perma try to attack you. You have mm. Jax that has pretty good gank setup. So uh, I think he, he will have a hard, uh, hard game to play, but he decided to lock in Jace. He feels confident in the matchup. So I'm really interested like, uh, to see how he will do it. I mean, my guess here, and maybe I'm just shooting in the dark, maybe it's a confidence play. Maybe C9, we've been talking about how they needed to bounce back. They kind of had that really wacky mid-season point where everything just fell apart. Maybe this is part of the bounce back plan going into our final Super Week here. What are your thoughts heading into this with how close and how competitive this split has ended up being with the amount of parity between all these teams? I mean, I don't know. I feel like Fudge just likes to play Jace and he knows that they, it's not playoffs yet, so he can just... <laughs> <laughs> He has to get in as many non-renecting games as he can. If he, if he wins this game, enemies will like think about his Jace for playoffs, right? They will be like, mm -hmm. hmm. even though this oh. was not the best Jace case, he still locked it in. So maybe we need to respect his Jace a bit more. So I think it's a good like uh, game for the confidence for Fudge. Yeah, yeah. As long yeah. As he win. <laughs> if you end up zero and seven or something along those lines, then there might be a bit like, of a no, bigger okay. problem. Leave the Jace up. Yeah. <laughs> how, how are you feeling coming out? You know, obviously there was the two week break coming back. There's a lot of talk about, you know, are the teams at the same power level? You know, who's strong? Who's weak? Do you think things have shifted much over the two weeks? Um, 
Not really, honestly. I feel like it's still very similar. I always uh, felt like Cloud9 is doing well in scrims. I think mm -hmm. they just had a couple of unlucky best of one games in in the season, like, like six before the break. Like <laughs> 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 uh, that's oh, why they were kind of not looking too good. Yeah. But uh, yeah, when we played them uh, at the beginning of the break, because we knew we were about to play them, so we didn't scream them through the whole break. Mm -hmm. uh, they they played pretty well. And uh, I think they started realizing that the players are getting uh, very close, so it's time to get uh, your uh, your teamwork to to work actually. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I don't think other other stuff really changed. It's it's really interesting. Um, one of the one of the things that a lot of people have been talking about in the community, and I'm interested to get your take on this, is one of the reasons people have been saying that maybe Blabber, you know, wasn't doing as well, or Cloud9 wasn't doing as well, is because they were putting Blabber on more supportive style champions like Rel and, and things like this. And then yesterday, he was on a carry style champion playing the Nidalee. Vulcan was playing hard engage instead of more of the kind of enchanters, and then they won. And so today he's back on Ivor. Do you think that this is something where Cloud9 is trying to show, no, we can still play it all? Or do you think Blabber, you know, is more successful kind of on those carries? I think he is a bit more successful on the carries, but I do think uh, playing Ivor in this game will be fine for him. I think mm -hmm. he has enough experience to know what he needs to do in the game. I think the biggest change that I see the they did is that Vulcan is not playing Milio anymore. Like, they just put him on Engage. I think he yeah. always plays the best on Engage. Mm -hmm. And he did get Nautilus yesterday, he did get Nautilus again. I think uh, that's probably one of his best, or maybe his best champion. And I think that's like a good change scene I made compared to what they were doing before the break. His Nautilus game was, was quite good yesterday. Had a lot of really nice buffers on the Chains of Corruption, was able to, you know, essentially immune those, uh, being able to kind of hook to the wall as it was getting hit on him. I'm kind of also interested, you know, obviously you're talking about, okay, if you're playing on the Ivern side, there's maybe less pressure to make something happen because you have all the scaling on your team, you can kind of be able to sit back, and as long as things are even, you're kind of winning. On Lisa inside, you maybe have the ability to make more things happen, but there's also that pressure on you to get things done. Which which side do you prefer being on as far as, like, do you like being the person that has the pressure on you? It's like, you can win the early game, you're stronger early, but you must make something happen, whereas the other guy just kind of has to sit back. Uh, I mean, it's always better to sit back if you know you're... <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, it's always easier to do that. I think... Uh... If he's playing uh, well around Jojo, and Jojo is gonna play his matchup in the correct way, like around mm -hmm. level 6, I think Jojo will just pushing mid, Blabber will put wards on one side of the mid, on the other side of the mid, and just let your Azir get an advantage on his own, and don't let enemies roam to top side. All right, quick update for everybody. There was a short pause here as we loaded into the game. Berserker claims he has the wrong runes. It was investigated to see whether this was user error or the client not responding. It was found to be user error. Berserker Ooh. selected, pressed the attack, and so the game Instead will go forward oh. with the Smolder having PTA. In that case anybody sees that and wonders, huh, what is this new Smolder tech? It's not. It was unfortunately just a mistake. People, people were playing PTA when it first came out, but people kind of quickly realized you just need runes to get you through the laning phase. I know people were really on the comet train for a while, but I think Fleet has been way better pretty much the entire time. Uh, and Fleet allows you to survive in a lot of these, these matchups. It procs off your Q as well, so it's very easy to kind of, you know, if someone steps forward to trade, you Q them, you get the move speed, you E backwards. So that is going to be some loss sustain for him in lane. We'll have to see if that does come into play whatsoever in the 2v2. Obviously, Sen and TK, not the most dominant of laners, but if you were to lose a lane, it would likely because you're slowly getting poked down by the Senna. And worth pointing out too, we are seeing that Senna TK adaptation that we see pretty frequently these days with the double Dorian starting item delaying the support item instead. So you just have that extra scrapping power during the first couple of levels. As APA hits the all chat with a how was Worlds last year. Well, jo Jojo, Jojo led this off to be fair. Jojo hit him with the don't choke APA, you lose your out. And APA goes, how was Worlds last year? <laughs> and Jojo responds one and nine <laughs> to which APA says, yep. <laughs> But how did you go? <laughs> We're getting the banter early on in the all chat here. These are, these are two of the biggest keyboard, keyboard warriors for sure. I love league. it. I love it, man. Do you, do you like the trash talk when players are, are getting involved in that yeah, inspired? I mean, it's always uh, it's always really funny. I, I think I'm a little surprised Jojo didn't type anything yesterday. <laughs> he, he, was, he was coming off a lot of losses, you know? Yeah, maybe that's why. <laughs> he, had to, he had to unplug his keyboard for a little bit there, disable the all chat. Uh, how are you feeling about this? Because we, we have Fleet Azir, so it should be a standard Azir build. Uh, we saw the Grasp build yesterday. Obviously, that Showmaker was popularizing in the LCK. Uh, do you have any kind of like preference on, on those Azir builds and how you have to you know play with them and against them? Mm, I mean, I think he goes for the AP build today because he has Ivan in the jungle. Mm -hmm. So he's like basically solo AP. Yesterday, he had Nidalee for the damage and they were getting ahead in the game. So all he had to do was just not get one shot and he would probably just win team fights. And then now he just opts into more damage. So I think that's just the difference in, in the builds. 
Makes a lot sense of sense. Me. Yep. Well, Berserker and Vulcan are respecting that early power of the Senna and TK with the double Dorian's items like I was talking about. They're just hanging out back here, trying not to take too much damage. Again, we'll be comparing the stacks as the two yep. hyperscale into infinity against one another with the Senna versus Smolder matchup here. Core JJ on the Tom Kench also. Remember it was yesterday where we got to see it was who he's Nautilus playing the farming support alongside the Senna that just became an unkillable meatball. I'm curious if we'll get to see Core JJ reach anywhere near that this time around, working together with that Senna in the bottom lane. As you can see, Blabber just going about his camps here with the Ivern. Very, very fast on his champion with his first clears and hitting that level four if he doesn't get interrupted. And it doesn't look like Umpty's really got any plans to interrupt him here at the start. Yeah, yeah. right now you can see the top wave uh, kind of slow pushing into impact side, so he's trying to set up a gank for, for Umpty, but I'm pretty sure Blabber and Fudge knows about it and they will just be there to cover it and not let uh, Listen do anything. Yeah, it feels so hard to kind of make these early plays happen, you know, against an Ivern as well, as he's going to get knocked back. Whoa, they try to bring Blabber in there, flashing to get in range, but just not quite in time. Impact using his own flash to get back. He's very low, but he wants to stay underneath the turret so he doesn't lose all of these minions. Umpty going to come up and just try to shadow this, make sure that Impact is not in any Let's danger of close. a dive. Umpty throws out the Sonic Wave, but he doesn't really connect on anybody with it. Fudge gets reinforced there by the shield from Ivern as Umpty... Just gonna walk it on back towards that turret. Impact stays alive. Everything gets a little bit dicey there, but nobody actually drops just yet. I'm honestly kind of surprised that Fudge just didn't base when they crashed the wave, um, because now he's in a little bit of an awkward spot as Umpty's looking for Blabber, but Ooh. Uh, flash. Yeah, that accelerated shock blast forcing the Team Liquid jungler back, but Impact is now looking for Blabber, locks him down with a counter strike, Sonic Wave, resonating strike, Blabber one more hit, and it's first blood back over to Impact's Jax. He tried to leap strike away, but the bullet was in the air, so Fudge makes it a one for one, and now the Jace has double buffs. Umpty trying to get away, meanwhile on the bot lane, a 2v2, Yon's gonna be focused down here for the very start, 150 HP remaining, a Berserker goes in, Berserker gets him. Umpty still staying alive back in the top lane, as Berserker's only got 100 HP, and Core JJ is is not gonna get him back. It's two to one, favoring C9, just four and a half minutes into the game. The <laughs> Press the attack! Yeah, man, 42 damage from the PTA, insane. <laughs> The but, difference. man, dying early to a smolder lane, that yeah. is, that is doomed. That is a little bit embarrassing, yeah, I agree. That is really, really doomed. Uh, and he's gonna be able to get a sheen off that buy, so Berserker gonna be feeling really good about it. You know, got very confident going forward. Already has 21 stacks as well, because they've been PvPing, and I've gotta say, I played a lot of Smolder when it first came out. When you get to play against a Tom Kench, that is literally my dream matchup, because it is so easy to farm stacks off him. Every time he's killing minions, I'm queuing him. Every time he steps up for another minion, you're Wing him. You're getting so many free stacks. Uh, just from this guy trying to farm because it, it's gonna be the farming Tom Kench, not the farming Senna. Right. So it's it's I would say it's probably literally the easiest realistic champion in the game to actually get stacks off of. And when you get to 25 faster against something like a Tom Kench, then all of a sudden you're getting way more off the minions because you have the AoE. So it really ramps up how quickly you get to that benchmark. And he's gonna have 25 here um, pretty much already. Yeah, and now we are in the part of the game that I was talking uh, before, that Senna just starts roaming. Oh, they're flashing the mid. Flash for flash, Vulcan not afraid to try to just go in here after APA. Talia now, without that flash, I like the timing on this too, because just now you can see on the side of your screen, both mid laners hitting level 6. This opens up the window for Jojo to go in for the all-in. Yeah, definitely. I think uh, Vulcan knows that uh, he doesn't need to have flash to be useful. He has Hex Flash unlocked currently, and Talia needs to be really scared to, to walk up to enemy midwave. And we, we didn't really get to talk a lot about, you know, the, the kind of uh, what else happened up in top lane. Oh, oh, we aren't going to have the chance. This is exactly what I'm talking about. APA lost the flash earlier, and JoJo sees the opportunity to commit his and go in, finding the third kill of the game here for C9. This game is already getting out of control. You know, C9 with, with this good of an early game, with this sort of composition, is, is so rough. And yeah, to finally get back towards the top lane, it's like, yeah, Impact got a kill, but Jace got the kill right back, got double buffs, and didn't have to use his flash. So Jax is trying to play that 1v1 against double buff Jace with no flash is really, really tough here and there's Jojo on the entrance the E a little bit late for the stun coming in from APA I think he was gonna be dead either way yeah, though I'm not sure if Jojo maybe cancelled the the last part of his E with mm. flash mm. so that's why Talia so didn't, E didn't stun? stun him because I think if he was trying to cast his E on full range I'm pretty sure Talia E was in time to stun him there but he just cancelled the flash that was pretty well played by him nicely done gonna be able to find the kill for himself that one of course it did go to blabber but 
Again, 34 stacks here already for Berserker. He's going to be working towards the Essence River very fast. And Cloud9 might be off to the races here in terms of leading with gold and kills, but Umpty has at least been able to find a little bit of a consolation prize. The first three grubs did go the way of Team Liquid, and you can see now Umpty going after that first Drake. Blabber's walking down towards it, but the objective is already secured. So Team Liquid making sure they aren't just hemorrhaging here in the early game, even if the gold is favoring C9. So you're in empty shoes right now, Inspired. You know, what are you trying to get done in these next couple minutes to kind of claw this game back a bit? Yeah, I think uh, as Umti right now, you are kind of on the clock. Like, you need to find opening in top lane. Like, the moment Listen gets this kick and his flash is coming back up, I think he, he needs to surprise Fad with some, with some uh, creative gank. And I think if Fudge will uh, be aware of everything that is going around him and uh, Blabber will try to give him some vision, I don't really see any openings for Team Liquid right now. Well, that's really tough. So talk me through, you know, if, if you're playing in game and that's the opportunity that you're going through, what's kind of comms like with your top laner as far as like how you want the wave to be or how you're going to try to set this up? Whoa, hold on. We might not have time for that, boys. It's another scoop coming in from JoJo. APA trying to escape from it as Blabber once again looking to help out this mid lane matchup. Core JJ makes his way over to APA. He uses uses the Devour plus the Abyssal Dive to guarantee the Talia won't fall again. But the problem is, you're still going to lose all these minions, and there's no TP on APA, so you're going to probably lose a plate as well, but Ooh, another fight bot lane. Yep, we're not done. Vulcan's going to get kicked, and they kick him right back through Berserker, but it's not enough lockdown on either target to really threaten the kill. Berserker and Vulcan both going to walk away here. Couldn't? Listen, actually, secured that kill. I was pretty sure Vulcan's dead there. Hooking in with no flash, and Listen having kick, but... Uh, he manages to get out, I think, uh, kind of, oh, that God. was kind of illegal. That's if Impact gets dove, this is so doomed. Talia has TP, but I don't know if she wants to invest her TP to save the Jax here. Yeah. Yeah, Impact just has to leave and wait for his teammates to help him out. That feels bad, man. Even if you don't die, losing out on the EXP and the gold underneath the turret, he can at least make his way back up here now, but still loses out on some of that. Blabber doing a good job applying pressure up here in top. Well, I mean, look at the farm, right? You know, you're down 20 CS. Um, you know, you're having a lane against that, that that Jace, who had the double buffs, so when you had no flash, he had his flash. You can't really threaten it all in either, because um, if you leave strike in, he flashes away from it. You're just going to get chased down by the phase rush and killed. And so he's lost plates as well. Fudge in a really good spot, even on that tier, he's being able to win the lane. Uh, and Jace is going to be scaling up pretty well in the mid game. There's JoJo. He's going to have to get out of there. Yeah, as I said, I mean, with the game going on, I think Jace is just getting stronger and stronger. Mm -hmm. And Jax doesn't really have that many good items nowadays to, to build to actually pressure the enemy team. While I think Jace, the moment he gets like 280 items, pretty much whatever items he wants, he is just dealing so much damage. Yeah, there's a lot of poke. One one saving grace I would say on TL side is at least you have Senna. It does have actually quite a bit of heal to help you deal with that poke. But TL, obviously, trying to start up this grubs up on the top side and they do already have four so they want at least one more and they should probably be able to get it umpty didn't use his smite on the first one so they are very likely gonna get the void might spawn yeah, is pushing mid to make sure that talia has to choose either contest grabs or drop the mid wave but jojo says he doesn't have enough mana so he's just going to base and he he just gives up the objective yeah all six grubs going the way of team liquid c9 up 1.2 thousand gold Ten and a half minutes into the game, Team Liquid with six grubs. We'll see if they can scale to a point and stop Cloud9 from bleeding them out to where they can get a lot of returns on that through a side push, through something that would be able to bring this game back a little closer. Yeah, that's the thing with grubs is, is they are this objective that can be really, really strong, but it's like potential to do damage, potential to actually have value, right? right? Because if you're losing the lanes, uh, you're not going to get there. Fudge does get rooted up, but MT just going to complete the recall. And honestly, it's lucky he did because Vulcan is here to cover as well. So had you looked for any sort of a play there, it would not have gone well for TL. So C9, as you said, you know, Fudge is going to be aware of it. Very clearly, C9 is aware of the fact that this would be where TL would look to attack. Yeah, I think C9 just uh, sees Team Liquid uh, play, oh. play conditional. Oh. Hold on now. We're going to combine the power of the Nautilus with the Jace. Knock him up into the air. Smack him in the face. Vulcan, unfortunately, the one who gets the kill credit. But it's still what they were looking for. They knock Impact down again. They're going to get Fudge some free firing time on that top lane turret as well. Yeah. And that's something you really don't want to see as Tamkens uh, just farming your minions bot, your Senna roam to top lane, and then <laughs> she just leaves your top lane and dies to a gank. I mean, that really looks like a beginning of the end of, of, of the game for Team Liquid. It's really, really tough. And that's the difficulty, you know, when C9 is in a winning position like this, when you're playing a melee champion into Jace, the only way you get pressure is by being aggressive, by, you know, putting yourself forward in that lane. But when there's someone behind him there, you know, Blabber was covering him for a long time, then Vulcan just really good roam. 
because again, you know, Tom Kench is going to exert zero pressure in the 1v1 against Smolder. You're just allowing this guy to free farm, so they don't have to be, you know, stuck with Smolder protecting him, because this is not a powerful 2v2. And I think that's one of the biggest differences about why this draft is, is working so well for C9, compared to some of the Smolder games we've seen fail in the LCS, where Smolder is in these really tough matchups, and the jungler is called bot to try to cover dives and protect the Smolder constantly. This has just been Berserker chilling. Ooh. Jojo very low here, and Jan puts a bullet through him. APA got him almost there, and it's the Senna that gives the extra little bit of damage to get him over the line, get Team Liquid their second kill of the game. I think that's very personal for Jojo. He just legit saw the Talia stand on top of the wall and just walked into him. <laughs> <laughs> and APA is instantly hitting the ultra. <laughs> Yo, XD, what are you doing, bro? <laughs> I love it. We, we got to make sure that we stay up to date on these all chests throughout the game between it's these the two. the game within the game. Who's going to get the mental advantage? Absolutely, man. The mini game is half the fun, but it's it's a pretty close one here still. Cloud9 up, you know, 400 gold, but that's nothing crazy, right? Especially considering Team Liquid fully controlling neutral objectives up until this point. And it's Umpty again, right back onto the Drake here. 13 minutes in, looking for Drake number two. They already got the Hextech Drake first. Chemtech Drake now coming out second as Impact. Pops the ulti, going after Fudge, forcing him back at the same time. Oh, well, right now Talia is trying to make a play top while Umti is doing Drake. So I think they will have to decide what do they want to pull off, and they want to attack top so that Drake will go to C9. Ooh, okay, APA at least forces the flash back out of Fudge, but with Team Liquid committing their mid laner up into the top side, exactly like you're calling out, man. They say, all right, we're not going to take the Drake. We'll just concede that instead. But getting that first tower, that's what we were talking about earlier, right? There's your value out of taking the Grubs. You've got that structure damage potential. Exactly. I think it's actually way better than grabbing that second Dragon in this case, because you're getting so much gold onto the Jax. The Jax now has his Triforce completed. You took six grubs. If Jacksons aren't winning in a side lane, all of a sudden you can be a massive threat on these towers and that can really open up the game, right? If Jax is drawing pressure, if he's drawing multiple members there, you know, that makes the job a lot easier here for TL. So uh, I think getting the gold there was smart. Uh, yeah. It does mean CL, the C9 obviously get one Definitely. dragon though. I think if Jax is not in position to pressure on side lane, I'm not sure what, what, uh, what else they can do. So that was a really good trade by, by TL. I think, uh, honestly, uh, the game didn't look that good four minutes ago, but right now, it's looking good. I think Impact will have a lot of opportunities to carry this game. Right. I mean, four minutes ago, Cloud9 had a one and a half thousand gold lead, right? Now it's Team Liquid equalizing everything. Umpty, maybe looking for an angle here on JoJo, but Blabber was already ready for it. JoJo now making sure that he doesn't get counterattacked just yet. Impact is here too. Jumps in here with a helicopter. Looking to turn JoJo into a landing pad, but Fudge is ready to follow up. They find the Sonic Wave under the Jace, but Umpty's so low, he just can't follow it up with a resonating strike, trying to make any sort of a play. Already had to use his flash there as well, so can't reposition for the Dragon's Rage. Vulcan standing away from the side there, wants to lock down APA. The Talia once again in some trouble, and once again saved by Core JJ. Berserker and Vulcan backing away now, as Fudge and Impact have both made their way back into the fight. The 1v1 between the top laners off to the side. Counter-Strike will not land the stun, so Impact's got to back away again. JoJo may be locked down here. The shields from Blabber keeping him safe. All of this fighting, no kills just yet. Impact gets the stun. There it is. Fudge is done. Impact takes him out. And he's going to be able to get the tower off this as well, and they're just going to give the solo gold over to Impact. MT just going to base. The Void might spawn, going to be able to take it up. C9 trying to get something back here in mid, though. Teleport wants to try to defend this turret, but APA, he teleports in only in time to die. That one's got to be all chat worthy on there. The mom over the top, they summon up the Azir turret after they take the enemy objective, so there's no counterattack. Well done there from C9. APA just maybe overestimating how defensible that objective really was. Yeah, not going to be able to keep him safe. TP's in, the tower goes down, he dies to boot, but still another kill for Jax on the bottom side, another tower for Jax as well. And it's kind of fun seeing Impact back on a carry. He's been almost exclusively on tank duty this year. He did play the one Rumble game, but besides that, it's been Kasante Udir and basically Lots just, of Udir. just that, right? <laughs> yeah. So uh, it is going to be him back on a carry. He's always had, you know, a couple of these carries, you know, in, in his back pocket that he has done really well on. Uh, and Jax, people forget, but that's a, that's a skin. He is his world champion. champion. Skin is on Jax. He doesn't use it, though. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the old skins, they don't look as good as the new ones. We'll just put it that way. Not quite as stylish, but the Rift Herald now in the eyes of Team Liquid. 
This will be another neutral objective going their way. Going to continue praising Umpty for being able to control the vast majority of these. The only neutral objective they haven't claimed was that Drake that was traded for the top lane tier one turret that we talked about the importance of earlier. C9 once again back in technically the gold lead, but it registers as zero. So it's like, what, 10 gold? This doesn't really matter. The game so close between these two squads here at 17 minutes. And remember, they're tied in the standings too. Five and five for TL, five and five for C9 heading into the last week of regular play every single one of these games matters a lot yeah absolutely both coming off of uh, some different games though yesterday obviously as TL you know took the loss uh, to energy yep. and C9 big win yesterday for them um, so you know trying to keep that moving in the right direction C9 obviously you know were expected to be heavy favorites alongside you guys those were kind of the most of the teams that people were were pointing at as top two teams C9 though you know coming into the second last week was four and five which was pretty shocking uh, and I think it's really important that they started out this week on the right foot, and they were able to do so. Vulcan finding the jump on Umpty there, but they do not want to overcommit to the Lee Sin. Daisy gets summoned up, shoved right back into the unraveled Earth. That might be a very short lifespan for Daisy. Okay, she barely holds on. Yeah, I think at this point of the game, Team Liquid doesn't have so much damage when Ivan is grouped with the team. I think if whenever they go now to lose, he just gets Ivan shielded and they don't, uh, they are not really able to kill him. So I think they should just keep looking for picks on side lane where Ivan is not included in the fight. Jack's win condition. If you're exactly. empty, are you just kind of looking uh, for ways to set up Jax, you know, trying to talk about, you know, how you're going to be able to get him up to get some more vision, you know, try to get him to get towards those tier twos, or what's kind of your goal in the game at this point? Yeah, I think you are just like uh, running from uh, camp to camp. When your camps are gone, you just like show on one side and try to surprise the enemies on the other side by like instantly running there. I think that's why he chose the blue smite this game to like mm -hmm. be pretty quick on the map and like run from bot to top uh, pretty fast. Right now, it seems like they want to use their grabbies and just group on bot side and, and trade bot tier two for top tower and probably recall and defend their tier two tower top side. But uh, we'll see Cloud9 allows it. Right now, it seems like they're all basing to defend that tower and the Fudge will have TP ready to not let it happen. So maybe we'll have a fight breaking up around it. And one thing that hasn't really been one of the main stories of this game has been the Smolder. Berserker sitting at 1-0-1 and one after that first little bit of uh, lane dominance they accrued for themselves. But he's quietly got about 170 stacks yep. here. Eight, 19 minutes into the game, should be on track to get one of those early 20-minute style 225 breakpoints, which could be a big game changer for these mid-game team fights. as C9 again just steps forward, trying to force Team Liquid out of the C9 blue side jungle. As the third Drake of the game has spawned, it is Ocean Rift, Team Liquid, grouped up down here, ready to threaten for this. They're, they're potentially uh, thinking about fighting this because uh, JoJo's basing, he has TP. Uh, Fudge just finished his second item. He's TPing back. So JoJo I think, also finished yeah, second, second item as well. So they're going to look to try to get something done. At the very least, they're going to try to push for mid. And they do have mid prior now, but Dragon getting pretty low here. Yep, Dragon down to 5K. Team Liquid not wanting to overcommit to it. Impact is driving the Herald into the bottom lane tier two turret. They just want to at least get some kind of an objective. The Drake will be slain by APA. Team Liquid gonna grab Drake number two for themselves this game as Impact does not want to force the issue too hard there in the bottom lane, even though he was driving the Herald. They're just trying to split the attention of C9. Vulcan get locks down. However, he buffers through it there with the dredge line. Mom comes in over the top as Fudge tries to step up, but up he goes for the get. He's found Fudge. The chase is caught, or is he? It'll be a one for one trade here at the very start as Vulcan now gets seismic shoved. APA landing the CC here on a two as Jojo wants to press forward. Impact probably the counter strike here yet again, but he's not gonna stun anybody up. He has to try to keep running, but Berserker is gonna everybody down. Core JJ wants to escape. APA's over the wall. He's going to take Flabber out with him, but he still falls. It's three dead on Team Liquid, two dead on C9. The fight turns into a bloodbath. Yeah, Cloud9 win the fight, though, and they're going to get the tower off the back of that as well. Berserker, 194 stacks now. Got some kills. The Azir getting fed. The Smolder getting fed. We can see it one more time. Talk us through this fight, Inspired. I mean, it was a really good kick by, by Umti. Honestly, like, I thought the fight might be just over if Jays get one shot there, but I'm not sure. Maybe they couldn't chase him correctly or just one shot him in the CC. Like right now, no one could really follow up in time and he gets the flash out, which say, which buys so much time for Azir and Smolder to just free hit. And after that, I think Team Liquid just runs out of damage. And with yeah. the Ivan shields and Nautilus, right now George is playing very well. He's just chasing enemies. He knows he has flash and ult up in case enemy try turning on him. And he's just using the power of Ivan, basically. I think, uh, yeah, just a well-played fight by, uh, by Cloud9. Yeah, they did it really well, you know, and you called it. The fact that they couldn't actually kill Fudge off, you know, instantaneously made such a difference. The fact that Impact has to go back in, he's actually getting hit by both the Azir and the Smolder to try to finish him off, and he had nothing left. And Jojo now, 
Almost catches MT, who is going to flash out of there. They have the Azir turret up in mid. And with Azir, you always have to be nervous about these Baron turns because now there's no flash on MT. They have Daisy out. They're going to be starting this up, and they're going to force TL to try to come. Yeah. All right. All five players from C9 in the Baron pit. Impact going for a recall. His Unleashed TP is ready to go, and C9 is not burning this Baron down super quickly. So they are going to get the Jax teleport, but how much longer do they want to stick around? Daisy down to about 450 That's HP. Enough. Yeah, it looks like Team Liquid's going to scare them off with this one. Blabber going back into the pit now. Daisy staying aggroed by Baron. About to die here, but Umpty getting caught. That's going to be a huge scoop. Jojo goes on a rampage, and Umpty goes down. Didn't yes. he just get knocked up by Nash? It looks like a 5v6 fight. <laughs> oh, Impact coming in for the Counter-Strike. Vulcan's going to be bursted down first, but Smolder summons Mom. APA gets the kill on Vulcan, so now we got ourselves a 4v4. C9 still trying to keep the aggro here on the Baron, as Fudge has got to be careful. He jumps in after Yawn, but Impact's ready to fight back. Fudge stunned up, gunned down. Yawn taking him out as Team Liquid ends up with the man advantage. I mean, Cloud9 were just really underestimating the Baron damage there. They were getting blasted by the Baron. And when we see those, those, those graphs where it's just all the team fight damage, I want to see the Baron damage in that <laughs> one because they got <laughs> slammed by it. I mean, honestly, I didn't want to like uh, the judge their decision but as cloud9 you're like hard out scaling right now you for you sure don't need can to hold silent you don't have to force nash when your smolder doesn't have sums you can legit just mm -hmm. wait for your third items to come in and then the game is pretty much free but they took the risk they wanted to finish it way faster than yeah and, and here here's the initial catch so gonna be able to get it empty looks pretty good honestly like, it does from this position i don't know what goes wrong now well we can see i mean they're, they're in the pit impact goes forward you know gets a, a stun yeah. there and it's a nice flip back really from apa nice combo with APA yes. exactly so vulcan dies right off the bat the dawning shadow hits multiple people and it's this point where it really starts to get risky because look how much damage they're just taking from the baron the entire time the baron is aggroed on a c9 member for literally the entire fight yeah. You can see the miscommunication here on the C9 side. I think Blabber was standing in the pit and he knew Listen is dead, so he was like calling to uh, to finish the Nash. But his teammates were in positions where they couldn't really damage the Nash. Yeah. So it ended up that uh, Blabber staying in the pit ready to keep fighting while his teammates are clicking away. And uh, that kind of made the fight hard. All right, as we're back to live and C9's back into the Baron Pit, important to point out, Smolder hit 225 during the replay, 23 and a half minutes into the game, so the true damage burn and execute is now active for the C980 carry. Umpty may be looking for a steal here. He goes over the wall, he steals it! Team Liquid gets the Baron, thanks to Umpty, and Core JJ wants to try to save Impact. Another massive shove coming out from APA, and Vulcan's already down. Impact stays alive for now, as Berserker's trying to fight these guys off. C9's gotta be careful, though, as APA still looking to go fishing one more time. JoJo tries to escape, but another rock gets thrown over the wall, and the shutdown goes to Core JJ. Yawn still looking, Team Liquid still cooking. Blabber, 300 HP left here on the Iburn, trying to get away. Fudge wants to protect him. Team Liquid and Umpty absolutely take over in the Baron pit. Man, JoJo, you could tell the plan was JoJo's going to be able to use the Azir ult, keep him out of the pit, but the Azir ult was a split second too late. Umpty gets in range of the smite. I don't think the Q damage even connected from the Lee Sin, you know, for the XU. I think it's just the smite, because, let's see. It's down to 2k. He's going to take it in. There's the ult from the Azir. Did the, the Q... went too early by oh. That was close. Very, very close. That's a tough one. But again, why flip it? Yes, why are you flipping it? I think your Jace was in the excellent position this game to just hold the sideline for, for pretty much the whole game. And uh, right now, because you are dancing around Nash for so long, your, your Jace is leveled down. I'm pretty sure Impact is about to hit level 16 soon. Or maybe not yet, he's actually just level 15. So he's just full level down. Now he has Nash, and now it's going to be really tough to hold him on the sideline. Yeah, it, it just seemed like a really strange decision. Even on the earlier play, when they just got the TP from Jax, it felt like they could have just backed it off. You know, you're stacking up on Smolder. Uh -oh. now TP'd in on. Here's Core JJ. Yeah. Core JJ might flash and just eat him. There it is. The Devour. Fudge is out of there. It'll be a 5v4 for Team Liquid now for the next 45 seconds. They've got the Baron for the next minute and 15. They're already at plus 3,500 on the Baron buff gains overall. Berserker's going to have to try to farm up a storm to deal with these guys, man, because Cloud9 has completely given away any sort of a lead they might have had. Yeah, it, it's tough, right? And now you've given over the Baron buff, and also they're on soul point, right? So, you know, there's also the soul to worry about. You know, had Cloud9 just chilled and farmed during these five minutes, got the most possible stacks, then showed up for a soul fight, I feel like they would have been in a really, really good spot in this game. But now it's a bit of a, a desperate spot. Uh, they're going to have to win that next fight. It's kind of do or die.
Yeah, I fully agree. As a coach of Cloud9, I would just go into the room and say, guys, why you just didn't farm? <laughs> <laughs> it was so free. Why did we have to go to Nashville? <laughs> It's tough, man. Umpty going in, getting that clutch steal away from Blabber, from C9. Uh, oh, also, we mentioned, I forgot to mention, APA said, thanks, Blabber, after the <laughs> oh <my laughs> after God. the Baron steal in the all chat. Do you mute these guys when you're playing against them? Is, <laughs> I mean, none of them ever spoke against us yet. Like, okay. I don't know why. Okay. I think uh, they, just don't, they just don't type to us. We are just too bad. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, TL pushing in here. They're playing through mid and top. MT just bouncing between the waves, obviously. In fact, pushing up that top wave. He's playing Koenig Rooker now, by the way, um, and has picked that up. So it's quite a tanky Jax if he is going up against JoJo, but a uh, pretty useless item if he is playing against that Jace. Yeah, I think he just realized that the Jace, like, uh, sacrificed too many ways for the team, so he's going to beat him anyway. So mm -hmm. right now he just needs to buy something that he can beat JoJo as well. Yeah, makes a lot of sense. Camilo struck off so much of that poke. Still great wave clear on the Cloud9 side, and they do still have, you know, about three minutes until the next objective would be up, and they'll have to worry about that. Uh, Berserker will crest the 300 mark by that point very easily. Uh, I'm assuming, let's see how much gold he has in pocket. He already has 2200 gold, so he's going to have the rapid fire basically whenever he wants it. Yeah. So he's going to be on three core. JoJo's going to be on three core. You're going to have 300 plus stacks on the smolder. It's still not a, like a free game for TL by any means, but I would say they're one fight away, away from potentially winning this game. And the thing that's interesting to me, if we look at those timers in the top part of the screen there, they're very close to perfectly synced up, yeah. right? It's about a 15 second desync between Baron and the Drake. And the problem with that is from Cloud9's point of view, you've got to stop both of those. Those are both a tragedy if Team Liquid gets them. Team Liquid's fine throwing away a Drake to grab a Baron if that's the trade they have to make, easy one. Yeah, definitely. I think right now Cloud9 will have to use the uh, make use of the Ivan Shields and like try to poke with Smolder mm -hmm. while not getting too much damage in return. Because if the fight starts when everyone is full HP, I'm pretty sure Team Liquid just has more damage uh, than them. Because Smolder doesn't like the fights that are really fast. He likes to poke with Q, just sweat a little bit, hit the front line and just spread the damage around the, the carries and not like a full engage uh, type of fight. Exactly. Like, he's much more of a caster, right? You know, even once you have the 225 stacks, the burn goes out over three, four seconds. So you have to be slowly burning away, slowly chipping away, uh, but it can get really oppressive. You know, once you have that rapid fire in as well, every time that's up, you're stepping forward, especially if it's splashing through multiple people, uh, can get pretty difficult. Obviously there is some sustain, courtesy of Yon over on the other side that is gonna help them to shrug that off, but still not easy. We can see Impact now has the Seeker's Arm Guard. So in, in towards that Zonius, this was the build we were seeing a lot of last year, obviously. Allows you to dive into the back line, you throw up the Counter-Strike, you push back one of those carries, you go into the Stasis, you come out, Counter-Strike's back up, and you can just kind of push out an Azir or a Smolder entirely through that fight. Because if they try to ignore you, they're still gonna die. Um, so it just buys a lot of space for APA, for Yon, for Umti to get things done while you're pushing one of those carries back. And I think it makes sense against Really, a team that has two big threats, right? In the yeah. zero and the smolder. That was a pretty close try, by the way. They were grouped. Tamkins had no flash, and I'm pretty sure Vulcan could go for the flash hook there. Mm. I think if they start the fight on Tamkins while both of the split pushers are on the side lane, they might not join the fight in time. But he kind of hesitated. He fought to land without flashing in. Yeah, Team Liquid has Umpty shadowing APA as he shoves up in the bottom lane, Impact shoving up in the top lane. Only Yawn and Kor left in mid man. just to try to defend that. Yeah, APA. APA Azul. Getting that wave shoved all the way up. He's trying to TP APA. APA. Oh, no, man. What was that? JoJo gets the absolute loot pinata out of that teleport. And you could see on the, on the player cams, APA realized his mistake. As soon as he started pressing TP, you could see the frustration on his face. He realized he was not supposed to do that. Yeah, that TP. That TP sucked. I mean, <laughs> he, he could have just ulted out to safety, no problem. Yeah, I mean, he could have walked out, and if yeah. he was going, then he could uh, pretty much get out for free. And now we're at that point of the game I was talking about where this is supposed to be a difficult call for C9 on how to defend both the Soul and the Baron. But now with APA dead for 20 seconds still, you easily stop the Soul and then you're ready to contest Baron you're right now. He's gonna run straight to Baron actually because there's no TP on APA. So he would have to ult out on the map to even be a part of this fight. So now it gets really, really dicey. There's pings over there. At the very least, they want to reclaim some vision in this area. They are gonna go be going back to base. So uh, Berserker, another 1500 gold in pocket. Uh, and this is gonna be able to probably got BF Sword, work towards BT. Almost always what you see from this spot. Yeah, it looks like Vulcan wants to refresh his wards and, mm -hmm. and we'll just go slow from there. But oh, yeah, that's definitely a uh, oh. fight. Ooh. 
Okay, Impact. Impact. Q is very low CD at this point. Yeah, he really wants to go in after Fudge, forces the flash out of the Jace. Nicely done as Fudge has to go all the way back home. Not having that flash, not having that summoner spell means Fudge is much more vulnerable now. Yeah, that's really big. Honestly, Astalia, I would maybe even look for some uh, ganks on this Jace on sideline around, and that's what she's doing. She's just hovering around bot side. Whenever this Jace, walk, uh, Jace walks up a little bit, instantly ult on him, and I'm pretty sure if he dies, uh, now she's completely free from Team Liquid. Team Liquid still in the lead, still with control of the map. Of course, the, the teleport did cost them. They lost the opportunity to go for that soul. They lost the control that they had over the Baron Pit, but they're still in a pretty solid spot here overall. Checking in on Berserker, about 340 stacks here on the Smolder, so continuing to scale towards Infinity. I'm a little bit surprised by the Last Whisper, because at this point in the game, so much of your damage is true damage and match damage and all this kind of stuff, um, that it almost always feels like people just build that more survivable build because you don't need more damage, right? You just need BT and things to stay alive, but maybe he just sees oh, it like I have Ivern, so I'm safe. That's what I was talking about, but the wall was placed a little oh, bit close. A little bit too far up. Yep. Just needed it slightly to the left. They could have maybe found the pick onto Fudge there. But now, once more, we're at the spot where it's hard for APA to make the rotation over. He does not have the teleport yet. Still about one third of the cooldown left on that one. The actual second amount is a minute and a half and then still needs the ulti to come back as well as Impact continues the Siege here in the bottom. And this is still dicey because remember, this Azir tower is about to expire. They have they have to have a second person there. Fudge can't actually play in the 1v1 from now pretty much until the end of the game. So uh, this is going to be really tough. You know, they have to have someone there hovering Fudge or potentially he can get solo kill because Impact has flash. Fudge has no flash. If he dies in that side lane, if you lose the inhib, all of a sudden the game really starts to fall apart. So TL do have this way to play through it. And that's why C9 are going to move up. They're going to try to deny vision. They're going to try to keep that fear in Impact because if you have no wards in the enemy jungle, it's very difficult to actually be threatening that inhib without potentially just inting. Yeah, I think as the game going on and everyone is getting items and more damage, more damage, like Ivan is kind of becoming very sad. Like his shields don't have that much impact when everyone is dealing a lot of damage. So, yeah, uh, it's kind of sad to be Ivan at this point of the game because everyone one shots you, everyone one shots your shields and pretty much <laughs> the same happened to your Daisy. So, yeah. Yeah, the shield right now for Ivern not even quite hitting the 300 mark. It's 294 is the value for that. Yeah, you get also amplified by items, so it's probably like around 400, let's say. Okay. So, yeah. I mean, it's still, still quite a lot, but uh, uh, let's be honest, like if the Talia full combo hits you with full items, like you are dying anyway. It's more than 400. 400's not exactly <laughs> going to prevent that from becoming a disaster. As C9 moving into the top side river now, trying to sweep out some of this Team Liquid vision. They do not want to overcommit, though. Their greatest sin so far this game was committed in the Baron Pit. They got to be cognizant of that as we've got 90 seconds until the Drake spawns again. Still sole point here for Team Liquid. Cloud9 sitting on two Drakes of their own, so if they can manage to get this next one, we'll be in another situation yeah, similar to the previous hit, game. They see everyone okay. on Cloud9 over on this side, so now they have to fully commit to the Baron or base right now, and they're going to hard commit to the Baron, so it's going to be a flip potentially. Okay, C9 looking to burn it down. Umphy cannot make his way into the pit here this time, but Vulcan's the sacrificial lamb. They're going to kill him off. Can it's the inhibitor, out, and Vulcan traded away as now JoJo's under pressure. If APA and Umphy can find the pick under the Azir, that could be Ooh, huge, but JoJo covered. disengages. Now Berserker, he could be in a bad spot. He Tries to flash back over the wall, but no! Impact shuts him down! Blabber's gonna try to get away, but APA and Core JJ are ready to play. They'll throw him right back into the Unraveled Earth, and Yawn goes on a rampage. It might be Baron for C9, but three of them are already dead. Only JoJo and Fudge remain as Team Liquid pushes down the top lane. Yeah, that ended up being horrible for Cloud9. They hard commit to that. They lose the inhibitor on bot side. They lose so many members as well. And now, if JoJo dies, I mean, this game could potentially even be over. Thankfully, Fudge was able to push Lacey out. He has a kick and the flash up, I'm pretty sure. Still, maybe he will go for some dive before Ivan, Zonius. Ivan spawns. All right, Vulcan's back alive for now. to try to help the C9 defense. Still 20 seconds on Blabber, 20 seconds on Berserker. Inhibitor number two, sure to fall here in the top lane. Nice little bit of poke, finds APA. He's down to about 60%. Umpty was trying to get the next wave ready to go over here in mid. The mid lane tier three turret still hanging on with about two thirds HP. Team Liquid. Again, they lost the Baron, but they did serious damage to the C9 base. And it's such a big deal because when the base is this destroyed, and they're actually even just laying in wait here, they're looking for a trap. Oh, we'll Jojo, see if they can they find JoJo. JJ hits him with the tongue. Oh, that was 
Tries to flash forward, but APA is ready to ride the wall after him. JoJo flashing forward to get away from the seismic shove. That might be the outplay right there. APA drops first. Core JJ here with the front line. Thick skin's only gonna buy him a moment as Berserker tries to catch up to Yawn and Impact. Yawn is burning, and Fudge is chasing right after him. Impact gets one back, but now he's gonna be careful because Berserker's still on the chase. Empty back here in the mid lane on a 1v3, trying to get away from Blabber and JoJo. Team Liquid has lost three men, and C9 holds the line. Wow. Okay, but Jax survives, so maybe it's not game over. I'm pretty sure if Jace manages to beat Jax there and runs mid, the game might just be over. But the Impact winning the Clutch 1v1 there, so uh, the only thing C9 can get is the Dragon. But that was very aggressive by Team Liquid. Like, I'm not sure what they're thinking. They're trying to kill Azir with Flash, Ult, and Zonias. Like, that was very optimistic. Yeah, it definitely was. But honestly, great punish from JoJo. I think almost all players flash backwards in that situation to actually avoid the seismic shove. In this in this spot, he says, I still have Zonius. I have all, I can actually survive here. He flashes forward, stays in range of APA, allows him to get so much more than just an escape. It turns into a bunch of kills and nearly a game ending situation, but still their base is in such a tough spot. You always have to be worried about the situations where there are those back doors. There's Corte J stepping forward. And here's the spot I'm talking about. Great initial ulti. The seismic shove's gonna land, but he flashes in knowing he can't die from this spot. Blabber comes in with the assist. You get the heal as well. Uh, from that crit bloom, and they just are off to the races, chasing him down. But I would be so mad as MG if I lost this game like this. Like he knows there is a Drake spawning, it's a soul point, and he just recalls in peace and tries to fight for it while his teammates are making this kind of play on top side. <laughs> Not a good look. JoJo's killer instinct showing up there in that fight as C9 fight tooth and nail to keep themselves in this game. Still three and a half thousand gold lead for the side of Team Liquid. But again, you know, this is another game that's going the distance. We're 38 minutes in. Yeah. Three and a half doesn't mean that much. And it, and it gets weird because you have these situations where you're like, okay, we have 400 stacks on Smolder. We have Azir. We win the 5v5. But Teal doesn't necessarily have to fight you ever for the rest of the game, right? If you overcommit to one side of the map, all of a sudden, Jax TPs into your base. All of a sudden, Talia ults into your base and the game can just end. So they have to be so worried about backdoors. They have to be worried about where is a ward that we could have missed that they could be TPing in onto, you know, how are you playing from this situation you know, as C9 to try to make sure that you can actually make use of your 5v5 and not just get backdoored? I mean, I'm pretty sure, first of all, you have to wait for TPs. And um, maybe when the Elder spawns, you just like run to Elder and force it. But uh, there's still a while until it spawns. And uh, I think if Team Liquid just keeps pushing side with Jax and just be annoying on the bot wave, like there's pretty much nothing C9 can do. They just have to stall and wait for the 5v5 uh, team fight. But uh, I think if you are really good on Jax, you just never give them the fight. And speaking of that, Jax, he has doubled down on defenses against JoJo. Final item in the build is the Force of Nature. So double MR tank items mm -hmm. to be able to deal with this Azir in the side lane. No concern whatsoever over the Jace. We've already talked about he's just in a spot where he feels like he wins that no matter what. And Impact is once again setting up for the split push in the bottom lane. APA in the top side with Umpty bouncing back and forth between there and mid, where CoreJJ and Yon are continuing to just be the two-man pushing crew. Yon's at 148 stacks here on the center. We've been counting Smolder throughout this entire game, who's up to 429. instant execution, by the way, yeah, at this point. Yeah, that's, uh, that's scary stuff. Yeah, that is pretty terrifying on the Smolder. Uh, and if you are able to get Elder on top, the amount of true damage burn from the Elder plus the Q uh, does get completely out of control. Berserker having to play behind Fudge, you know, they're trying to have someone unexpected shadow him and say, hey, look, our jungler's over here, our mid laner's over here, you should engage on the Jace and trying to set up some sort of a play to make something happen. But uh, yeah, Jack's trying playing to be too very safe. creative, but Impact plays this game for way too long to do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he's been around for a very long time, for sure. You know, we were talking about uh, his championship, you know, back in 2013. Yeah. He's a world champion on Jax. Over a decade ago. And it's it's pretty impressive how long he, not only has he played, but how long he's been playing at a really high level, you know, winning lots of championships, uh, really has maintained his form over the years. So uh, pretty impressive stuff from him and rarely does get caught out in these bad spots. You can see now, again, JoJo pushing forward, but it, someone always has to be behind the person when Jax is there because Jax is going to win these 1v1s. So Vulcan is locked up behind him as on the other side of the map, the Baron spawning. And they could just start up a very slow two-man. Yeah, it's a super slow two-man attempt from Core JJ and Yawn. Oh, so let's look at the setup damage. This now she's actually dying. Yawn and Core working on it as Impact and APA pressure the bottom lane. Sundis summoned up by Jojo to try to deal with this. It doesn't look like anybody on C9 know. is really aware of what's going on. The only pings in the Baron pit coming in now are from the TL side. Berserker's gonna make his way over first. 
He steps over the control ward. Umpty walking past him, trying to make his way into the pit to guarantee it's not able to be stolen. Team Liquid sneak the Baron. Really well done. You know, they just showed these three members on the bot side, and they say, look over here, look over here. They had no idea. Even the blue ward from Fudge that was actually used was used in Tribrush. She was worried about a gank coming in. He was not thinking about them being on the Baron whatsoever. So smart stuff there from TL, being able to grab that Baron. It is going to be Dragon spawning in 25. They'll have the advantage of those pushing waves. You can see the APA getting the waves pushing out on top side. Uh, Berserker stepping forward has to be a bit careful. Yeah, that was very creative, honestly. Yeah. I'm not sure if I would come to do it. I, I gotta wonder where the call for that came from, because I feel like that just seems like such a core JJ play to me. I feel like I've seen similar types of calls from him before, but no way to know here right now. Smolder with so many extra projectiles coming out of that queue now. C9 going into the bot side river, looking for the Ocean Soul. It's 3-3 three to three on the Drakes. APA is trying to ride the Weaver's Wall to catch up to the rest of Team Liquid. The Drake is already burning super low. It's down to 2k. It is secured by the Smolder. It is secured by C9. They've got Ocean Soul now. But now Teal can run mid, right? Teal can try to run mid. C9's got a base really quickly and try to defend that. That's our last inhibitor tower here. It gets pretty awkward. Uh, from this position, but there's no minions fast enough. So I think C9 are going to be able to get back there in time. They're just going to try to tank this up and burst it down, and we'll see if they'll be able to do it. Jace is back in base. Now they do get that final tower down. Yep. Not able to knock down any of the, the actual inhibitors just yet. Ooh, Vulcan trying to catch Umpty, and JoJo's right next to him. Donning Shadow over the top to keep Umpty protected. Nothing there to come out from the seismic shove. Team Liquid still trying to play it safe. Impact coming around from behind, but Fudge is ready to intercept him. Berserker gets the kill on Umpty with the execute. His impact is now stuck going golden. Young grabbing a kill back on Vulcan as now he dies. Impact still trying to fight, but the helicopter crashes. Everybody on Team Liquid's dead. C9, ace for one. It's not just the helicopter that crashes. Team Liquid crash and burn in that fight as they are torn apart by Cloud9, who finally are going to be able to close out this game. Wow, that's the only thing I can say. Wow, like, I, I guess uh, Nautilus was looking very juicy in the mid lane there, so we engaged on him, and I don't think Team Liquid should be fighting 5v5 with their team comp. That's what they were doing the whole game. They were split pushing all over the place, and right now they just gave them the free 5v5, with Smolder with 482 stacks at this point. Yeah, we'll be really strong in. C9 getting themselves a 2-0 week after the break, coming back, trying to finish the rest of the regular season strong. They'll defeat Team Liquid and move to 6-5 and five here in the standings. Big week for C9, but this one was a lot tougher than they would have liked. Uh, definitely not the easiest of games. Looked like it was going to be pretty smooth in the early game, but I think some of their mid-game decisions, you know, forcing around the Baron, were punished pretty heavily by TL. Umti getting a big Baron seal, and I think Impact playing really well through side lane, you know, made this game look like it was going to get very tricky. Um, but it just felt like Team Liquid got a little bit antsy. I think they could have kind of stuck the course, continued playing through sides. There's no inhibitor towers remaining. This was a game that, through one mistake from C9, Teal could win through a backdoor. They didn't have to necessarily 5v5, but felt that they had the angle and ended up getting punished big time. Yeah, definitely. I think this game was a, a really big roller coaster. Like, <laughs> I didn't know who's gonna win uh, up to the end, so. We got ended up getting just shy of 44 minutes. The Smolder stacks topped out at 482. We've pressed the attack. Let's see the press the attack damage. Actually. Yeah, let, let's check the press the attack here. Let me let me open this thing up. Where did he go? Oh. There he is. Okay, we'll open up the rune panel. 489. Why does with, it not? with the total exposure damage plus total <laughs> damage. He's like absolutely. Wait, wait that's it? That's all it did. 489 in a 44 minute game. <laughs> that's like that's like one. Nothing. That's like one tick of his Q damage. Uh, yeah, okay, that's... <laughs> Imagine if he shared a key keystone. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, well, hey, maybe that was the, maybe the 42 damage it did at level 2 or whatever was exactly. what really got him off to the races and, and changed the game. <laughs> the only thing that got them across the finish line was that 42 damage. Hey, man, you, you never know what makes the difference. But, uh, yeah, a little bit unlucky there on the keystone, but C9 still going to be happy about taking the win in that one. Again, moving up to 6 and 5 here in the standings. And now, with the last game of the week all wrapped up, we have Poe Belter standing by with JoJo for an interview. Oh, do I go? Yes. Okay, I'm going. Uh, <laughs> hi, guys. It's Poe Belter here with JoJo Pion, the winning mid laner from the C9 game. Wow, I'm just like freestyling this. I hope you're okay. <laughs> We're freestyling too. Like, we'll, see. <laughs> we'll see how it goes. Uh, so that was that was a super chaotic back and forth game. It honestly seemed like they had clinched the win, but then they tried to dive you on top. How did that feel that you guys were able to turn the game around? Yeah, I mean, they're playing pretty well, honestly, on side lane because um, we got behind top lane. 
I, I should have helped top, but it's fine. Um, and then Jax was able to just keep split pushing with Talia, so it was kind of annoying. And then they just messed up top lane, so we got kind of lucky. Um, I think they low-key ran it down there, so we were able to come back, so yeah. Okay. How did you feel uh, playing against APA, and what do you think of him? Because I rate both of you guys as players who are like really aggressive in lane, like try to get an advantage 1v1. I mean, I was really surprised he picked Talia, because I don't think APA is like a Talia player. He's like a Ziggs and Ziggs player, you know? So I was surprised he picked Talia, but um, I didn't think he played too badly this game. I think he did choke sometimes, but I thought his mechanics were not too bad on Talia, so yeah. Okay. Uh, what do you think about like the Tank Azir build? Actually, did you play that at all? I think you played it the other week, right? Yeah, I think Tank Azir is good in a lot of scenarios if you need to dive or they have a lot of poke because you're just tanking, you can engage. Um, I think it's really strong on side lane too because you can't really die. I think this game though, we need a damage and I think it's good versus Talia if I go fleet, so yeah. Okay, sounds good. And then um, last question, I guess. A lot of people were rating C9 super highly coming into this split and you guys are, you know, you guys are doing okay now. You guys are six and five. Not quite the level I think a lot of people expected, but is C9 back? I mean, C9 is back. I mean, honestly, it doesn't matter about regular season. We just have to keep improving, and that's all that matters, you know? It's only playoffs, so yeah. Cool. Back to you. Oh, back to you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Cole Belter <laughs> and JoJo. And I mean, JoJo would know uh, about regular season and LCS championships because I think EG was 9-9 nine and nine in the title that he won. So 6-5, yeah. and five, I True. mean, that's above... That's above the record that he was at the last time when the LCS He's played. already yeah. He's already at peak JoJo. <laughs> yeah, so here's today's player of the games. Contracts, Whippo, Rich, JoJo. It was tricky to pick this last one. I know Inspired's vote was actually going to be for Vulcan. I just mm -hmm. heard him give it, but looks like JoJo got the majority. Rich had some massive engages yeah. as well in the Dig and Toss one. Yeah. Honestly, this day has just been a slobber knocker uh, <laughs> between the Contracts uh, Pog, where he ended up stealing Baron. They stole, they got two Barons off of it, literally won the game off of that. Uh, the Dignitas series and then JoJo like they've been long games They've been back and forth and it's just been fun to watch Yeah, I mean, I think the the big thing was rich trying to find those openings mm. on NAR that actually allowed them to Really break open that game. Yeah, the only game that didn't go to a seven Drake soul was game two Yep. yep. game one three and four were all ridiculously long games. It's wild, man. And I think a lot of it, we've been talking in the green room about like the impact of the break overall. And I mm -hmm. think the teams coming back into it, there, there's some sloppiness. They're rusty. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the yeah. rust is definitely, you can see it. Um, at least you'll see from Dignitas in particular, I think they look pretty good. I mean, we saw them looking pretty competitive before the break, mm -hmm. but now I think it's nice to just see them be able to play around Smolder a lot more confidently. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's been the plus for me. A couple 400 stack Smolder games. Let's pull up the Samsung SSD Fast 5 for this week. See where everything stacks up. Blabber Fast level 6, back to normal. That must have been the Nidalee game that yeah. he played yeah. in day one against FlyQuest. And Tactical with that 1 minute 36 second kill on the oh, failed true. invade oh, yeah. from Palafox oh. that didn't turn into the victory. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. And then somehow you're right, like uh, Palafox ended up still getting into that game, so they didn't punish him as heavily. I know that uh, Bo Belter was crit critiquing him in the back on that front. But overall, all of these kind of expected. Um, Big ups to Shopify, Zazel, of course, fastest item. I think Zazel had a really good uh, week so far. Mm -hmm. Yeah, fast five for a slow week. A reminder that Samsung is partnered with Sleeper and Fantasy LCS, and you can earn bonus points each week for drafting the best performer to your team. Congrats to those of you who claimed that reward this week. Plus, use code SSD 990 Pro LCS through March 29th to get 20% off 990 Pro 1, 2, and 4 terabyte SSDs. And with such a wild week, picking player of the week did come down to the wire. Yeah, yes. it's got to be tough. Yeah, mm. it was. It was very tough. We have energy as a 2-0 team, but those were some interesting games. Yes. And as I'm reading right now, the winner of the player of the week is Jojo Pune. C9 is back <laughs> from him himself. Even though the second game wasn't that clean, I'd say the win quality in terms of opponents was very high. Yeah. And yes. JoJo was a big factor in both those wins. Yeah, I think it was really important for them to come out and have a good week, especially with so many of us highlighting how people were talking about how C9 had been performing really well in scrims, yeah. how we talked about this could be a really good mental reset for them and trying to find a way that they wanted to play. I mean, obviously there were still some hiccups in this game in particular, um, but I think JoJo back in the mid lane, two really, really strong Azir games. Um, 
I mean, it's just, it's very, very fun. As you see, he tweeted yesterday, C9 is back. Um, it's really fun to see this team start to pull it together after what was like a very shaky part pre-break. Yes. And as you saw there, uh, those were today's games. The fact that they were able to beat the first place team in FlyQuest mm -hmm. speaks mm -hmm. volumes. That's honestly the best way you can make a statement coming out of the break. Yeah. Um, we mentioned, like I mentioned earlier, talking to Jack, just like how important that break was for them to be able to align as a team and you can see they aligned jojo's on form and so getting a player of the week means a lot first and third place are the teams they beat based on the pre-week standings so let's pull up the standings now with only one week and three games to go in the spring split regular season FlyQuest did reclaim first with their win over 100 thieves but just like that cloud nine is back into the top four just imagine how big this week really was for them because you take those two wins away, put them in the loss column, they'd be tied for seventh at yeah. this mm -hmm. point. So it was an incredibly important week for Cloud9. Yeah, it was also an incredibly important week for NRG. We did talk yeah. about, again, the they were a they also did look a little bit shaky uh, even in their wins, especially today after that, that like really crucial contracts Baron steal. Um, but I think we kind of highlighted these two teams as teams that would benefit the most uh, from the, having that time off, right? And I do think you see some of that. And we're seeing more definition in the standings. The fact mm -hmm. that the, the clump is starting to really define itself first, True. second, and third from FlyQuest, 100 Thieves, and Cloud9. Energy, of course, is tied for third alongside with C9, so it's nice to see them as messy, but still finding their wins is a positive. Uh, Team Liquid, Dignitas, Shopify, Rebellion, and Immortals Progressive riding right behind them. And it's a dangerous ground right now for Immortals because not only are they taking losses in really close games where they're going up against Shopify and Dignitas, but they're doing it where they are looking a little bit more confused. Mm. So you hate to see stuff like that. I think next week, Super Week, you need to bounce back. I wanted to see them win, so last place was at four. But here's the <laughs> schedule for next week. Friday games. Friday! So it is a Super Ooh. Week. These are Friday games. We are Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Yep. And then first week of playoffs is Thursday, Thursday Friday, Friday, Saturday, Saturday Sunday. Sunday. And then second week of playoffs is Friday, Saturday. And then final week of playoffs is Saturday, Saturday Sunday. Sunday. Very easy. I don't know how you could yeah. get it. Yeah, super simple. Ah. Let's check out the NACL schedule as well. <laughs> This is going to be going live right at the conclusion of this broadcast. So Maryville University versus TLC was on Saturday. It's going to be the DSG versus Lit game following the LCS today, followed by Wildcard and AOE. So that is the NACL schedule. And it's been a pretty interesting week. Yes, it has I been. think yeah. I like the trash talk in the face-off. I yes. think Bwipo got really mean to Sniper, but it's going to be good for his character in the long term. True. 100 Thieves needs to fall so they can get back up again. But that's it for us. We'll be back next Friday at 4 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Pacific for the last week of the LCS Spring Split regular season. Now let's send it over to LCS Challengers. <laughs> <laughs> and also, they're going to do a cage fight. Yeah. Raz and I are going to have cage fights. They've been wanting to the whole one. week. Bye. Power Fox is on to the backside. Flash Depth Charge right on the tactical side. Big shove is great. Burst is huge. Always still surviving, but not very long. The Keeper's Burn to punch two members away. Castle's isolated once again. Energy take out too swiftly. And now it's the charge towards the bottom side of the base. Our male on the run. Dokla living in his own world as he gets to run down the bear and the Emperor. Our male on the run flashing away. Mass tries to stand and hold the back. longer energy they brought it back kobe a teleport is coming in from whippo and he has an all access back pass to beach Meech has to be careful when he plays this fight because whippo has now arrived to the party he pops a ragnarok and he just melts river the shock wave from jensen cleans them all on the piles and so that whippo can just run them through all oh, hundred these members get eviscerated in an instant Still got a two and a half thousand gold lead for Shopify. Tomo trying to get away as B-Boy wants to burst up. Nami Yoshi over the top. Tomo's already down. Shopify loses two men. A shutdown only with sanity from Dove. Absolutely massive as Dignitas still has four players ready to go. Rich takes out Boogie. They're flashing after B-Boy. He tries to escape from the wall and won't find him. Now Dove goes right in the Weaver's wall, but fake God's ready to answer. Dove goes golden and B-Boy's got to be careful here. He steps away from the rock. He tries to dash back out, but Isles locks down fake God and Dove is on. Dignitas find their fight.
Nothing there to come out from the seismic shove. Team Liquid still trying to play it safe. Impact coming around from behind, but Fudge is ready to intercept him. Berserker gets the kill on Umpty with the execute. His impact is now stuck going golden. Yon grabbing the kill back on Vulcan as now he dies. Impact still trying to fight, but the helicopter crashes. Everybody on Team Liquid's dead. C9, ace for one. Make more good in the Kia Sportage X-Pro. Kia, movement that inspires.